What's up guys? It's yo boy on the sensei. Welcome to Reborn as a Prodigy Hyuga during Minato's era. Part 3. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story. Link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Things in the camp were tense, fights occasionally broke out, and trust was hard to come by now. Even though neither Orochimaru nor I were assassinated, the assassins still caused us problems. The fights weren't a huge deal, though they were annoying when they happened five times a day. I was the designated mediator as Orochimaru was too busy to do so himself. Being 11 I wasn't taken seriously and had to kick ass and take names. Though I mainly kicked ass, things usually weren't a problem after an ass kicking Shiro. It's time to test your chakra network expansion. Orochimaru distracted me, causing the DNA I was working on to fracture and start falling apart. Surrounding a chain of DNA with chakra, removing it and then replacing it was nearly impossible. Any distractions, even a slight breeze caused me to lose control of what I was doing. I had forgotten about that. Orochimaru and I had meant to do it a few times. But things always seem to pop up. Sai, I'll be with you in a moment. I just have to pack up. DNA analysis was going smoothly. I had identified most of what I needed. My lack of progress in splicing was the only thing stopping me from trying to awaken the Shikotsu Miyaku. The older one got the harder it was to make complex changes to your DNA. What I wanted to do wasn't complex, nor was I planning on doing it with my DNA. But every day that I failed to produce results had me feeling the pressure. I wanted to get this done as soon as possible. It was delaying other projects that I had an interest in pursuing. What's this? Orochimaru's dissection table was covered with seals. It looked like we were going to perform a ritual sacrifice of some kind. These are used to monitor chakra. It measures and records changes in the subject's chakra. I hummed and paced around the table. It wasn't something I had seen before. I haven't seen this before. Orochimaru smiled and tilted his head back. It's my creation. Orochimaru was looking rather arrogant. But it wouldn't do me well to point that out. It is masterfully done. Is what I settled for after a moment of thought. It truly was. I could see some unfamiliar symbols. They were likely created just for this seal by Orochimaru. Are those symbols your own? Orochimaru merely nodded, but had a proud smile on his face. Well, let's get to it. Orochimaru probably wanted to stroke his ego some more, but I wanted to get this show on the road. Times are wasting after all, you can indeed expand someone's chakra network. I just hummed. Sadly, you still can't escape someone's inborn genetic limit. I just hummed again, you could reach the genetic limit with training as well. Unless you were pressed for time it seemed better to do the training yourself. How would one increase the chakra density? It was on my mind near constantly. I knew that your chakra increased in quality over time. But I had no idea what contributed to it. It's genetic. That didn't answer my question. It has a lot to do with bloodlines and genetics. People often don't have dense chakra unless they practice sage mode. Or they were born with it. It could be that people with Otsutsuki genes had denser chakra. Most clans that didn't directly come from the Otsutsuki were shit -sai. There were a couple of genes that I couldn't identify. Mom, I need some of your blood. I figured they were of Hyuga origin. But it didn't hurt to check. What do you need it for? Mom raised an eyebrow. But took the vial I offered her. I'm doing science stuff. Mom hummed and sliced her finger using a chakra coated nail. No body modifications I hope. She squeezed her finger and a few drops of blood dropped into the vial. Nope. I touched my finger to hers and healed the wound. I took the vial and corked it soon after. Thanks, I'll be hiding in the lab for a week or two. If you need anything let me know. Mom nodded and sent me a sloppy wave. We'll do oh, yay, send Dai to medical whenever he trains the gates. I don't want him vulnerable. Mom showed me with her hand. Go have fun in your lab. I chuckled and started making my exit. The mystery genes were indeed from my Hyuga half, though there were quite a few different genes. More than I had from my Kagaya bloodline in any case. The Kagaya DNA seemed rather simple, compared to the Hyuga DNA. It was unusual I sighed and rubbed my eyes. I guess simple was what I wanted whatever. Since I was already looking at her DNA let's find that sensor gene I would like it. If I could sense someone coming to slit my throat these are the genes that determine a chakra capacity. Orochimaru gestured towards two different lengths of DNA. And these are the genes for chakra density. He pointed towards two different sections of DNA again. Those are for affinities, right? Orochimaru nodded. It depends on what you get from your parents. It's more like a gene that designates hair color. And less like a gene corresponding to a bloodline. So, it depends on what your parents had, I guess. What about people born with three affinities? The third hokage was one such case. Mutants. I snorted. I studied people with multiple affinities extensively. It mostly comes down to mutation. They have multiple sets of genes corresponding to their affinities. Orochimaru gestured towards said genes. Most of the population will only have one set of affinity genes, while some are born with more. Orochimaru took his hand off the seal and straightened. A person's personality also seems to correspond to what element you possess, though not always. I hummed all right, thanks. Orochimaru nodded. You're welcome. I blew a breath from my nose. One last question before I leave. Orochimaru motioned me to continue. Is there a better way to practice DNA splicing? Orochimaru didn't say anything for a moment and the lab was silent. DNA. Splicing will get better with practice and experience. I smiled half-heartedly even with my excellent chakra control. 
I was having problems. Will you watch how I do it and give me some tips? I've been making no progress as of late. Orochimaru grunted and sent me an annoyed look, but started rooting through the cupboards, looking for the required seals. I stood and started focusing on the task ahead. Orochimaru hovering over me made me feel nervous, but I did my best to put it out of my mind. The seal was three circles, two palm-sized circles with an extra small circle between them. I placed my hands on the two outer circles and was instantly put under a Jinjutsu. I felt Orochimaru put his hands on the seal as well and I did my best to dismiss the thought. I started channeling my chakra to the circles, and sent a string of chakra from each circle into the middle circle. I located a few cells but focused on one, in particular. I located its nucleus pushed an even smaller tendril of chakra into it. I located my desired chromosome and surrounded it in chakra and started to slowly unravel it. Over the course of 30 minutes, I unraveled the chromosome bit by bit, until it was one long strand of DNA. I identified the DNA I wanted. It was just the gene for bone density. It wasn't particularly special. I located the second gene for bone density and got to work. I ejected the dominate gene and kept the recessive gene. I sent another sting of chakra to capture the free-floating DNA. I then made two more strings of chakra and sent them from the circles and into the middle circle, where I repeated the process. I was once again unraveling a chromosome when things started to go awry. I lost control and a slight twitch of chakra crushed the DNA I had unraveled. My frustration leaked into my chakra and destroyed the rest of my work. I sighed and removed my palms from the circles. As you can see, I can't maintain focus and hold different DNA strands with my chakra. Orochimaru stared at me for a moment. Who said you had to hold all of the DNA? I stared at him. What? Orochimaru looked at the ceiling in exasperation. Once you've extracted your desired gene you can let it in the DNA float. Or you could even unravel both of the chromosomes and then splice them. Orochimaru shook his head and started walking away. You were making things unnecessarily complicated fuck after Orochimaru left I had practiced a few more times and was successful in my endeavors. One major hurdle was overcome now. What do I do? I wasn't ready for any success Saishiro. I haven't seen you in Suo long. I was promptly smothered with a hug and spun. I heard some glass break, signaling the loss of some of the remaining Kagaya DNA I had left. Hi Kishina. She wasn't supposed to be on the front, and definitely not on a front where we were holding our own. What brings you here? I was released. I turned and saw Kishina rummaging through her kunai pouch looking for something. I brought gifts. Kishina shoved a book into my hands and took off. Gotta go see Sumiku. I heard her yell trail off as she gained distance. I turned my eyes to a nervous tune and standing by the door. I couldn't stop her, I rolled my eyes. Don't worry about it. I looked at the vial that had hit the ground. It had already soaked into the dirt. I had little hope of retrieving it. I want proper flooring and no more delays on the water system. I side-eyed the chunin while I started gathering my things. Yes, sir. I sighed through my nose. I took a moment to look at the book. Tale of Aigutsu Shinobi. Hum. Mom and Kishina had invaded my lab. Apparently, they liked the heating Kishina could make her own heating. So, you're heading back. Mom had been here for four months and was growing homesick. Dai was as well and they were planning on making their way home as soon as they could. Yes, though I wish Shiro would come with me. He's been rather stubborn lately. It's probably puberty or something. Mom had been rather insistent that I join her. Sadly there were things to do and people to kill. I was slowly being involved in Orochimaru's experiments and was learning lots. Taking a break would only limit my progress oh. Shiro too. Kakashi has been getting stinky lately, he's growing up and becoming a little man. I blinked at that. I'm not sure I wanted to hear anymore I started making my way outside. I think it's time to escape. DNA overwrite was going fine. My main problem now was applying the seal on someone. No one would want to sit still while I applied a curse seal on them so... I needed to go the Orochimaru route, and apply it as he did. I already had a rough idea of how to do so. I just needed a bone senban. I could probably use some sort of fuinjutsu on the needle, and use the needle to do the hard work. Then the only problem would be the activation of the seal I could make that automatic. Something that feeds on the host's chakra to fuel the transformation, though to fuel a full body change, would require a ton of chakra. I'll replace the temporary activation part of the seal, with some sort of chakra drain psi override was fine as it was. But I wanted something combat applicable. I guess I'll figure it out I should focus on editing the remaining cells first. I'm only partway through that, and even then, I'll need to run some tests. Can't go editing my DNA without testing it. Now can I this could either go horribly wrong or horribly right. I heard you took six of the captured Jonin. I turned slightly and side-eyed Orochimaru. I did indeed. Orochimaru hummed and a creepy smile covered his face. Testing DNA over right away. I raised an eyebrow at him. I thought I adequately disposed of any evidence. Indeed, Orochimaru clapped his hands together. Any success? Orochimaru hissed his last word. Somewhat. I held my hand out and bones erupted from it. Oh, you've already done it to yourself. I shook my head and the bones protruding from my flesh started retreating into my body. Just my hands. Though it was successful, it changed my chakra and made it feel foreign. It felt like I had warm oil running through my body. It gave me control over my body's osteoblasts and osteoclasts, and the ability to regulate my bonus calcium density. Though so far it was limited to my hands. You've done well to only change little bits of yourself at a time. The last one I taught tried to change his whole body at once, and died of chakra exhaustion. I had realized that chakra cost was a problem when my last Jonin died, and I only received two hands worth of cells. 
I'm starting to feel hesitant to do a full body change. The feeling of having your chakra changed is violating. Arachimaru looked gleeful he took my hand and started performing some sort of scan on it. What you're feeling will pass. I felt his chakra slither up my arm, and I gave his chakra a nudge. Remember discomfort is temporary, power is forever. Kekaki Arachimaru laughed creepily and released my hand. Once your whole body is changed you won't feel the same discomfort. Orochimaru started circling me and staring hard at me. I stayed still unsure of what he was doing. When I made changes to my own body my chakra changed color and consistency. Something similar should happen to yourself. A grin stretched across his face. Though your changes aren't as extensive as my own the same still applies. He stopped circling me and started heading towards the exit. Remember to make changes to your DNA little by little. Don't get too excited and try to give yourself a new bloodline before he left. Orochimaru stopped and looked over his shoulder. I look forward to working with you Shiro. Kekiki Orochimaru left the room with a creepy laugh. Sai, what am I doing? I didn't know I'd get such fast results. The Shikotsu Miyaki seemed to be mostly about chakra control and using chakra leaning towards Yang, something I had in spades, so I had no problems utilizing it at the moment. ENA overwrite worked out well as did the stem cell conversion, only 10% of the stem cells became cancerous, so little was lost. My main problem seemed to be chakra cost with the strength of a hundred seal. It wasn't much of a problem, but did I want to drain my seal in a war zone? The obvious answer was no, so I needed some way to quickly administer the seal site. I'm glad I didn't have to cut off my hands. If things went wrong, the hands would have had to go. They might still have to go. I held my hands out in front of me and eyed them. This still looked the same a quick flicker of chakra and I had a bone spike erupting from the back of my hand. It was a cool bloodline I wonder if I can swim now. I've always been too heavy to swim I'll see if I can make my bones lighter. Though should I even bother? Sigh to swim. Or not to swim. Things were going well. I had gone through four more jonin and replaced my cells up to my shoulders. Next, I was going to go for a big one and supplement my subject's chakra with some of my own from the seal. I badly wanted to convert my whole body. Part of me wanted to just give it a go and use all my stored chakra. But the other more sensible part of me advised against it sigh. I still had the issue of replacing any parts of my brain. There's no way that could go well. I couldn't do it myself. Clones would have to do it then, unless I just used override on myself. It had gone well enough. There's almost no reason not to Furukai had applied the modified override seal onto some bone senbin. Now, I just had to stab someone and as long as the senbin maintained contact, I could convert their DNA into my own. Though I've gained a handful of cells at most sight, I'm starting to feel a little evil. Discomfort is temporary power is forever alright. I'm going to seal myself in the lab, don't bother me even if we're being attacked. I decided it was go time. My immune system started fighting my modified cells, and I couldn't afford to wait any longer. Kekiki Orochimaru just laughed creepily and gave me a knowing look. I sighed and turned around. I needed to seal the fuck out of my lab. I wish I hadn't been so hesitant to do the whole thing. Stupid immune system. Why are you only doing something two weeks after I started? I opened the door and stepped outside into the cool air. I took a deep breath and enjoyed the minor shock of cold air entering my lungs. Hopefully, this doesn't take too long oh. I also have to see mom and die. If I cut my arms off, would it cost less chakra to use DNA override? I let the idea bounce around in my head while a clone drew the seal on the floor around me. I decided that limbs are often better when attached to the body sigh I watched as the clone paced around the seal. He was checking for flaws. I gave the seal a once over and didn't see any flaws myself. Trust but verify ready. I nodded at my clone. Ready. I sent a tendril of chakra to my forehead and opened the seal. My body was flooded with chakra and I did my best to suppress my manic smile. Alright do it. I felt the clone strike the back of my neck and everything went black. I opened my eyes. I gave the room a glance looking for the clone. He was nowhere to be seen I sent a tendril of chakra to my seal and closed it. I stood up and cracked my back. EOP asterisk my chakra did indeed seem less noticeable. Now that all my DNA was changed. Though there were still some wisps of my former chakra amongst my new chakra. I held my hands out in front of me and bones erupted from them making them look like maces. I retracted the bones. Hammer bone started protruding from my back I reached up and grabbed it. I wrenched it out of my skin and twirled it around while admiring it. I now had my very own spine sword. I tapped the ground with it. Clack 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 asterisk now. What do I do with this? Surprisingly the whole transformation didn't take more than a day. I had thought it would take longer or go catastrophically wrong. Neither happened, and I mentally thanked the Shinigami for my luck as of late. Though my reserves were pretty much empty. Shiro, I turned and looked at mom. Yes. She pointed at the sink and opened and closed her mouth a few times, seemingly trying to find the right words. Is that a spine in the sink? I nodded. Why is it in the sink? I shrugged with a slightly bemused smile. The drain was clogged. Mom nodded mutely. I decided that it was my duty to dispense some wisdom. You never know what you might need a spine for. Mom sighed and shook her head. I'm leaving next week. Hmm, alrighty. Was she bringing Kishina? Is Kishina going with you? If she took her with them, I would have my original lad back. Kishina already left. Even better, she didn't say goodbye. Mom shook her head and smiled at me. She did but you were hiding somewhere. I nodded. Shame I blew a breath out of my nose. Is Dai leaving as well? Mom nodded. Are you sure you don't want to come with us? I'm sure you could use a break as well. I walked over and hugged her. Sorry. But I've got things to learn and allies to protect. Mostly things to learn alright? 
Mom let out a heavy breath. I squeezed her before I disengaged from the hug. I'll see you off when you leave. Mom nodded and started to make her exit. Oh yay, before you go mom turned and eyed me. I've awakened a bloodline, so don't be too surprised if you see me pull my spine out. Mom sighed. I could tell you were different. Mom shook her head and started towards the door. I guess that's all the talking we were doing about it. Alrighty, I spent the following week playing with the Shikotsu Myaku. It was mostly making spikes and seeing if I could do some of the stuff I half remembered Kimuro doing. So nothing too fancy. Shiro, go assassinate some Kumo Jonin. I raised an eyebrow and blew a sigh from my nose. I just killed some yesterday. I ambushed and killed eight yesterday. They seem to be never ending. I just couldn't kill enough of them. Can we make a try at their camp again? Picking them off five at a time is doing us no good. It was becoming annoying. Kumo was getting bolder as of late. We were constantly losing any skirmishes we got into. Kanoha had many strong shinobi, but the problem was that we didn't have any of those with us. They usually belonged to the clans, and the clans were trying to send as few as possible to the front. And even then, since we were doing good, we didn't get any people from the clans sent here. It was bullshit all around. Not unless you want things to escalate. Arachimaru didn't want to fall on battle. He seemed happier with the many small skirmishes we were losing. I shook my head but didn't say anything. Kumo knew where we were. It was only a matter of time before something happened. Alright, I'll go thin their numbers some. Not that I wanted to. The Kumo Nin were pretty resistant to my lightning jutsu, and I was resistant to theirs. It usually made for long drawn out to jutsu fights, where I was always just barely avoiding getting swarmed. I didn't have any plans on showing off the Shikotsu Myaku I'd like to keep it a secret for a while. Enemy attack 5 kilometers out. Sigh, I knew this would happen. I was already dressed and ready as I was just about to head out, so I could jump in straight away. I activated my Byakugan and scanned the camp. Orochimaru was barking orders and doing leader stuff. Mom was standing with Dai at the north end of the camp, and the rest of the camp was a flurry of activity. I started making my way towards Mom and Dai. Mom was likely the one who sounded the alarm, and probably the only one who could see what was up. A quick shunchan brought me right to her. So, what's happening? The words came out more casually than I had intended. We're about to be attacked by a joint Kumo and Shimo battalion. That didn't sound too bad, only 500 people. What's the bad news? This was too much of an overreaction for a battalion. Kumo and Shimo have both sent two of their s rank ninjas. I knew there was more to it. I blew a breath out of my nose. How fast are they advancing? Mom shrugged. Slowly, they're trying to sneak up on us. Why would they try to sneak up on a camp that might have Bayakigan or Sharingan users? Morons. Mom nodded. Who are their s rank ninjas and what do they look like? Mom hummed for a moment before answering. Fury, he has duck spiky hair and wears round glasses. He's known for his skillful use of lightning release, and is an expert tactician. Mom hummed again and scratched her nose. The second one from Kumo is C, he's tall blonde, and also uses lightning release. Mom hummed a second time and squinted her eyes. The other two look to be Shimo's twin butchers, both of them have bluish white hair, and are known for their kenjutsu. I joined in on the humming. The kenjutsu uses when a problem. It was the two Kumo shinobi I was cautious of. Alright, I'm going to see what Orochimaru wants to do. I disappeared with a shunshin. So, what's the plan? I raised an eyebrow at Orochimaru's appearance. The sleeves of his kimono were blackened and burnt. Call for reinforcements and try to stall their advance. I blinked at him. There's only 500 of them. We outnumbered them by four times, even if we didn't have a lot of quality shinobi we could still bury them in corpses. There is likely a bigger force following behind them. The ambush battalion coming towards us is of little concern. But what comes after might be a problem. Yikes, should you and I attack them now, when they're not expecting it? I was only worried about the Kumo Nin. The two Kenjutsu using brothers should be easy to kill. Especially if I use the Shikotsu Myaku to use the Shikotsu Myaku. Or not to use the Shikotsu Myaku. That was my current dilemma. Yes, it will give these incompetents time to organize. Sigh, I swept the camp once more before deactivating my Byakugan. Alright, I'll follow you. I think I need to look at the Byakugan some more. Though mom's 5 kilometer range was impressive, it was from the best the clan had. I know the clan head's kids had a range of 10 kilometers. Something to think about in any case Orochimaru made his way out of the camp, and I trailed after him. We went and got an update from mom before setting out. They were approaching cautiously and taking the time to dismantle any seals or traps on their way. Orochimaru decided that we'd circle them and strike from the back, which was fine by me. I wanted to cut down the cannon fodder, and limit my chances of getting swarmed before we engaged with the stronger ninja. Sai my seal was low on chakra, so I had to be careful I had about a week's worth of chakra in the seal, so at least I had a fallback. I looked at Orochimaru, he looked annoyed but didn't seem nervous. He probably had faith in his ability to escape this encounter if things went sideways. Can I have the two Kenjutsu users? Orochimaru nodded. The other two are Ninjutsu specialists, I'm more suited to engage with them. I wanted to activate my Bayak again, but was wary of giving our position away. On second thought, can you hold the four of them off while I attack the weaklings they brought? Orochimaru snorted and nodded. Go ahead. Orochimaru didn't look phased at the thought of fighting four S-ranked ninjas. I narrowed my eyes and looked at him. I imagine his confidence wasn't misplaced. Orochimaru was one of the world's strongest ninjas. He certainly trumped his teammates. At least he would be in the future alright I'd trust in his abilities. 
I remember him being slippery and hard to kill. Hopefully, the same would apply here. We stayed quiet as we got closer. Orochimaru was staring at them and waiting for something. Eventually, he waved me in but stayed where he was. I sent him an annoyed look, but obliged, and started creeping closer. And closer. And closer. After a while. I got close enough that I could see some movement through the trees. I eyed them for a moment, they certainly didn't blend into the frost-covered trees. I looked down at my clothes and picked at my shirt a little. My white shirt didn't blend any better than their white and grey clothes. I scratched my chin and looked around for a moment, and made a last-second decision. I guess it would be good to have some practical experience with the Shikotsu Myaku. My body was already abnormally durable, but awakening the Shikotsu Myaku made it stronger. Whenever I consciously grew and moved bones, my body automatically reacted by shifting and tearing my muscle fibers, blood vessels, and flesh to allow for the bones to exit my body. My pain receptors have also changed and adapted, so I don't feel anything if my bones are damaged, or if my body tears itself apart. It was awesome. But my favorite part of the Shikotsu Miyaku was the lack of required hand seals. I activated my Bayakigan and slowed my perception. I saw a couple of heads turn as soon as my range expanded. Eight shinobi had opened their mouths and were about to shout. Sigh my bones shifted and started to grow under my skin, forming a thin layer of armor. I started stretching looking to see if any of the bone inhibited movement. I rolled my shoulders and twirled my wrists good. I waggled my fingers and toes. Good. I bent my knees and elbows. Good. Finally. I put my arms out above my head and praised the sun. My movement wasn't impeded, we're good to go. I focused on my surrounding. An assortment of ninjas were making their way towards me. Most of them were cannon fodder. They were in Kumo's standard grey and white ninja attire. I wasn't overly worried about them. My bones were nearly impossible to damage. And I had bone armor covering my body. I saw one of the ninja throw a handful at Senban at me. I watched in amusement as they bounced off of me, most only sticking slightly in my skin before falling to the ground. Though perhaps I should protect my eyes a smooth featureless mask covered my face. I reached up and felt the mask feeling a little silly. I took a deep breath. I could still breathe good. One of the faster ninjas had arrived and struck me in the back with his lightning coated sword. E L A C K asterisk sorry friend a bone spike erupted from my back and impaled the attacking ninja. What? A second spike erupted from the first and skewered his brain. I twisted a little and the spike broke at its base. Good though perhaps the spikes should be thinner. It would be more efficient that way. The remaining seven were more cautious and had me surrounded. Surrender and will allow you to live. I focused on the one who shouted. I pointed in his direction and fired my finger bone at him. I didn't wait to see what happened and Shunshine passed the group and into the battalion. I looked around as everyone turned to me. I was surrounded by what felt like a sea of people. I took a deep breath and steadied myself. Sorry about this. Bones erupted from me and impaled those around me. Those not fast enough were impaled, and those fast enough were still impaled, though with a longer bone spike. I twisted and broke the bones attached to me. What is that? I pointed my fingers towards a group of people and spread them as wide as I could. Ten finger bones shot out and hit those standing in front. I shunshined into the group, and bones erupted from all over me once again. I shifted and broke the protruding bones. It's a demon. I looked at the who spoke. He had been impaled but was still alive. Maybe there's a better way to do this. I aimed my palm at him, and a long thin bone spear erupted out of my palm, ending the survivor's life. My clothes were tattered, and I ran my free hand over my destroyed shirt feeling slightly annoyed. I exhaled loudly and refocused on my surroundings. I twisted my wrist and broke the bone. I think this is the way to go someone jumped at me from behind, and without turning. I aimed my palm at them. He was speared through the throat. Two more tried to attack me, and they both got bone spears to the chest and stomach. Yep, this was indeed the way to go. I saw people were congregating around me, and decided it was time for a change in scenery. I shunshined into another group and speared them with bones, this time making them long and thin. I twisted and broke the bones. Suddenly I and a few survivors were bathed in fire. W O O S H asterisk. Uh. I shunshined away focused on the one responsible. He was still exhaling a stream of fire, and standing in front of a group of people who were making hand signs and preparing to launch an attack. I ran a hand through my hair while sniffing the air. It took me a second to realize that my hair was utterly fucked, and I smelled like cooked meat. Fuck. What bastards. And why wasn't I paying attention? Some kunai hit me in the back and clattered to the ground. Bone spikes erupted from my body. This time I made them as long as possible, and sent them as deep into the crowd as I could. I twisted and focused on my surroundings looking for someone with stronger chakra. I shunshine next to him, and bone spears exploded from me. Wah! I twisted and broke the bones. I started looking for my next target while impaling a few brave attackers with bone spikes. There you are I shunshine next to him, and bones erupted from me once again. I twisted and broke the bones. Perhaps I should change it up. Bone spikes came the easiest but there was little I could do other than stab and impale people with them. Perhaps it's time for a sword. A bone protruded from my back, and I reached up and grasped it. I focused on making it as dense and sharp as I could. Finally, I ripped it from my back. 
I watched a few ninjas halt their advance at my display. I waved it at them teasingly. Never seen someone pull their spine out before. I saw one nod mutely and I snorted. B-O-O-M asterisk I focused on the area where the explosion occurred, and saw a Ruchimaru being chased by three ninjas with large reserves. I saw a few other people turn and look as well. Saya sunshine towards a Ruchimaru's slowest pursuer and impaled with my spine sword. One of the others turned and took a swipe at me with a sword, while the other continued his pursuit of a Ruchimaru. I sunshine behind him and tried to impale him. He blocked me, jumped away, stuck his sword in the earth, and started making hand seals. I saw his hands light up with what I'd call an aggressive amount of chakra, and he jumped towards me. Take this monster. I decided that I wanted none of that and shunshined into the surrounding ninja, ready to start my killing spree again. Interlude. I slowly made my way into Shiro's lair. When I was passing by I noticed his chakra had felt a little different, so I came to check on him. I paused my stride and stared at the sink for a moment, unsure if my eyes were deceiving me. Shiro, he gently set hit brush down, and looked at me with a raised eyebrow. Yes. I pointed at the sink but couldn't find the words. There was a spine with a handle on it sticking out of the sink drain. Is that a spine in the sink? Shiro shrugged and nodded. Why is it in the sink? Shiro shrugged with a slightly bemused smile. The drain was clogged. I nodded but wasn't sure what to do. Parenting books never prepared me for finding spines in places they shouldn't be found. You never know what you might need a spine for I sighed. I wasn't sure how to deal with this. How does one tell their son not to leave spines in the sink? I'm leaving next week. Shiro looked slightly saddened. Alrighty. Shiro shifted around and kicked his feet for a moment before he spoke. Is Kishina going with you? I raised an eyebrow at him. Was he eager to see her? Kishina already left. He was going through puberty. Perhaps Shiro has a little crush. She didn't say goodbye. I shook my head with a slight smile. She did, but you were hiding somewhere. Shiro nodded looking rather unbothered. Shame, perhaps Shiro didn't have a crush. Is Dai leaving as well? I nodded absently while I thought about Shiro's possible lack of interest in the opposite gender. The only person he has ever shown interest in was that weird child named guy I stared at Shiro for a moment. I hope that's not the case I want some grandchildren. Perhaps this is how my parents and grandparents felt I bit my cheek and put it out of my mind. It's best not to dwell on the past after all. Are you sure you don't want to come with us? I'm sure you could use a break as well. Shiro made his way over to me and wrapped me in a warm embrace. Sorry but I've got things to learn and allies to protect. Shiro's words couldn't have made me prouder, though I didn't want him out here any longer. I couldn't be proud of him if he was dead. Shiro, perhaps sensing my unease, gave me a reassuring squeeze before backing away. All right, I let out a heavy breath as I spoke, feeling slightly emotional. I didn't want to leave him here. But as it was this might be the best place for him. After all the only way for a ninja to become great is to bath in the blood of hundreds of enemies. Madness, blood, and relentless training make a great ninja. Shiro been relentlessly training his whole life and was plenty mad. Now all he needed was to forge himself in the blood of his enemies. I'll see you off when you leave. Shiro spoke breaking me from my thoughts. I nodded and started to make my exit. Oh yay before you go Shiro's voice was sheepish. I turned and eyed him wondering what he had gotten up to this time. I've awakened a bloodline. So don't be too surprised if you see me pull my spine out. So that's where the spine came from I said of course. Shiro awakened some sort of bloodline though hopefully. That involved as little experimentation as possible. I could tell you were different. I shook my head and started towards the door. This was too much for one day. I sighed and stared at my clothes. They were plain and lacked clan markings. It made it easier for you to blend in with Kanova's clan less ninja. And made it less likely for you to be targeted for your bloodline. While roaming on missions. It was something that I had started doing after seeing Shiro use it to great effect. Wearing my headband over my forehead and not my neck was another Shiro-inspired change to my wardrobe. Enemies aren't as interested in capturing a high ego when their forehead was covered. I sighed and sat on the edge of my cot. I leaned on my hand and drifted into idle thought. Shiro was experimenting with bloodlines. It was something that would set him against the clans in Kanoha. Bloodline theft was a very serious concern for the clans. And if they thought there was even the slightest chance of Shiro attempting anything, I stopped myself from following that train of thought. Worrying about it wouldn't do me much good. I held my hands in front of me, and stared at my palms blankly. There was always something to worry about. As soon as I wasn't watching him, Shiro was invading villages and gaining bloodlines. I wasn't sure how to feel about either of those how does one tell their son to stop invading villages? And how does one tell their son to keep their bloodline theft to a minimum? And even if I knew how, was it the right thing to do? I wanted Shiro to grow and become more powerful. Invading villages and acquiring bloodlines covered both so how could I tell him to stop? I ran my thumbnail along a line on my palm. I wish Shiro had less dangerous ways to become strong. But perhaps Shiro was taking the best possible path I rubbed my face with both of my hands. I didn't know. Enemy attack 5 kilometers out. I kept my focus on the advancing ninja. Most of them had at least Jonin level reserves which didn't bode well for us. Shiro appeared behind me and spoke before I had time to mentally register his arrival. So, what's happening? Shiro spoke casually like a potential battle wasn't a big deal. Though perhaps to him it wasn't a concern. 
turn, we're about to be attacked by a joint Kumo and Shimo battalion. I eyed the four with the largest chakra signatures. They were likely S rank ninja. What's the bad news? Shiro, that was the bad news. Kumo and Shimo have both sent two of their S rank ninjas. Shiro sighed through his nose. How fast are they advancing? I shrugged. They arrived fast, but were now taking their time approaching us. Slowly, they're trying to sneak up on us. I wondered what idiot made them slow down. If they had blitzed us, they could have done major damage before we were able to properly respond. Morons. I nodded. Who are the S-ranked ninjas and what do they look like? I hummed and sent some chakra into my Byakugan. I changed the chakra flow, and skin and bone became visible. I changed it again, and I could now make out what they looked like. Fury, he has dark spiky hair and wears round glasses. He's known for his skillful use of lightning release, and is an expert tactician. I hummed and scratched my nose trying to remember the blonde one. After a moment I remembered hearing about him from a briefing that Orochimaru had given about Kumogaka's current military might. The second one from Kumo is C, he's tall blonde, and also uses lightning release. I hummed again. I almost instantly recognized the second two. The other two look to be Shimo's twin butchers, both of them have bluish white hair, and are known for their kenjutsu. Shiro hummed with a slight smile on his face. Alright, I'm going to see what Orochimaru wants to do. His smile slowly grew, and with a slightly manic expression, he disappeared and reappeared beside Orochimaru. I watched them talk for a moment before focusing back onto the army. I stopped altering the chakra in my eyes, and went back to the Byakugan's normal vision. The ninja was still slowly creeping towards us at a snail's pace. It was lucky that whoever was leading them was an idiot. Shiro and Orochimaru made their way out of the camp, after a quick update on the enemy's position from me. I watched with bated breath as Shiro and his sensei slowly made their way to the back of the attacking ninja's formation. When they got close Shiro split off from Orochimaru and my brow wrinkled. I hoped Shiro didn't plan on engaging the ninja by himself. I focused on Shiro giving him my full attention. He activated his back again, and his chakra rapidly formed thin plates under his skin. I blinked slightly. The plates were obstructing my vision, and I couldn't make out his chakra system anymore, even his skull was filled with chakra preventing me from seeing any of his tenketsu. I saw a group of ninjas start towards Shiro. Shiro seemed to have noticed this as well, judging by the tilt of his head in their direction. Sadly, he ignored any potential danger and started stretching in the middle of the battlefield. My stomach lurched, and I felt like I was going to throw up. Shiro, what the fuck are you doing? My words came out in an untended whisper. Shiro ended his stretch with a pose. He was standing straight up, and his arms were uplifted. Finally, after a long torturous moment, Shiro stopped posing and focused on his surroundings. I watched an approaching ninja throw something at Shiro who stood there and didn't move. Any relief from Shiro's regained focus vanished, and I was again left with a knot in my stomach. Whatever was thrown seemingly did not affect as Shiro just stood there. Chakra covered his face, and Shiro rubbed it, while a ninja attacked him from the back with a lightning chakra coated sword. My heart nearly stopped when Shiro didn't move. The sword hit him, and a cry almost burst from my lips, until I saw a giant spike of chakra burst from Shiro, and pierce the ninja. I noticed that the sword was stopped by the plate of chakra, and took a much needed deep breath. Was this Shiro's new bloodline? A second spike came from the first and burst out of the ninja's head. Shiro shook his body, and most of the chakra and the spike traveled back into his body. I was focusing heavily on Shiro. What was his bloodline? He said something about pulling his spine out. Shiro pointed at one of the ninjas up in a tree, and he fell from the branch dead. Shiro in the meantime had left my area of focus and sunshined into what could have possibly been the worst place to be in. He was surrounded. Little by little people started to turn their heads towards him. Shiro seemed unaffected. He remained still. I saw him bob his head, and his body was covered by glowing blobs of chakra. Spikes burst from those chakra gobs, and impaled the people surrounding Shiro. Shiro twisted and broke the spikes coming from him, this time leaving loads of chakra behind. Shiro held his hands out towards the crowd, and a few fell. Shiro rolled his shoulders and sunshined into the crowd, where more bones exploded from him faster than I could register. Shiro twisted and broke the spikes at their base. He aimed his palm towards a fallen enemy, and he was speared with a finger-thick spike. I licked my dry lips. Someone jumped at Shiro from behind. Without turning Shiro aimed his palm over his shoulder and killed the jumping enemy. Shiro seemed to have everything under control two more sped towards Shiro, and they both got speared. Shiro disappeared and appeared in another crowd of enemy ninja. Spikes burst from him again though this time they were more of them, and they were thinner. Shiro twisted and the spikes detached. Shiro was suddenly bathed in fire surprising both me and him. Just as I started getting worried. I realized that Shiro was already impaling another bunch of ninja a ways away. I took a deep breath and stopped focusing on Shiro. I didn't need to watch him and work myself into a panic. He unscathed after being bathed in fire and taking a chakra-coated sword to the back. Watching him was pointless having a near heart attack every couple of seconds isn't going to help matters any I made my vision telescopic and almost immediately saw an approaching wave of ninja. That was an uncomfortable amount of ninja I put a hand on my chest. Looking at the wave of ninjas was giving me chest pains I took a deep breath and steeled myself. I have to let the battalion commanders know I couldn't let Shiro get swarmed. I took a second deep breath and set off. I had a bit of running to do. I shunned Shine behind the sword wielding Shimo Nin and tried to impale him with a bone spike. He dodged and hit me in the mask with his sword, but did little damage. Bone spikes erupted from me. 
but the sword wielder coated himself in lightning and sped off throwing a kumo nin at me who got impaled instead. I blew an angry breath from my nose. Why wasn't he using some weird frost-centric jutsu? I shun-shined after him, bone spikes erupted from my palms but impaled another Kumo Nin instead of my target. Whatever Orochimaru had finished with the other guy and was now bathing some ninja in a sea of flame. I however, couldn't seem to kill this one. And I was running a little low on chakra I shunshined to Orochimaru and shot my finger bones into the surrounding crowd. Why are we the only ones here? It was as Orochimaru predicted after we had decimated a good part of their force about 500 more came from behind and made our lives difficult. And I wasn't seeing any Kanoha Shinobi around us. They're probably having their own battle a distance while Orochimaru was interrupted by a streak of lightning that shot towards us. He made a single hand sign and waved his hands, blocking the lightning with a wall of wind. I pointed my fingers at our attacker and fired them. I don't think I can do this for much longer. I still had my seal, but I hoped I wouldn't have to tap into it. I'm tired of this as well. He finished his sentence, slapped an explosive tag onto someone's forehead, and kicked them into the crowd. B-O-O-M asterisk I think it's time to retreat. I'm going to take one more shot at Shimo's remaining S rank. Orochimaru shook his head and smiled at me. He started going through some hand seals. Formation of 10,000 snakes. I watched in disgust as hundreds of snakes came from Orochimaru's mouth. I absently mindedly impaled an attacker. While I watched a tidal wave of snakes pass through the battlefield, I watched a blade appear from within the snake's mouth and impale a screaming man. People were running and trampling their slower comrades while trying to escape. I stood quietly trying to understand what I was seeing. After a while, Orochimaru stopped vomiting snakes and stood up. It seems I took care of the Shimo Nin for you. I blinked. Probably. I just watched hundreds of people get buried in snakes fuck. I still don't have any army destroying attacks, clean up any stragglers and meet me at the camp. Orochimaru ran off in a light jog, only pausing for a moment to launch a wind blade at a still living opponent. Sigh. I stayed where I was but pointed at a survivor and launched my finger bone at him. Gah. Kumo and Shimo cut their losses and retreated, so I was left to wander and think. I walked through camp absently looking at the wounded. My main problem with the Shikotsu Miyaki was my lack of range. I couldn't control my chakra when it got past 6 or so feet around my body. If I could have created a forest of bone blades like Kamimuro did the battle could have ended much sooner. Or at least I could have done more damage I could increase my range with training. But it was slow going, anyone have any soldier pills? Someone dropped two into my hand. Thank you miss. I popped one in my mouth and put the other in my pouch. Alrighty. I looked at the line of people waiting to get into the medical tent. You, you, and you, come here. I pointed out some of the most injured. Come here, I'll heal you. It didn't hurt to build some good wall with the soldiers. How are things on your end? Mom didn't look like she had even fought so I wasn't overly worried about her. But it never hurt to ask. I stayed out of it and directed the squads. I hummed and pulled a Semben out of my poor patient's side. I ignored his gasp of pain and looked at Mom. And Dai. Mom smiled. Last I saw Dai kick someone's head clean off. Hum I activated my Biakigan and browsed the medical tents for a moment. He's flirting with one of the med nin, so I'm sure he's fine. As I said that I saw Dai leap from his bed and start doing push-ups. Alrighty I deactivated my Biakigan. How are you feeling, Shiro? I hummed for a moment and started looking for my next patient. Weird. Was what I eventually settled for. I spied a nervous but unharmed woman and stared at her for a moment. The more I kill the less valuable life seems to me. Mom hummed and stared at me but didn't speak. I waved the woman over when we made eye contact. Hello miss what's the problem? She looked fine but slightly pale. I've been feeling sick. I wanted to see if I was poisoned. I hummed, took her hand, and after a moment I knew her problem. You're not poisoned, but you are pregnant. I looked at mom and pointed at the now speechless woman. Mom nodded and took the woman by the hand leading her away. Next. I pointed at someone missing an arm. You have that arm. I can reattach it if you have it. He shook his head. Sigh, get some friends and look for it. If you find it in time, I can reattach it. I showed him off looked around for someone else. You, come here. I pointed at someone who was holding his intestines in both of his hands. Are you sure you won't come with us? I eyed my mom as she pouted. Yes, I'm sure, and don't pout at me. As much as I wanted to get to Kanova and take some DNA from every Hayuga I could, I was better off staying where I was and learning under Orochimaru. Here, give these to who they're addressed to. I handed her a stack of envelopes. And buy a house or an apartment complex. I don't want to have to do any missions ever again. I had been done with missions for a long time. I had no interest anymore. Alright write to me, and don't let them send you to grass. I gave mom a hug and die a youthful thumbs up. Alright, get out of here before someone needs something. Mom and die nodded. I sent a final wave and turned not bothering to see them join the other ninja heading home. So, what's the plan for today? Orochimaru was having a blast, a good amount of people surrendered, so he had a lot of test subjects. I'm going to continue my experiments, you are free to do as you wish. I rolled my eyes, he was politely asking me to scram alright, see you later sensei. I started making my way out of Orochimaru's lab. Shimo only had one more S rank ninja so they were unlikely to participate in the war any further. Kumo on the other hand had a surplus of S-ranked ninja. I was wary of engaging with them. They had the current rakage, whatever Jinchuriki they had, and the future fourth rakage, all of whom I was extremely wary of engaging with. With their crappy S-ranks dead, they would likely send one of the dangerous ones. Though hopefully they stayed where they were and kept Kiri busy looking at my DNA, 
provided no clues about my limited control at a distance. Or at least I couldn't see anything obvious there was probably something amongst my Hyuga DNA. But I had no idea what most of it did, and it wouldn't be easy to find out what they did or could do. It was foreign, but that was about as much as I could discover. It's going to take a while to discover what it is without invasive gene manipulation. I don't think I could get away with doing that sigh I looked at my burnt hair in the mirror and pondered the future. I was finally somewhat strong. Now I needed to decide what to do. Zetsu and the Akatsuki were going to be my main concern in a few years. Most of the old ninja like the third Reikage will die, with Anoki and the third Hokage being the exceptions. I got the Shikotsu Myaku, so the Tensigen was next on the list. Although I still had no clue how I would get it, going to the moon seemed like my best bet. But there were other avenues to explore. After the war, things would be slow until the Nine Tails attack. I'll use that time to shore up my Fuenjutsu and see if I can get into space-time seals. If I could get my hands on the Horatian even better, I wouldn't be able to travel to the moon right away. But I would have somewhere to start. Maybe if I was lucky, I could find what those moon Otsutsuki used to travel to the elemental nations. That guy must have had a way there and back. How else would he have acquired the Byakugan? I had regrown my hair and felt like a new man. Well boy I decided that it was time I go do something I had wanted to do for a while. Sensei, would the Hokage be mad if we took over Shimogaka? I watched Orochimaru ponder on the idea for a moment. Probably Orochimaru returned to riding some sort of seal on someone. Why? We have the manpower to occupy Shimo. We just need to bring our stuff in and get set up. I only really wanted to look around the place. Their version of the cage tower didn't have any scrolls. So I wanted to have a look around the village and find their loot. The Hokage wants us to continue as we were and occupy our small corner of frost. I hummed and admired Orochimaru's seal work. He seemed to be making some sort of cursed seal prototype. Exciting and worrying. Can I go pillage them then? Orochimaru nodded distractedly. Don't get caught and if you do get caught find a way to shift the blame onto someone else. I nodded and gave him a sloppy salute. Will do. I'll make sure either I or Okiri get the blame. Orochimaru shook his head and showed me with his hand. I spun on my heel and started towards the exit. I've got a village to loot. A couple of shunchans later and I was standing within viewing distance of the wall. I activated my Byakugan and took my time scanning the village with my telescopic sight. I wasn't seeing much. They had some sort of underground system of bases connected by tunnels. But other than that there was nothing of interest. I watched the chakra of those in the tunnels for a moment before getting bored. The tunnels seemed to be where most of the shinobi lived or operated in. I created some bone claws on my fingertips and concealed my chakra. I'm going to climb that wall and find some loot after stealing some clothes. I was bundled up and enjoying a nice walk with a smile on my face. Shimo was a nice place on the surface. It seemed to be mostly civilian, with only the occasional ninja bounding from rooftop to rooftop. If I hadn't seen the underground complex I probably wouldn't have suspected they would have such a thing. I wandered Shimo's market and eyed their wares. There was a distinct lack of vegetables, and what seemed to be a surplus of meat. I browsed a while longer before setting off in search of their bank. There was a surprising lack of fuenjutsu in the bank. Or as it was named the Shimogaga Bank. There was some sort of sensors and what seemed to be pressure sensors under the floor panels. Some Chunin level guards rotated every couple of hours. All in all, their defenses were shit the tuning guards were likely sensors. So I'd have to take them out before they sounded or triggered any alarms. Would they have seals tied to their vitals? That's what I would do. But I guess it's unlikely they would do the same. They didn't even have any chakra sensing seals. I deactivated my Byakugan, blew a breath out of my mouth, and watched the fog my breath created fade and disappear. The lack of seals oddly made me feel less safe if there were stronger defenses. I would probably feel better about robbing the bank side. I'll look around a little longer, maybe I can find where they keep their forbidden techniques. I stood staring at what I dubbed as the underground library. It had a lot of traffic around it, people were coming and going, and there were even some residences built around it. There was some seal work on the walls as well, though it only seemed to be for reinforcing the tunnel. There was also a well-stocked armory. Though it was heavily guarded I decided that it was too much work to get in there. I turned and started back towards the bank, there would be a shift change in a few hours. That's when I'll strike 5 minutes after the shift change. I struck, I killed the two guards and went on my merry way. The sensors were annoying, but they seemed to have no backup. I cut the wires and the sensors were dealt with, the pressure sensors weren't much trouble either. They activated an alarm at the guard station, so they could be ignored. My real problem was the vault I stood looking at the vault door. There was a combination lock and two keyholes. I eyed the keyholes. I walked over and stuck my finger into the opening. Bone started to fill the keyhole eventually. I turned my wrist and heard a satisfying click. I repeated the process with the second keyhole and smiled when I heard a second click. Now I stood staring at the combination lock. I placed my hand on the lock and started pumping chakra into the mechanism. I placed my hand on the dial and started turning it at random. There were four wheels like pieces of metal inside the lock, each wheel had to align, so a piece of metal at the top could fall in, and allow a handle on the vault to turn unobstructed. I hummed, gave up on the dial, and started turning the wheels with my chakra. Eventually, the wheels were in the correct position, and the piece of metal fell into a slot, and no longer obstructed the handle. Finally I grasped the handle and gave it a turn. I heard something shift and at the vault door. The door cracked open. I smiled and pulled the door open the rest of the way. I walked into the vault room and looked around. There was a shelf with surprisingly little cash, and a few bars of gold and silver. I blinked at the cash inside. There was around 2 million Ryo, which sounded like a lot, 
but was only enough to buy a nice house. Every 100 ryo was about what a dollar was in my last world I sighed again, and started sealing the spoils away in some scrolls I prepared. Clearly, Shimo kept most of their funds elsewhere. I looked at the wall of lockboxes. I wasn't too interested in them, but for the sake of completion, I decided I should clear them out. I walked over and stuck a finger into one of the keyholes, and made a bone key. I turned the key, pulled the door open, and the lockbox out. I opened the box and admired the jewelry and bills in the box. I closed the box. I think I'll just seal the boxes up. I won't have time to empty every one of them. I blew a breath from my nose and cracked my knuckles. I got most of the lockboxes. There was a row at the top that I had given up on, because I was too short to reach it. I decided to forego them and just loot the easy to reach ones. I gave the lockboxes one last look before I started plastering explosive notes all around the vault. I eyed the pile of bone keys on the floor and sealed them up as well. I didn't need to leave any evidence I left the vault and started placing as many explosive notes as I could around the building. I decided that this would cover up my chakra signature, or at least delay someone trying to find my chakra signature left from my chakra usage in the bank. I gave the interior of the bank one last look before I made my way towards the back door which I entered from. I was crouched on top of Shimo's walls and eyeing the village. It's too bad Orochimaru wasn't interested in occupying the place. Jirobika had a nice ring to it I made a hand seal, and an explosion lit up the night. I admired it for a moment before turning around and jumping down. Alright, here's your share. I said as I placed a scroll on Orochimaru's table. Orochimaru side eyed me. How generous I rolled my eyes at him. I gave you exactly Exactly half, which was true, if one didn't count the lockboxes. Orochimaru nodded but didn't move to check his share of the loot. Will you get me some more test subjects before you go? I nodded. Sure thing, I'll be back in a moment. The Shikotsu Myaku was pretty easy to use, as long as I was only making spikes. Making anything complicated required more concentration and chakra control. Neither were a problem, it was a minor inconvenience at best. My new problem was my lack of weapon skills. So, the plan was to have my clones work under Orochimaru, while I spent time figuring out my new limits. I already had a few ideas and was eager to test them. I'll find an instructor soon as well perhaps when I return to Kenora. I was surrounded by a suit of bone and doing some stretches. Although the bone armor protected me pretty well, it was unwieldy and slow to form. It slowed me a great deal and limited my flexibility. But I guess it was ideal if I wanted to tank an attack. I put my hands in front of me and formed bone latus. I'm not sure what good the latus would do. It was just a test of control. The armor and latus retreated into my body and I was again feeling annoyed at my ruined clothes. Although the bone armor was neat, it would probably never see use. The armor under my skin served its intended purpose. I often wouldn't need more protection than that. I needed a name for it though bone armor was already taken dermal armor. I guess I shrugged. I guess it didn't matter too much I'll only need cool names. If I'm shouting my attacks at people I sighed and held both of my hands in front of me. Three claws grew from my knuckles and brought a smile to my face. I was finally able to disembowel my opponents with wolverine claws. I had a goofy smile on my face. Wolverine claws became a reality my smile faded, and I was left feeling slightly empty. I ignored the feeling and coated the claws on my right hand in electricity. I watched the blue electricity spark and jump from blade to blade. I tried to make the lightning chakra vibrate as much as I could, before slashing the claws on my left. The lightning claws bit into the other claws, but stopped partway through. Almost useless. But at least I figured out the cutting part of lightning release thank you Kumo Nin. I smiled mirthfully and retracted the claws. So far it seemed that I only had control of the bone shape before it came out of my body, and I had slight control when it came out of another bone. It wasn't too big of a deal. Perhaps I just needed to let the bone branch out like the branches of a tree did. How did Kamimaru make that forest of bone blades? Could he make bones outside his body and without other bone as a base? I dismissed the thought, it was something for later. I didn't have the range for it anyway. Bone Senban started to appear from every inch of my skin. I cracked a smile. I probably looked like a porcupine I launched the Senban I looked around the room admiring the Senban coated wall. I made a finger gun and launched a Senban from my finger dip. Alrighty I held my palm out and started launching multiple Senban like a machine gun. I pursed my lips. And I was worried about lacking ranged attacks. Though should I use actual bullet shaped bones? I probably shouldn't give the ninja any ideas I held my palm out again. And a long thin blade erupted from my skin. Palm blade I guess. I retracted the blade before making one erupt from my wrist. There we go wrist blades I retracted the blade and sat down with crossed legs. The Shikotsu Myaku provided one with extreme versatility. It was extremely overpowered. As cheesy as it sounded the only limit was your imagination. That and the fact that you couldn't do complicated bone manipulation outside your body. I smirked slightly at the thought. The Shikotsu Myaku was versatile. I almost didn't need any weapon skills, though I should still pursue them a bit. Learning things was never bad after all. Biological absorption was done there was still some cancer, but that could always be dealt with later. The technique could be further refined in time I was now somewhat unkillable and strong. It left me feeling empty and bored. I had gotten the Shikotsu Myaku way ahead of when I had planned on acquiring it. I was bored but lacked the motivation to do anything. So, I was spending the day laying on my cot and making different bones appear from my palms. I had made my skeleton become my armor. I was literally covered by my skeleton. I got out of my bed and made my way over to the bathroom. I looked in the mirror dully. This was creepy as shit. What were those things called? Hollows. 
I looked like a hollow I just needed a hole in my chest, and the look would be complete sigh I started retracting the bones and watched in the mirror as my creepy skull wearing face was replaced with my more normal face. Now I knew how to strike fear in my enemies I succeeded I've awakened the Shikotsu Myaku in myself, and have a working form of immortality. But I've never felt emptier, we're attacking Kumo's camp tomorrow. I raised an eyebrow. What happened to occupying a little corner of frost? I looked down at my half-finished seal. I could already tell it was garbage. It was a mess of French and English, with the standard Yuzumaki swirl in the middle. So it can draw nature chakra in and power itself. The Hokage wants us to keep Kumo occupied, so the Ambu can run missions in the area. I hummed and eyed the seal, perhaps Devao was too aggressive. But that's what I wanted the seal to do. Sounds vague. I wanted a way to instantly absorb and overwrite some cells. The overwrite part was done as long as it just stem cells. What I needed now was a way to change cells into stem cells via Fuenjutsu. The idea was that I'd have a way to instantly renew myself, should my body ever become too damaged. The strength of a hundred seal was for when I ran out of chakra, and this seal would be for when my body was too damaged to heal. A backup for the backup if you will. I looked at Orochimaru and saw he was studying my seal. He wasn't saying anything so I remained silent as well. I'll see you tomorrow at dawn. Orochimaru turned and started leaving. I blinked, it was surprising he wasn't asking about the seal. I turned my eyes back to the seal. It was unbalanced and inefficient, but I was lost on how to improve it. I sighed I'll come back to it later, as it was now things were fine. I was watching over the preparations while Orochimaru assigned the platoon leaders their missions. Orochimaru opted to attack midday. I believe the goal was to surprise them and destroy their camp, before beating a hasty retreat, before we engaged in a long drawn out battle. I liked the plan, it had only been a month since the attempted surprise attack, and I hadn't had time to store a lot of chakra in my seal. So, a short battle was ideal for me. I hummed. A short battle would also let me test out some moves. Long time no see. I stared blankly at Minato. Yes, long time no see I turned and stared out at the camp, coming to assist in the attack. Last I heard Minato was in grass messing up some Iwanin. Minato crossed his arms and nodded. Bring your students with you. Minato shook his head. They're too green to bring to the front. I shook my head at that. We were 10 months into the war. There was no way that they weren't bad already. Shame. I wanted to meet them. Minato sent me a warm smile. I'll bring them around. I'll be here for a while. Fuck good. I can't wait to see how much Kakashi has improved. Minato winked at me. Not as much as you have Shiro. I smiled like I was embarrassed. Hopefully I can keep it up. I fear my growth won't always be as fast as it is now. Minato laughed and nodded. Hopefully. I took a deep breath. This was annoying. Orochimaru, Minato, and I were leading the advance. Now and then I'd look back and wonder how 2000 Ninja could jump around and be as silent as they were. It was off-putting. We're approaching their camp. We eliminated their best senses. So you should remain undetected should you use your Byakugan. I took the hint and activated my Byakugan expanding my range to its maximum. I didn't see anything so I made my sight telescopic. The camp was in range, but a problem was immediately apparent. They have someone with way above cage level chakra reserves. I was instantly feeling less enthusiastic about the whole thing. Orochimaru frowned but didn't slow his advance. Minato just nodded and continued forward. I let my vision return to normal. Well, I say you take him. I looked at Orochimaru and stuck my tongue out. It was your idea after all. Orochimaru didn't look amused but nodded and stayed silent. I figured he would be fine, he was slippery. I chuckled and started forming my dermal armor. There was another one there, though they had less chakra they were still above cage level as well. I formed a featureless mask over my face as my eyes were my main weakness now. I'll cause as much destruction as I can, while you and Minato distract the two stronger ones. I blinked under my mask, a chakra coated blur shot towards us. Never mind, they're coming to us. I slowed my pace and let Orochimaru and Minato pull ahead. I'll take a different route. I gave them a wave and sunshined as fast as I could to the right. I think I'll avoid that shit show I successfully avoided the future fourth rakage and his pet Jinchuriki. I was now overlooking the camp and wondering if I should have taken some soldiers with me. The camp seemed to be preparing for a fight. Perhaps it was my chakra usage that alerted them. I was almost three kilometers from them though I sighed and slowed my perception. I took one last look and made a rough plan before I sunshined into the camp. I arrived in the densest group of people and sent bone spears as deep into the crowd as I could. I ignored the sounds of screams and sunshined into the next densest group. This time I launched bone Semben from my body. Though it seemed to not be as effective as I would have liked, most of those that I hit were still alive and would live to fight another day. It was something to rectify I aimed my palm at a ninja who tried to attack me from behind and speared him through the throat. I moved my palm slightly and shot the bone spear through the throat of the one I killed and into the crowd that now surrounded me. I stood for a moment and idly watched the surrounding Kumo Nin. I wonder if I should stop shooting projectiles what's stopping someone from picking them up and using them. They are chakra conductive as well. I pointed my index finger at a brave ninja who had stepped forward and pierced his eye with a bone senbon. I sighed and cracked my knuckle. Nobody wanted to attack, they seemed content to group up and watch me. I'll fix that claws burst from my knuckles, and I coated them in electricity. Sorry in advance. That sounded less cool when my voice cracked. No matter, my voice was muffled by the mask anyways I slowed my perception further and sunshined into the group. I ran my chakra coated claws through the stomach of a fleeing ninja. I had done this so many times that it was blurring together. I took a deep breath, deactivated my Byakugan, and returned my perception to normal. 
The mask on my face receded, the smell of blood hit me, and I stood staring at the mess I had made. All that was left around me were bodies, any surviving ninja had fled. There were pools of blood and areas where the ground dipped. Using my claws was messy, there wasn't a single bit of me that wasn't covered in blood. I retracted the claws and took a handful of my tattered shirt and ripped it off. I looked and saw a single man standing in front of a tent and staring at me. I stared back at him. The man had been standing there since I had started and hadn't moved. A second man clutching his stomach which was bleeding through his bandages wobbled out of the tent. He paused and looked at me. I looked at him and briefly contemplated killing them. Gentlemen I hope we never cross paths again. But should we meet again, I hope it won't be under such similar circumstances. I figured I'd done enough killing today. I took a breath, activated my Bayakigan, and shunshined back the way I came. I got within range just in time to see Minato dodge the future Rakage's punch. I raised an eyebrow and slow my perception. Minato flashed behind A and aimed a kunai at his neck, but was interrupted by a huge tentacle. I shunshined into the clearing they were fighting in and took note of the lack of an army. I deactivated my Bayakigan and I'd kill a B and Orochimaru with a raised eyebrow. My eyebrows climbed higher, Orochimaru seemed to be having a blast, and was laughing evilly. Whilst he stabbed at Killer B with his sword, I turned my attention back to Minato who had flashed onto a tree and was sending me some hand signs. Mission accomplished was he asking about things on my end. I blinked at him and gave him a thumbs up. Retreat I gave him a second thumbs up. I was more than happy to stay uninvolved. Minato flashed behind A who had been looking at me. I blinked at him. Nope. I shunshined away as fast as I could. Interlude. It was a normal day. When I woke that morning I couldn't have imagined what would happen. I licked my dry lips and did my best to ignore the rakeage who was staring sharply at me. It started when the alarm was sounded, your son and his partner left to take care of the threat. I took a shaky breath. I ignored the alarm and returned to the medical tent. A glass of water was placed in front of me. I held the glass with two hands and took a sip. I stared at the glass feeling slightly better. Then the screaming started. I rushed out of the tent to see what was happening, and there it was standing in the middle of what must have been 20 screaming men and women. I paused for a moment and took another sip of water. The monster spoke, its voice was muffled making what it said unclear from where I was standing. One thing was clear. I could tell from its tone, the monster was bored, we were nothing to it. I took a deep breath. It descended on our ninja with claws coated in lightning. It was like it was dancing through them every step or move it made another body fell. I tried to swallow my spit, but I choked on the lump of my throat. Ninjutsu bounced off it, and Jinjutsu seemed to have no effect. It continued its slaughter undeterred by anything thrown at it. I nervously placed the water back on the table and continued. It didn't spare anyone, it tore through the camp and chased down those who tried to flee. I blinked rapidly, trying to stop myself from tearing up. The memory of it chasing after some fleeing genin fresh in my mind. Eventually the monster stopped its massacre. It had run out of people to slaughter, and it stood in front of me. The thin layer of human skin it was wearing had fallen off revealing its true form underneath. I wrung my hands together and tried to calm my breathing. Its mask melted, and I saw the smiling face of a boy. I looked up at the rakage and saw he was watching me attentively. It gave me a bit of courage, so I continued. It stared at me and said gentlemen I hope we never cross paths again. But should we meet again, I hope it won't be under such similar circumstances. I did my best to copy the monster's board drawl. It then disappeared into thin air, like it wasn't even there. I finished and slumped into the chair exhausted. I took a moment to gather myself before looking at the rakage. Thank you. You may leave. I nodded gratefully and stood up. Thank you, rakage Sama. I bowed deeply and did my best to not look like I was running as I left the room. I caught up with our useless army. I sped up to the front of the group and eyed the people who were leading the retreat. So, why are we retreating? I would have liked to have some support whilst I was rampaging through Kumo's camp. We probably could have killed off more of them. Minato-sama told us to sound the retreat when they encountered the Eight Tails Jinchuriki. I hummed and didn't question it further, though I would have apprecated having some sort of backup. Alright speed up. Orochimaru and Minato are holding off the Eight Tails Jinchuriki so you useless fucks can escape. I slowed my speed and fell back so I could guard the rear. This whole ordeal was annoying Minato and Orochimaru caught up to us when we were approaching the camp. Minato didn't have a hair out of place, but Orochimaru was missing a kimono sleeve. I raised an eyebrow. Orochimaru looked to be in a foul mood, and Minato in contrast was smiling cheerfully. Were you successful? Orochimaru hissed at me. I nodded and Orochimaru seemed less angry at my nod. I looked at him for a moment longer, but when he didn't speak, I sighed and sped up. I wanted to sleep for a day or two. I also need to think about whether or not I even want to be here anymore. I've had about enough of the war. Shiro, look who I brought. Minato dragged a struggling Abito into my lab, followed by a more sedate Rin and a bored looking Kakashi. What happened to them being too green? I rolled my eyes and sent Kakashi a nod in acknowledgement and studied Rin for a moment. The markings on her cheeks were much bigger than I remembered them being. I turned my eyes away from her and looked at Abito. He looked as stupid as I remembered him looking. Nice to meet you. I'm Shiro Hayuga. 
I watched a look of shock pass over Abito's face, Rin was studying me, and Kakashi still looked bored. Whoa, you're Shiro Hayuga. I eyed Abito who was finally released and was now staring at me. Yet, yeah. I replied and popped the pee. I turned my eyes to Kakashi. Long time no see. Kakashi nodded. Alrighty. Well tell me about yourselves. Abito jumped up and down and started blabbering excitedly at me. I eyed Minato for a moment hoping he would contribute. He just smiled. I gave him the stink eye. Fuck I escorted Team Minato from my lab. I got them out the door and shut it behind them. I was finally free of them I made a hand seal and a clone appeared. He went off to apply for a break. I was about done with Frost. I couldn't wait to have some time away from this garbage. I sighed I needed to make a rough plan again. Now that I had achieved what I wanted to, I was having trouble finding the motivation to do anything. ENA manipulation seemed to be the way to go currently. But I wouldn't be able to add any bloodlines to myself, even Orochimaru hadn't figured out how to do that yet awakening a dormant bloodline was easy PC. But correctly integrating a foreign bloodline was not possible currently. Any bloodlines that could be integrated were weak, and didn't operate as well as they did in the original holders, I let out another sigh. Or maybe I just needed to edit my DNA slightly, and make my best traits more pronounced, and awaken any useful dormant traits. I know Orochimaru did something similar to himself he said something about awakening all his potential. I sighed and stared at the ceiling. I was feeling oddly lost. So, you're heading to Kanoha. Orochimaru was applying a seal onto the back of a woman. Indeed. I watched fascinated, Orochimaru was trying to make some sort of sage mode seal. Bring your mother when you come back, she was one of the most competent scouts I've ever worked with. I hummed in affirmation, having my mother around made me feel better as well. I'll be leaving in a week. I gave Orochimaru a wave as I left the lab. So, were you planning to become a Mednin? Minato had somehow volunteered me for the job of teaching Rin. Minato had been talking, and when I had tuned him out and was nodding automatically, long story short, I accidentally agreed to teach her. Yes. Rin spoke quietly. I hummed, Rin was surprisingly intelligent, being able to use medical ninjutsu at such a young age was impressive. Alright? I was quiet as well, if only to match her tone. I either tune and I asked Rin to heal. He was up and moving about, and seemed to be in good health. I showed him away and turned to stare at Rin. I don't think there's much I can teach you about medical ninjutsu. Rin looked disappointed, but I trailed off and smiled at Rin's hopeful look. I do have something that you can learn. I had no interest in spending months teaching her. Follow me. I turned and started making my way out of the medical tent. I made a hand sign as I was walking, and a clone appeared behind me. He went off to heal some people and I continued on my way. I stared at a tree and thought Rin was standing behind me, staring at me questioningly. I sighed. All right, back up and watch. I turned my head and looked at her for a moment. I saw she backed up, so I proceeded to punch the ground. EOOM asterisk the earth crater beneath me. My eyes widened. It seems this technique was a little more powerful than when I last used it. I stood in the center of the crater awkwardly, and waited for the dust to clear. The dust cleared and Rin was standing at the edge of the crater and staring at me with bulging eyes. I smiled slightly at the sight. This is called Chakra Enhanced Strength, if you're interested I'll teach you. I saw Rin nod mutely, and my smile grew. Alright, let me put a gravity seal on you, and then we'll start. I waved her over. I'll tell you about the technique while I apply the seal. I sat in the middle of the crater and patted the spot in front of me. Rin made her way over and sat rather elegantly in front of me. Alright, roll up your sleeve. I reached into my pouch and grabbed the scroll containing my supplies. Chakra Enhanced Strength or One for All as I've called it requires a lot of concentration and chakra control. I put a drop of blood into a tiny jar of ink and started mixing it with my brush. It allows you to enhance your strength to monstrous levels. I ran the brush tip along the lip of the jar, getting rid of excess ink. This is done by storing chakra into one's hands or feet and releasing it onto the target with timing. I pressed my brush onto her skin and started on the seal. It sounds easy and it is easy. Rin turned her head and stared at me with a questioning look. The most important requirement for the technique is high bodily strength. I brought the brush back down to the jar and dipped it in ink again. If you use the technique without the required bodily strength you will break your bones and snap your muscles and tendons when throwing a punch. I brought the brush up and continued. So, you have to get your fitness up before you can learn the technique. Rin nodded. Is that why I'm getting a gravity seal? I nodded. Yep, if you're not training efficiently, you're not training right. I started adding the finishing touches to the seal. I'll train you enough that you'll be able to practice by yourself. But after that, it'll be up to you. I added the final character on the seal and started packing up my equipment. I eyed Rin whose fist was covered in a barely visible light blue glow. Less chakra. She cut her output in half. That's about right. Now punch the tree and release the chakra the second you hit it. Rin jabbed the tree, and it shook before leaning to one side. I saw her wince and hummed. Heal that and go again, you'll figure out the timing as well as your current limit with practice. After a few hand seals Rin's left hand was covered in the green glow of the mystical palm jutsu. I watched as she touched her right hand and started healing it. Things were slow going, she was making progress, but it looked like my trip home would be delayed. I guess I'll make a scroll so I can leave it with her. Teaching Rin had delayed my trip home by a few weeks, 
but I'd finally called it quits, and was ready to head home. Alright it's been fun, but I'm heading home. Minato had a frown on his face, Kakashi looked bored, Rin sent me a smile, and Abito looked crestfallen. Alright, hopefully, we'll see each other soon. I nodded and started pulling a scroll from my kunai pouch. This is for you Rin. It contains all I know about the strength enhancement as well as some future parts for you to take. I had written about the strength of A100 seal, body modification, and a few other things I learned. Hopefully, it would give her some direction. Well, sire guys. I sent them a cheeky wave and sunshine away as fast as I could. I was done with Frost, and I couldn't wait to get home. Kinoha looked exactly the same as it had when I left. The atmosphere was different though. The last time I was here was several months ago I was feeling odd to say the least. It's the butcher a certain whisper was carried better than the rest and it reached my ear. I wondered Kanoha feeling weirded out by the whispers and looks I was receiving. I wandered around for a while longer before eventually making my way back home. It turned out that home was no longer my home. It was now occupied by a new family who directed to the house on board. She had left a note though after apologizing for breaking into their house and disturbing their dinner. I made my way to our new house. I stood in front of the new house slightly regretting not sending a letter. I had wanted my trip home to be a surprise. I imagine mom wanted the house to be a surprise as well. The house was less of a house and more of a mansion. I gave it a rough glance with my Bayakugan and saw it was covered with Fuenjutsu. The house was also protected from Bayakugan snooping. I smiled slightly, I was afraid to try and enter the house, now that I had seen how well protected it was. Shiro, I turned and saw mom leaning out the window. Yo, I sent her a wave. She jumped from the window and made her way over to the gates. I didn't recognize your chakra I smiled sheepishly but said nothing. My body and chakra were slowly changing. Nothing major so far, just a slight affinity for Yang release, according to Orochimaru. I accidentally scared the family living in our old home. Topic change no jutsu. After warning me not to use my chakra mom led me around the house, and showed the place off while leading me somewhere. Its house was big enough for 10 people. It was old to say the least. Eventually, we ended up in the middle of what I'd call a storage room. So, why get a house so big? Mom hummed and took my hand before cutting the tip of my finger with her nail. I wanted you to have something to inherit when I pass. I watched a single drop of blood fall to the floor. The moment it hit the floor, a previously unseen jumble of Fuenjutsu emerged and absorbed my blood before becoming invisible once again. So how much did that cost? Mom smiled. Kishina and Minato did it for us. I hummed. How nice of them. Mom grabbed me by the hand and started pulling me away from the room. She pulled me down a set of stairs and into a hallway where she proceeded to drag me down another set of stairs into the basement. Here's where you can build your lab. It was great and all, but I had one question. Where's emergency rations? Mom smiled nervously. He chewed a hole through the house and escaped. I eyed her for a moment. I wasn't sure I believed that all right I had been meaning to free him anyway. Which room is mine? I decided that emergency rations was probably living his best life and terrorizing the female rabbits wherever he was. I'll show you. Mom had a slightly silly smile on her face and proceeded to drag me out of the basement. I sat in my room staring at the ceiling. I wasn't sure what to do. With the Shikotsu Myaku I didn't feel the need to practice any ninjutsu or jinjutsu, nor did I think I should bother with them. I needed to train with some weapons so I didn't injure myself if I tried to wield them. I also wanted to expand my reserves. It would fuck my control. But did I even need it right now? I didn't have any plans for more DNA manipulation. Control could be trained up again. Though it would be annoying puberty was also starting. But so far it hadn't been a problem. Sigh I rolled over and flipped my pillow to the cool side. I think I'll wait on the reserves even though it was tested and seemed alright. It was probably better to let my reserves expand naturally. Even if I felt that way. I wasn't patient enough to wait for it to happen. Whatever I think about it tomorrow Guy was out with his team. Dai was training furiously in celebration for his promotion to tune in, and Mom was visiting her cousin. So, I spent a good part of my day walking around Kinoha under a henge. Kinoha seemed to be doing alright as far as I could tell. The atmosphere seemed gloomy, but the markets were well stocked, and there weren't limbless war vets on every street corner. Kinoha seemed to be in much better shape than I pictured it in my head, as far as I knew. Grass was the only place where we were getting slaughtered. So maybe Kanoha was doing extremely well. Watcha got. I was slightly startled and bone spikes exploded from me. I turned my head and saw Kishina had narrowly dodged a bone spike to the gut. The bone started receding. Sorry. This was the downfall of having amazing reflexes. No worries. Kishina sent me a cheerful smile. I sighed and looked at my torn clothes. The Shikotsu Myaku was a clothes destroyer. I was looking at a scroll for Kenjutsu. Though the scroll was now destroyed. I picked up pieces of the scroll with a weary smile. Want me to teach you? I know a little Kenjutsu. Jutsu. Kishina grabbed me and shook me excitedly. I wouldn't want to take up your valuable time. Kishina squeezed me. That's okay. I'm not allowed out of the village right now anyways. I raised an eyebrow at that. Alright? I wasn't sure there was a way out of this. There's nothing more I can teach you after a few days. I had all the moves memorized and ingrained in my mind and body. You learn fast Shiro, maybe Kenjutsu is your calling. I just hummed. Kokoro no Koka for the win. Who else should I try to learn from? Kishina hummed. Makoto is good with throwing weapons. I shook my head. I good enough with them. 
Kishina hummed and tapped her chin. I can't think of anyone else right now, but I'll let you know if I think of anyone. I sighed and nodded. All right. I waved my bone sword around. It didn't have a guard and was six feet long. I like them tall and thin. A sniggered burst from my lips. All right, I'm heading home. I gave Kishina a wave. All right, see you around. A bone came from my palm and connected to the sword, and the sword soon receded into my body. I sighed and stared at the sky. What do I do now? Interlude. Shiro Hayuga was a once-in-a-generation prodigy. He excelled in ninjutsu and tajutsu, and was known for his strength and his distaste for social niceties. Shiro was an S-ranked ninja, and when someone spoke about him it was with fear or respect. He was called Konoha's Butcher, which is why I wondered Shiro Senpai. Senpai raised an eyebrow at me. Unlike what the rumors stated Senpai was friendly and easy to talk to. Yes. I took a deep breath before asking. Why did you learn medical ninjutsu? Senpai hummed while picking up blades of grass. I knew it was something that would pay off later. I stared at him, silently asking him to continue. Sigh, I knew the time spent on medical ninjutsu would save me time elsewhere. I stared at him expectantly. I figured out I could use medical jutsu to forego exercise by strengthening my muscles artificially. Senpai ran a hand through his long white and grey hair before continuing. By tearing and healing your muscles near constantly you can simulate exercise and forego it to some extent, thus saving time. I smiled at him. Wow, that's smart. Now you have more time to pursue other ninja arts. That was clever. I wouldn't have thought of such a thing. Yep. Senpai nodded looking disinterested. Senpai was a hidden wellspring of knowledge. I would be a fool not to seize this opportunity. Do you have any tips for me Senpai? Senpai shook his head looking slightly exasperated. Yay don't ever become an official mednin. The amount of disdain in his voice when he spoke was shocking. I stared at him disbelievingly. What did he have against medical ninja? If you become a medic you get shafted in almost every way, mainly because of those rules. I knew what he was talking about and remembered the rules vividly. It was something near constantly mentioned in the medical books. 1. No medic ninja shall ever stop medical treatment until the lives of their party members have come to an end. 2. No medic ninja shall ever stand on the front lines. 3. No medic ninja shall ever die until they are the last of their platoon. 4. Only those medic ninja who have mastered the strength of a hundred technique in the ninja art creation rebirth are permitted to discard the above mentioned laws. It's especially annoying that you get punished if you don't follow those rules. They're not even official rules anyway. Senpai shook his head and stared at the sky. Whatever, let's get back to training. Senpai sprung up and made his way back to the crater covered part of the field. I'll write down my method on exercise stimulation. Burn it when you are done with it. Senpai turned and looked at me. Well I'll do it later I suppose I nodded happily. Thanks Senpai. I was happy to learn new things, especially in such chaotic times. I'd try to get some tips from Senpai later. He seemed annoyed now. I decided it was best I didn't push my luck. But then again perhaps it was worth the risk. Senpai, why do you push the chakra outwards around your fist when you use super strength? It was something that had been on my mind for a while. Why did you need to enhance your muscles and send out a blast of chakra? It's so you don't just pierce through whatever you're punching, it spreads the impact. Senpai's tone was bored. I made a sound of understanding. So, everything is affected by the force of the punch. Senpai just nodded and hummed. Yep. I stayed quiet and trailed behind Senpai, as he made his way to a slightly less destroyed part of the clearing. I smiled. I couldn't wait for Senpai to teach me more. This was definitely an opportunity I couldn't miss. Senpai was one of the most skilled users of medical ninjutsu, it'd be a waste to not make the most of this. We were a year into the war, and things seemed to be going fine. At least for me. For Kanoha things could be better. We were getting slowly but surely pushed from grass by Iowa, while Kiri had taken up residence in Noodles, and were prodding at our border. The only place that we seemed to be doing well was Frost. As far as I knew the small villagers were also participating in the war in various ways. But I had been paying little attention to them. Suna and Kanoha weren't doing a whole lot of fighting, only having the occasional skirmish with Kanoha in River Country. Suna was mainly fighting with Iowa in Claw Country. All in all, things were going alright. I sat around pondering DNA and all its mysteries. According to Orochimaru the main issue with trying to gain a bloodline was how malleable the body was. He said that children were the only ones who were still malleable enough to accept such a massive change to the DNA. That made me remember the woman with the mysterious healing bloodline. I'm pretty sure she was able to accept the cells of many different people and integrate them into herself. Though I could be wrong I could barely remember what happened there. But could her bloodline make my body more malleable? I still had some of her cells perhaps it's worth looking into maybe the fault in her healing would be worth it. Four clones and I idly floated around in the hot springs. It wasn't something I had known about until I heard someone talking about it when I passed them. Part of the Naka River was diverted to the area to make hot springs. It was Kanoha's tourist attraction and generated some income for the village. I had wanted the clones to go train some lightning techniques while I drifted around in the hot springs. But the clones were non-cooperative and decided that they would be taking a dip as well. I guess I'll have more memories of relaxing in the hot springs I'd been in Kanoha for two weeks now. I was halfway through my vacation I didn't have much of a direction at the moment. Just some vague thoughts sigh after going to the old house and taking my notebooks from the floorboards. 
I was left no less confused about which direction I should take. Stem cell vampire I was done with this. I was theoretically immortal, so long as I replaced my cells regularly. Super cool bond weapons. This worked, but not in the way I wanted it to, as I had the Shikotsu Myaku it was now pointless. Super cool bone weapons part 2 again, the Shikotsu Myaku made this pointless. Biological absorption. I was somewhat done with this. I had applied my modified override seal onto some bone senbin, but I still had to make normal cells into stem cells by myself. So it was still not usable in combat. Human chakra batteries. I had given up on this a long time ago. I just didn't have the required skill in Fuinjutsu to make such a thing. Deadpool immortality. Something else I had somewhat given up on. Though I still had plans to try and figure out ways to use that telomere regenerating enzyme. The brain and intelligence. Something I've completely given up on. No matter how many brains I scanned. I never got closer to figuring out how to increase intelligence. Tell beast immortality. Something I no longer put any thought into. The sealing work required to make this work would be unbelievable. Flexibility. Useless remove fingerprints. Useless Otsutsuki limb slash flesh graft. This was something I still thought about a lot. Now that I could manipulate DNA. I likely wouldn't need to graft any limbs or flesh onto myself. I still wasn't sure how it would work out though. Perhaps I could figure out what made the Otsutsuki S chakra different. I figured it had something to do with both their DNA and the strength of their soul. Generations of Otsutsuki eating fruits from god trees probably changed them at a metaphysical level. So even if I had their DNA, would it even matter? I sighed I also wanted to look into the Bayakigan and the Hayuga more. But it didn't seem that pressing at the moment. I'll focus on the Shikotsu Myaku. I still haven't used it to its full potential. I stood in the center of the third training ground. Behind me danced long thing bone tail. With a thought, it shot forward and impaled a tree. It wasn't too bad three more tails sprouted from my lower back and impaled the tree one by one. Though they were more tentacle than tail I shrugged. Mare my tail started receding and bone arms started to grow from my shoulders. The only problem with making bone appendages was that I needed to use chakra to move them. It wasn't too big of a deal, but the technique could easily be disrupted by the gentle fist. I clenched my two new bone hands. This was also another mere human appendages were predictable, the arms started receding. The only other interesting find was the temporary lightening of my body. I could decrease the bone density or make them hollow and speed myself up some. Though the increase in speed came with a decrease of the bone's durability, so the technique likely wouldn't see much use. I could also change my bone structure and make myself double jointed. It would make my attacks more unpredictable, but I was uninterested for the most part Sai. The only limitation to my generation of bone was that it had to come from existing bone. It was a stupidly powerful ability it made me wonder why it didn't see more use in canon. I had also thought some more about the Susanoo. Could I make a big old bone Susanoo? I did have a limit on my range still something to try later, when I have more chakra control range. I'd like to have some bullshit techniques as well not that I didn't already have some, but one could never have enough, after a grueling Fuinjutsu session with Kishina. I was again in the third training ground, and I was again trying more stuff with the Shikotsu Myaku. I held my arm out, and a giant sword slowly grew to cover my arm and hand. The tip of the sword left my six foot control range, and I could no longer manipulate it. The sword covered my hand and forearm. It was heavy and could only chop at people. I started retracting the bone. Perhaps longer and thinner was the way to go. I let the bone recede so I could start again on the sword. Bone came from my hand and slowly became a long thin blade. This time I can move my wrist and flick the sword around. That's better though I was still undecided on whether or not this would be better than just creating a separate bone sword. That was not attached to my body I sighed, and the bone started to recede into my body. What to do what to do? I held my right hand out and started creating long thin blades on each of my fingers. Who was the guy who used these? I swiped the air with my finger knives. They didn't seem useful I could just make claws they were about the same thing anyway. I sighed and ran my non-bladed hand through my hair. I wanted nothing more than to create a forest of bone blades. But that likely wouldn't be possible for a while Sage Mode Sage Mode increases all your base stats and also heightens your senses, which allows you to better use your newly acquired strength. Sitting still and not moving a single muscle apparently opens up a person's body to natural energy. Natural energy needs to be perfectly balanced with spiritual and physical energy to achieve Sage Mode. Too little natural energy and one won't be able to enter sage mode. Too much and one turns to stone. When one learns from the snakes at their stupid cave, they gain snake-like traits and the ability to manipulate their surroundings. When one learns from the toads, they gain toad-like traits and the ability to use the toad's special to jutsu. Harashima also had his own uninfluenced sage mode. There were no apparent animal traits or special abilities. Meaning that Harashima perhaps taught himself Kabuto was able to enter a permanent sage mode with Jugo's DNA slash cells. Six parts sage mode makes one immune to any chakra attacks without senjutsu chakra. All in all, I knew a fair amount about Sage Mode. Well, I did at the time I wrote this now it was mostly forgotten. Flipping through my notes had refreshed my memory a little. 
but I figured there was probably more to it than what I had written. Something to think on should I bother with Sage Mode. Naruto learned it in like a week, but he was the reincarnation of a quarter space god. And so was Hashirama Jiraiya. Never mastered Sage Mode maybe when you were part space god, you got an affinity for natural energy. But then again Kabuto learned it so. It wasn't impossible for non-space gods. But then again, Kabuto was barely human when he learned Sage Mode. Neither Minato nor Jiraiya could use Sage Mode, the only normal base humans couldn't use Sage Mode. That didn't bode well for me. As long as no one could overcome my absurdly strong defense and amazing speed, I was pretty much unstoppable. Unless I ran out of chakra, or someone sealed me, or used an unbreakable Sharingan Jinjutsu on me, or used an unstoppable Sharingan Fire on me, or hit me with a perfect Susanoo. So, all in all, I was pretty confident I had a chance with everyone but Sharingan users, or Rinnegan users, or Tensigan users, or even Sage Mode users, or the third or fourth Reikages or any of the Hokages or most of the Jinchuriki or the Space Gods was I still weak. Kinder, but which direction do I go in now? I sighed as I sent the last of my chakra into my seal. My reserves were growing with the onset of puberty. Puberty had hit me hard and fast. I was now overly emotional and had frequent voice cracks. My arms, legs, hands and feet seemed to have gone through a growth spurt and left the rest of my body behind. Overall, it was quite the experience. I had forgotten about this part of my previous life. Mystery Woman's DNA was unusual. There wasn't much that was different about the genes corresponding to her physical body. But a lot was going on with the genes that were responsible for a person's chakra composition. They were different, but not foreign, like the genes from the Otsutsuki were. A human mutation that had nothing to do with the Otsutsuki. It was quite interesting. But it also meant that I likely wouldn't be able to make use of the bloodline myself. Both my Kagaya and Hayuga bloodlines had a lot to do with my chakra composition. So, I probably shouldn't be messing with those genes, at least not until I'm more knowledgeable. Splicing out a dominant gene was different than splicing a whole bunch of genes together and trying to give yourself a bloodline. I yawned it's probably getting late that's the issue with having no windows. It was hard to tell the time. I sent five of my clones off to find out about some basic Jinjutsu. It was the only thing stopping me from becoming a full Jonin. Or so I thought. Guy had become a Jonin with only his Tajutsu, so I should be able to become a Jonin without Jinjutsu if not. I'd have to find a way to use some Jinjutsu. Though Jinjutsu was a huge annoyance, I didn't have the required control range to make it useful. The only way I could use Jinjutsu was when someone was standing within 6 feet of me. Jinjutsu seemed useless without a Sharingan anyways. My fights with the many Kumonin provided some insight into Lightning Chakra. Mainly if one vibrated it, you could use it to cut things. It was surprisingly not in any of the books I had been reading, nor had I thought about it. Though it felt obvious in hindsight. So here I was hand covered in lightning trying to vibrate the Lightning Chakra as much as I could. The skin on my hand peeled and smoldered. With a thought, I released my hold on the chakra and let it disperse. I licked my dry lips. That wasn't a problem that I've had in a long time. I sighed and watched the skin on my hand regrow. Whatever I held my hand out with my palm flat and facing the sky. I slowly created a small heaven's palm. I tried to vibrate the chakra as much as possible, and threw my little lightning ball at the ground. It pierced the ground and expanded into a ball of lightning, leaving behind a slightly smoking crater. That was a lot more powerful I shifted slightly. That was much better than it had been to think I had given up on Heaven's Palm Chakra Flow. Chakra Flow is the flowing of chakra through an object, as well as any technique that increases the potency of a weapon, by flowing chakra through it. I use it on my bone claws, and I used to use it on my bone senban. Future Asuma used Wind Chakra Flow on his knives to increase his cutting power, and the third and future fourth Rakage used use it on their bodies, along with some sort of shunchan variant. Or at least that was my thought from my brief look at A. I guess that he was using Chakra Flow, though how he was able to use it without destroying his body was beyond me. I knew that if one ran Chakra Flow through their hand it was near crippling. But why were the two cage able to do it without damage? And make a cloak out of it no less it was a mystery. I've run Lightning Chakra through my body before, and it never had any positive effects on me. Did they have an amazing affinity for lightning release or something? Or were their bodies just strong enough to handle running a massive amount of lightning chakra through and over it? I sighed and rolled over. I love pre-sleep thoughts Jinjutsu was all about using chakra to tamper with the mind. The goal of a Jinjutsu was to trick all five senses of a target and make them perceive an event that is not happening. This is done by altering how chakra flows to the brain or the cerebral nervous system. Yin release was heavily involved in Jinjutsu, though I didn't understand it myself. I figured it had something to do with creating vivid illusions. I doubted that altering chakra flow to the brain alone could cause someone to see something that was not there. But I wasn't going for anything overly complicated, I was just going to use the standard annoying Jinjutsu. Jinjutsu like that were obviously fake, and their only goal was to cause as much mental trauma as possible. Demonic illusion. Hell viewing technique and the Tsukuyomi were the first ones like this that came to mind. Both of those I wouldn't be able to use, I sighed the book said that one in seven people were born with a yin affinity, and only they could use complicated Jinjutsu whatever I only had a week, until I had to leave Kanoha, and make my way back to Frost. I'd sadly not made any progress on the Chidori. I wasn't even sure which direction to go in with the Chidori. I remember it being created from Kakashi's failed attempt to add nature release to the Rasengan. Did Minato even invent the Rasengan? I wasn't sure. I wasn't showing it off that often so, 
it was possible things were still on track and Minato would create the Rasengan. Though who knew at this point? Kanan was dead. Dai, Mom, and I slowly made our way back to Frost. None of us were in a hurry, delaying our return by a day was acceptable and wouldn't raise any eyebrows. How was your break, Dai? I hadn't seen Dai much, he got promoted to tune in with my recommendation and had been training furiously ever since. It was most youthful. I trained Guy in the ways of a youthful gentleman and spent much of my days training youthfully in preparation for my return to Frost. Even with years of decoding Guy speak, I wasn't sure what the ways of a youthful gentleman entailed, sounds youthful. I gave Dai a thumbs up and Mom rolled her eyes at both of us. What were you up to? I looked around for a moment trying to find out who Mom's question was directed to, I realized it was me after Dai stared at me for a moment. I practiced with my new KK Jenkai and made some improvements to Heaven's Palm. I eyed Mom for a moment. I guess I might as well ask her too. What did you do during your break, Sumiko? Dai, however, beat me to it. I've been trying to make a new Tajutsu technique. I raised an eyebrow at her and Mom smiled. And it's a secret I sent her a bland stay. All right, I was glad she wasn't wasting time on Ninjutsu. I sighed and looked forward. We were almost at Hot Springs. I arrived at the camp and sent a clone off to Orochimaru for instructions. The camp seemingly hadn't changed. The only major difference was the presence of some clan members dotted throughout the camp. It was slightly worrying either there was a large battle that went unfavorably or 200 or so people went on break and needed to be replaced. The latter was sadly less likely. Long time no see. I gave an annoyed looking Orochimaru a nod. Shira Hero. Orochimaru nodded back and continued studying a map he was leaning over. So I see a lot of new faces. What happened when I was away? Orochimaru took a deep breath before replying. The third rakage happened. I hummed feeling thankful for my timely break. It's unusual for a cage to leave his village. It truly was, the cages took no missions and weren't supposed to leave their villages. Indeed Orochimaru didn't look up from the map. He came, decimated a forces for a while before becoming bored. And leaving I hummed again. It sounded about right in canon. The third rakage was known for facing 10,000 shinobi alone. Though I forgot what nation they came from. Has anything changed that I need to know about? Orochimaru shook his head. Nothing that comes to mind I just nodded and started heading towards the exit. Alright, thanks sensei. I eyed him from over my shoulder as I left his demeanor was slightly different. I put it out of my mind for the moment. I needed to see if my minions survived sadly, only one of my minions survived. It was a female jonin named Asada Aomi. She had accompanied me on my second mission in Frost. Sadly, she wasn't even one of my top three favorite minions. I eyed her missing arm for a moment before looking at her sleeping face. I grabbed the clipboard at the end of her bed and gave it a quick look. She's in a coma. Due to a traumatic head injury, it said she had been this way for a week. I sighed. I placed my hand on her head and hit her with the diagnostic jutsu. Slight swelling my hand was covered in a green glow, and I proceeded to leave a good amount of healing chakra in her brain. There wasn't much more I could do for her. Let me know if she awakens. I turned and stared at a medic nin who had been shadowing me. If I don't hear about it immediately. I tilted my head slightly and smiled at him. He froze and stood unmoving. Someone will have to die. I eyed him for a moment longer before leaving. It's a shame I didn't know more about the brain I was standing with Orochimaru. While he stared at the map and planned. Kumo had moved their camp to the frost slash cloud border and Shimo had moved all their ninja to the area surrounding their village. After I left, Minato and Orochimaru fought with A and B twice more before the current rakage came and fucked shit up on the only day Minato wasn't there. From what I've gathered the rakage wanted revenge for the massacring of his troops and the killing of two of Kumo's S-ranked ninja. He beat Orochimaru savagely before killing a good amount of the army and leaving. I smiled wearily. Orochimaru would be staring at the map for a long while until he figured out what he wanted to do. He did this before every battle that he planned, often staring at the map until late into the night. I rubbed my eyes and started to leave. With my return, Minato was back in grass and was watching over the shitstorm there. It pissed me off slightly that I hadn't been promoted to Jonan even though I was killing S-ranked ninja and massacring armies. I couldn't understand why I wasn't promoted yet. I put it out of my mind, a promotion wouldn't make me stronger anyways I eyed an Ichiha as he proceeded to systematically demolish an Inuzuka and his dog. The Inuzuka was causing problems and this was the result. I watched the dog fly out of the makeshift ring and collide with a spectator. I hung I don't need to be here things are well in hand. The Inuzuka collapsed and struggled to get up. I hummed again and started towards my lab. I needed to look further into my DNA. But first I needed to make my lab Hayuga proof a week later. My lab was Hayuga proofed. And I was ready to look into my DNA some more. Shiro your girlfriend is awake. I turned and saw an unexpected face. Kiji you look twice as ugly as I remember. I eyed Kiji's new scar. It looked like someone slit his throat. Something we now had in common fuck you. That's the Kenji I remember so. What brings you to Frost? I made my way out of the lab and into Frost's cool air while Kenji followed. I got some bitch pregnant and after a fight with her brother I was told to come here. I eyed him for a moment wondering if he was serious. Is this a wanted pregnancy? Kenji gave me a so-so gesture. Hey, it was unexpected, but we'll do right by the kid. I hummed. What's the brother's problem? Kenji shrugged. Sometimes you're the villain in another person's tale. I eyed Kenji. That was unexpectedly profound. So kid, 
I heard you're a big shot now. I nodded and accepted the topic change. Yet, though they won't promote me to Jonan. Kenji laughed. Ha 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 cunts. I snorted. Yet, I entered the medical building that my minion was located in. So, I heard my friend was awake. Kenji nodded. Yet, good job threatening that asshole. She's been getting the best possible treatment since. I hummed. Good, I'd hate to have to keep killing until I found someone competent. Kenji laughed loudly scaring a passing trainee. Ha! Huh. I'll let them know. We approach my minion's room and Kenji opened the door before I could knock. Alrighty my minion was still in bed, so I proceed to her bedside and looked at her. She looked dead in the eyes and slightly gaunt. She wasn't a happy camper. Kenji can you go get me one of the prisoners? Kenji nodded. Yay what for? I motioned to her arm. I'm going to replace the arm. Kenji raised an eyebrow. What if I'm refused entrance? I hummed Kenji hadn't been swearing as much as he usually did. Use my name and threaten the guards with death. If they still refuse, Kenji nodded. What kind of prisoner do you need? He smirked I unsealed my fuenjutsu supplies and shoot him away with my hand. Any will do. Kenji nodded and went on his way. I eyed my minion who was still unresponsive. I shrugged, sat down cross-legged, and started on a DNA overwrite seal. I only needed to rewrite the stem cells, so I only needed part of the seal and a few stem cells. Easy PC. Here's your prisoner I nodded and stood up. Good, put Aimee to sleep, and I'll show you a new trick. Kenji nodded and dropped his cargo. I heard the guy's head hit the ground and went slightly. Alrighty I walked over and sliced an arm off at the shoulder with my chakra scalpels. I healed his wound over so he wouldn't bleed out, and brought the arm over to the little corner that I had taken over. Alright? I held the severed arm with two hands, and started filling it with my chakra, expelling the chakra already in the arm. Okay? Watch this, it's pretty neat. The arm slowly turned into a dark red slurry, and started to drip into a pan I had prepared beforehand. That's some gross looking shit. I rolled my eyes the rest of the arm fell through my fingers, only leaving bone in my hand. I tossed the bones behind me and stuck my finger into the slurry. I started scanning it for cancerous cells. You gonna drink that or something? I ignored Kenji and pulled my finger out of the slurry. Surrounding my finger was a bunch of cancerous cells. I flicked my slurry covered finger in Kenji's direction. I ignored Kenji's curses and brought the pan of red slurry over to the seal and placed it in the center. Make yourself useful and inject the seal with your chakra. I went over to the prisoner and blocked the tinketsu on his neck. I didn't want him causing problems. So why turn the arm into sludge? Kenji gave the pan a swirl before handing it to me. It makes the seal less expensive chakra-wise. I stuck my finger into the sludge and stirred it while using the diagnostic jutsu. It was cancer-free alright, now I'll fill the slurry with chakra. My hand glowed green, and I filled the stem cells with a good amount of healing chakra. And now the hard part begins. I'm going to regrow the arm, feel free to ask questions as I go. I set the pan on the bed and started unwrapping her elbow stump. Why did you have to use more arm than she lost? I shrugged. So, the seal has something to use to change the cells, making something from nothing is expensive chakra-wise. So the seal uses parts from the other cells to make the changes. I looked at the stump, it was clean cut, and could have probably been reattached easily if they had the arm. Alrighty the hardest and most time consuming part of this whole thing is making new bones. I trailed off as manipulated a tentacle of sludge and pressed it to the stump. So, I'll do most of the bones later. Kenji was biting his thumb as he watched me. No hand seals. I shook my head. Not yet. It's more expensive this way. But I prefer to know what I'm doing, rather than trusting in the hand seals to do the work. Cells weren't hard to manipulate anyways. What did you even need me for? Kenji sent me a slightly hostile look. I hummed and tapped my chin with a finger. I needed someone to power the seal Kenji grunted. Yeah, I figured. I rolled my eyes and focused back onto my task. Wow, I nodded. Bones seemed to be easier to do than I remembered perhaps a happy side effect of the Shikotsu Myaku. Alright, I've got stuff to do. Let me know how she's doing when she wakes. Kenji sent me a nod. I turned and made my way out of the room. Don't forget to get rid of the prisoner. The whole ordeal was surprisingly less annoying and time consuming than I thought it would be. Perhaps my yang affinity at work. My chakra was feeling warmer both to myself and others who were sensors. Though hopefully, it wouldn't cause me problems. Fujutsu had some connections to yin release, as did Jinjutsu and my lightning constructs. It was just that my chakra needed to lean more towards spiritual energy than physical energy. When I formed constructs yin gave form to things that didn't already have it hopefully. A yang affinity didn't affect my ability to use lightning constructs. Something to test in any case. Lightning constructs were doing okay. I slashed the air with my tiny lightning knife. I studied it for a moment before releasing my hold on the chakra and letting it disperse. I might as well do one more experiment while I was here. A blade of bone grew on the edge of my hand. I coated it in lightning chakra and chopped at the air. Hum. I didn't have anything I could chop at in my lab. I let the chakra disperse and withdrew the bone. I'm not sure if it'll work out. But I guess I'll see soon. Orochimaru seemed to be planning some sort of attack. I'll have plenty of time to test out some ideas I had. Orochimaru continued to stare at the map, and I the ever dutiful assistant stood and stared at the map as well. Well, a clone was I was checking in on my minion who had gained an arm but was still very traumatized. A severe case of mutism, whether it is neurogenic or psychogenic remains to be seen. Meaning she has brain damage or is extremely traumatized and can no longer speak. I eyed her as she ate some hospital soup. Are you feeling better? She nodded at me and continued to slowly eat her soup. 
Are you interested in continuing your career or are you done with the ninja life? She eyed me for a second, shrugged, and went back to eating her soup. I leaned against the wall. It sucked that I would have to get new minions my train of thought was interrupted when Kenji walked in and stared at me. What? Kenji eyed Ayumi for a moment before looking back at me. Will you teach me the arm thing? I shrugged. Are you any good at Fuenjutsu? Kenji shook his head. I've never had the patience to learn that shit. I sent Kenji a half smile. Fuenjutsu is kinda the most important part of the whole thing. Ayumi seemed to be interested in the conversation as was Kenji. If you had a Yang affinity or the person you were healing had great vitality, you probably could still use the technique. The Yang affinity was a complete guess on my part. But if someone was a Nuzumaki or Senju, you could probably remake a limb without too much trouble or adverse effects. Yang Affinity. A quiet almost whispered question stopped the conversation. Ayumi herself seemed surprised she spoke, and had covered her mouth in shock. I watched her try to speak some more, before she eventually gave up with silent tears streaming down her face. I sighed, Yang is said to breathe life into Solus form. What does that have to do with the um thingy? Kenji ignored the atmosphere with a roll of his eyes, and asked his question. If you have a Yang Affinity or your chakra leans more toward Yang, then medical jutsu has better effects. It was a half-formed theory I only thought so because the senju was said to be great at medical ninjutsu, and lean toward yang on the chakra spectrum, at least according to the book, I browsed through during a trip through the archives. That and my own medical ninjutsu had gotten noticeably better. Anyways, I'll see you two in a bit. I started making my way out of the makeshift hospital. I wasn't in the mood to discuss half-baked theories about yin or yang. I didn't know anything substantial about yin or yang, most of what I knew were vague guesses. I shouldn't be spreading my vague and likely wrong theories. So, I opted for a tactical retreat. The sensor gene was a series of genes most of which were recessive. There were many variations of these genes, each variation providing different benefits. Some combinations could give someone crazy sensing range. But almost all chakra sense, when it came to people within 6 feet of them. Minato was one such person. Some combinations could give someone average or medium range, but an amazing sense for detail. Mom was one such person, according to her anyway. Or some combinations could give someone Karen-like chakra senses. If that was even the right name I've forgotten a lot nowadays I scratch my nose and ignore the thought. Sigh. To get the best result for the sensor genes, would require a lot of study of different DNA. I wonder if Orochimaru had done any research on the sensing genes. It would save me a lot of time if he did he did have a lot of stuff about DNA and personality traits, and loads more about DNA and body structure, and even more about DNA and chakra. So hopefully the whole sensor DNA thing will go well. If not, I'll have to do the research myself which wasn't a bad thing. It was just super time consuming without doing messy experiments. And messy experiments was something I wanted to keep to a minimum. Interlude. Shiro are those cigarettes in your pocket? Shiro shrugged. No, it's a conversation starter. Sumiko didn't look amused. It's what? Shiro shrugged again looking annoyed with his mother. If a pretty girl asks for a cigarette, I can give her some and use it to start a conversation. Shiro trailed off as Sumiko's frown deepened. Thus, they are not cigarettes, they are conversation starters. Shiro continued only to trail off at Sumiko's glare. Get rid of them. His mother spoke with a growl making me flinch instinctively. Sumiko saw me flinch and looked apologetic. Sorry sweetie, don't be nervous. I don't mean any harm. She approached me while she spoke making me flinch again and back away from her. It's fine, I'm still a little jumpy as all. I held my notepad up and sent her a serene smile, trying to show her I was okay. I heard a snort behind me and saw Shiro giving his mother a disapproving look. Stop scaring my minion, that's my job. He continued with his disapproving look even as his mother gave a disapproving look of her own. Stop calling her your minion, she's a person use her name. Sumiko turned and started leaving. Shiro made faces at her back as she went, and only stopped when the door shut. Sigh. Shiro sighed, picked his cigarettes out of the garbage, and pocketed them. Welp, let's go. I've got experiments to do and children to orphan. With a dark chuckle, Shiro stepped through a curtain and into his lab. I followed behind as a sedate pace, not feeling all that eager to begin my minionhood. I brushed the curtain aside and met eyes with a woman strapped to a table. I stopped where I stood and gauged from what I was seeing. Don't feel too bad, she can't feel a thing. Shiro placed a bin under me and gave me a reassuring back rub, while directing my line of sight away from the woman. I pushed him away and pointed at the woman. Why I tried to speak more, but the words wouldn't come out I looked into Shiro's eyes, trying to show him what I was feeling. Believe it or not this is a good deed. Shiro brushed my hair away and stared into my eyes. I try to use the women first, because what awaits them in the prisons is worse. Shiro looked away. Sigh, I experiment on them first, so they don't spend hours in the prisons getting raped repeatedly over and over again every time someone has the urge. Shiro pointed to the woman, and my eyes were drawn to her again. Orochimaru doesn't care what happens to the prisoners, and lets anyone have free reign. As long as they're left alive, Shiro grabbed me by the shoulder, and started leading me out of the room. I turned my eyes away from the woman with mixed emotions. I wasn't sure how I was feeling. The reality is that what I'm doing is awful and irredeemable. I sensed a but there and I was right. But, should they stay in prison they will die anyway and suffer for as long as they are needed. Shiro started towards a cupboard. I don't enjoy what I do. 
but human experimentation gets faster results and saves the prisoners from arguably more suffering. Shiro grabbed a cup from the cupboard and started filling it with water from his canteen. Shiro handed me the glass. Though I saved the women from suffering, the same can't be said about the men, but they were going to die regardless. Though Shiro trailed off for a moment. With their deaths, Kanova advances Shiro trailed off again and looked at me deeply. I understand if you don't want to work with me. But as I said before, being my minion is a good opportunity to learn more and strengthen yourself while staying away from the direct fighting. Shiro held the stare for a moment more before looking away. Things were silent and for the first time in my life, I thought I might need a cigarette. It might help you if you find a reason to justify the experiments. Shiro spoke and stared at the ceiling blankly. And I stared at him. I justify it by telling myself that their death brings advancement and that their deaths weren't pointless. Shiro hummed and tapped his chin. By sacrificing the wicked, a better world is created. It's my favorite quote Shiro shrugged. It suits the situation somewhat by sacrificing the wicked, a better world is created. Every death brought advancement to Kanoha whether it be Jutsu advancement or knowledge. Every death would help Kanoha advance and stand above other nations. Every death brought with its knowledge that would strengthen future generations, ensuring they were more knowledgeable than their parents. Every death wasn't meaningless, every death brings advancement, I mumbled. Shiro sent me a smile. That's the spirit. Shiro lost his smile and turned to me. But in the end, justify it all you want. But what you're doing will still be irredeemable. Shiro stood up and started towards the exit. Take a break and if you still want to work with me, come see me in a few days. Well, Shiro paused at the door. Sorry for rambling. I hope it helped Shiro trailed off as he left the room. And I was left alone with my thoughts. I should have known Shiro's offer was too good to be true. But did I have any other choice? I buried my face in my hands. By sacrificing the wicked, a better world has created. Every sacrifice brings advancement. But would it be worth it? I didn't want to be weak, I wanted to know more, see more, and be able to do more, I didn't ever want to be helpless. And perhaps I won't be as helpless if I accept Shiro's offer, I sighed, and my body slumped. I didn't know what to do. I eyed Orochimaru, he was wearing his usual attire, and his hair was ungroomed. He hadn't stopped staring at the map since I had arrived, though he seemingly didn't have a plan even after all the staring he had been doing. I sighed and started making my way out of the building. Orochimaru got annoyed when I stood around and sighed at him, so it was better I'd just make my way out and find something to occupy myself with. Though I had an idea of what to do at the moment. Before I go, can I get your notes on reflex enhancement? Orochimaru shot me an annoyed look. A snake slithered out of his sleeve and regurgitated a scroll. Orochimaru flung it at me, and it landed in my hand with a wet slap. I stared at it for a moment that was extremely disgusting. Thanks sensei. I gave Orochimaru a cheery wave and left the building. Orochimaru's reflex enhancement seemingly had nothing to do with the nerves, and instead to be all about the muscles. I took my time browsing the scroll, and enjoying his elegant handwriting. Type 1 or slow twitch. It's mainly used for running. It is slow to contract smaller in size, and produces less falls. However, it also allows you to exert yourself for longer periods. The muscle fiber is red because of the higher oxygen content. So red was slow muscle type 2 or superfast twitch. These are anaerobic and rely on ATP and glycogen. This allows for more explosive force and speed, but also fatigues much more quickly. This muscle fiber is also known as white muscle. White is fast muscle type 2B or moderate fast twitch. These are intermediary muscles. They are useful for shorter durations of more intensive exercise, such as lifting weights or running. They are less energy efficient than type 1 fiber but more fatigue resistant than type 2. This is also known as pink muscle. Pink muscle is in in between I hum there were some notes throughout the scroll. You can't change your whole body to pink muscle because you need red muscle to stand up straight without collapsing. I snickered at the image of Orochimaru trying to remain stoic while he stumbled around like a baby deer. I brought my eyes to the notes again. Your abs held you upright all day and thus were made of mostly red muscle. Fine motor control was done by red muscle. So you should be wary of extensive changes to your hands. You needed a mix of all three muscle types to function effectively. But there were different mixes optimal for different fighting styles. I hummed and drummed my fingers along my desk. Orochimaru went on to talk about different muscle fibers that our ancestors had that have become redundant DNA, and that awakening these tremendously improve your reaction time, strength, and stamina. I browsed the scroll a little more before rolling it up and setting it at the corner of my desk. I interlaced my fingers together. This was quite the gift Orochimaru gave me. Though he called it a reflex enhancement, it was more of a muscle enhancement. Didn't he know I used a different method from his own? I feel like I mentioned it perhaps he forgot. He has been stressed lately. I sighed and decided not to think too deeply into it. At least I have a new direction for a little while sensing and muscle composition. How have you been feeling lately? I sighed eyed mom and continued with my seal work. I wasn't sure I wanted this exchange. What do you mean? I asked an eyebrow and withdrew my brush from the paper. You seem down lately. I raised an eyebrow and stayed silent. If you want to talk about anything I'm always available. I relaxed my eyebrow and smiled. Thanks mom. That means a lot. She sent me a brilliant smile. Anytime Shiro. Mom stood up and started towards the door. I grimaced slightly. I apricate the concern. But that was a weird moment Dai was well out of Jen and Hood. And was doing alright. He was average to Jutsu eyes. But had amazing strength, speed and stamina. When I had taken him from the Jen in core. 
I had hoped to take him up to Jonan level with extensive body modifications. But that seemed like it wouldn't happen. I had hoped that maybe Dai would see the horrors of war and decide that he desperately needed strength. But so far, no such thing has happened. All in all, the whole Dai thing seemed like a bust. But I guess Dai earning more money and dropping the title of Eternal Genin could be considered a win of some sort. I sighed, leaned back, and crossed my arms. Fuck my plan to make a super die was not panning out. Perhaps I used all my luck when awakening the Shikotsu Myaku, the bloodline with the longest name. I sunk further into my seat. I think it's time I start on the muscles I couldn't go full body pink muscle, but perhaps I'd max it out. My stamina was crazy anyway. Perhaps messing with my muscles would change that though I'll just have to find the golden ratio. Then sigh I stared at the ceiling and smiled. I still haven't finished with stem cells or DNA. So, there was still more to explore my minion was out of the field hospital and opted to stay in Frost. Which was good as I need someone to boss around AME. We're doing some body enhancements. She nodded silently. Alrighty get some prisoners three should do. She nodded hesitantly and started making her way to the door. I decided that I'll teach her as I go. Maybe she could be my Kabuto or my Sasuke I wasn't stealing any bodies or being overly evil. So there shouldn't be any betrayal hopefully trust. But verify as they say. I'll keep an eye on her. I suppose test subject 4 was doing alright. He was currently under a Jinjutsu and fighting an imaginary enemy in another room, under the watchful eye of my minion. The first three were half failures. Too much white muscle and one had explosive strength and power, but little to no stamina too much red muscle, and one had little to no explosive strength or power, too much pink muscle and one's muscles collapsed after extensive exercise so, all I'd done was confirm Orochimaru's notes I sighed. I had hoped that some sort of chakra shenanigans would let me convert the body's muscle completely into pink muscle. But it seemed that it wouldn't happen no major loss. It only meant that more testing was needed. I'd find the optimal muscle composition eventually I stared at Orochimaru. And he stared at me. Yes sensei. Orochimaru continued staring. How would one attack Kumo? His voice was dull and flat. Without earning the ire of the rakage. I wasn't sure he apparently fought 10,000 people for some days before dying in cannon. How would one kill the old monster? Fuenjutsu. I intentionally spoke aloud throwing my thoughts into the air. Orochimaru hummed and stared over my shoulder vacantly. Ahem, I cleared my throat. I sent a Ruchimaru wink. The rakage can't be mad about an attack if he's dead. I sent him two more winks. And one wouldn't need to attack Kumo if they were without a cage. I sent him another wink. Perhaps the rakage could be restrained. A Ruchimaru nodded looking proud of his plan. I shook my head. Perhaps the rakage can be sealed and starved to death. I sent two more winks at Orochimaru. Orochimaru nodded finally seeming to get it. Excellent idea. Kekaki Orochimaru threw his head back and laughed. I eyed the creep for a moment wondering if giving Orochimaru ideas was the wrong move leave. I have planning to do Orochimaru wave me away. I stood there staring at him for a moment before eventually shrugging and leaving. Whatever. Orochimaru could be a creepy old man by himself things had been boring as of late, with Shimo and Kumo taking a bit of a break. We weren't harassed as often as we once were. And even though we were still attacked now and then it didn't matter much. We had a few Hyuga and Achiho watching the perimeter, so most surprise attacks weren't surprises. I narrowed my eyes at a passing ninja. Blonde hair and brown skin he didn't belong. I pointed at his knees with my index and middle fingers. Senban launched from my fingertips. I ignored the jumpy ninja around me, and pointed at the now immobile ninja who was struggling to stand. Interrogation for him. The man's fate was sealed by my words, he was subdued and dragged off, and I was left staring at the spot he occupied and thought hopefully. He was a spy, and not someone with ancestry from Kumo. I put it out of my mind for a moment. It was weird to have people jump to obey my command. It was probably weird for them as well. I dragged my eyes from the spot the ninja occupied and looked at the sky. It was almost November so it was getting a tad cold. And it was snowing as of late. It was also almost my birthday something I had nearly forgotten about. I stared at the sky for a moment longer before continuing on my way. I briefly wondered if I was getting a little jumpy and overreacting. I normally don't attack people for looking suspicious. Or in this case, people who look Kumo why I sighed. Whatever I stood and stared at my mom as she chatted with Aomi while braiding her hair. When I say chatted with, I mean chatted at. I looked over at Dai who was doing one-legged squats in the corner, and Kenji who watched while drinking what I assume was some sort of alcohol. When did my lab become the hangout spot? I shook my head. What do I need to do to become Jonin? I directed my question vaguely into the room. I didn't care who answered just that someone answered. You need Jonin level skill in almost everything and a recommendation. It was Kenji who answered. I hummed and stayed silent. That was something I didn't know or didn't remember. But who did I need to recommend me? And why haven't I been recommended? Kenji joined me in fanning the flames of youth. I shook my head and focused on Dai who was witting out Kenji. Dai was staring into Kenji's eyes while doing squats I was feeling witted out even though I wasn't the subject of Dai's attention. I turned away from whatever was happening over there. I didn't need that in my life my body leaned more towards red muscle fiber. I hummed and ran the diagnostic jutsu down my arm. Biceps were mainly pink and white, though I ran my hand down my side into my leg. Abs are mainly red, while the leg muscles are a mix of the three, with red being dominant. According to his notes, Orochimaru had changed his muscles to mainly white and pink for an explosive speed increase. Though he probably had garbage stamina, unless he figured out some way to overcome that with chakra. I guess I should lean more towards pink and red. I was a tojutsu-focused fighter. I needed stamina after all. 
What do you think Aomi? Aomi of course remained silent, but was pointing at my blonde head test subject strapped to the table. More tests then. She nodded firmly and held five fingers up. Five more. I was already comfortable with doing it to myself. I wasn't sure I needed to waste more life on this endeavor. I guess it doesn't hurt to do more tests. Though Orochimaru might get annoyed at a rapid use of prisoners, but perhaps that wouldn't be an issue. He has been busy as of late, and we needed to do some stuff with DNA again so perhaps five more was ideal. How's your chakra control coming? I raised an eyebrow at my only minion. She made a so-so gesture and looked slightly sad. No worries, it'll probably only take three or so more months. I turned away from her and walked towards test subject number seven. Alrighty, don't dispose of this one. I have some more experiments to do afterward. And by experiments, I meant horrible invasive DNA manipulation, horrible but efficient. Orochimaru paced around the room and gestured wildly while telling me his plan to take down the third rakage. I eyed Orochimaru briefly but turned away when his eyes met mine. He seemed a bit crazed and almost manic. I briefly wondered if he was taking some kind of stimulant Naruto vs. Meth, maybe. So, you'll attack the camp and occupy them while I take out the rakage. He finished the sentence by throwing his arms up and smiling creepily. Sounds good, Sensei. I nodded. Orochimaru's smile stretched further. I turned my back to him and cringed. He had been acting unhinged lately, whether this was because he was experimenting with the cursed seal, or he was just getting comfortable in my presence I didn't know. When do you want me to attack? I've been learning under him for nearly a year, and only recently has he begun acting like this Kekaki. A week from now is when we'll begin. You will take the army and attack the camp while I take out the rakage. Orochimaru finished his words with a creepy smile. I pressed my lips together. Something was wrong with him. He's never repeated words like that or been this smiley. All right, I have some preparations to make. I nodded at him and turned toward the door. Orochimaru went from old and creepy to old, creepy and unhinged in a few months. Whatever he did caused him to fall and fall fast. I figured I'd have five more years with him. But if whatever this was progressed further. Sigh, I doubt this was canon, so I must have somehow changed something. There's no way he could get away with being like this for a few years. I made my way out of Orochimaru's lab, and made my way up the stairs. Jiraiya was here a few days ago talking to Orochimaru, perhaps he noticed as well. There was a good chance he did Orochimaru being creepy, and potentially mentally damaged his side. Things seemed to be going well. Our temporary respite was over and fighting was at an all-time high, but we were winning most of the tiny engagements that we got into with Kumo. Constant fights weren't ideal, but it was acceptable if we were winding our engagements. Or at least I thought so. So, what's the rakage done this time? Orochimaru was reading some sort of report with a picture of the rakage's face in the top right corner. He's attacked Iowa and caused a big fuss. Orochimaru's voice was dull and without inflection. Orochimaru had just eaten and was in a good mood, hence the lack of evil laughter and creepy smiles. He seemed less unstable when he was full and not excited or stressed. Orochimaru handed me the report, and I gave it a quick skim. It was pretty much Kumo had a problem with Isla. The rakage went out, and it became less of a problem. So, Awa is mad, and told us to stay out of the way while they kill the rakage. I stared at the page in disbelief. Awa claimed they were sending their best to annihilate the rakage. They further claimed that the fight was between Kumo and Iwa, and that any interference would lead to total war. Arrogant Orochimaru hissed the word. That was indeed the best way to describe Isla, but this was a problem. Iowa was after the rakage, and the rakage versus 10,000 ninja thing could possibly happen. But shouldn't the rakage vs 10,000 ninja be an epic battle at the end of the war? We were only a year into the war. Orochimaru sighed and leaned back into his chair. I sighed a moment later feeling his pain. I thought Orochimaru was going to kill the rakage three days before we launch our attack and this happens. I set the report in front of Orochimaru and went and took a seat in the corner of the room. Iowa was fighting everyone they boarded with, and even some they didn't share borders with. And they were winning for the most part, though they were heavily using their Jinchuriki. So perhaps that was why? As far as I knew most of the other villagers used their Jinchuriki as little as possible. Iowa and Kumo were the exceptions. As far as I knew I glanced at Orochimaru who was silent, and seemed lost in thought. He doesn't seem affected for the most part. I released a heavy breath. At least there wouldn't be another bloodbath for a while. Perhaps it was time to expand my reserves. I had one wanted to wait a little longer, but perhaps now was the ideal time. My current genetic limit for chakra was about high cage level, which wasn't bad. It was better than what a majority of people in the Naruto verse were working with. That combined with my ridiculous chakra density, put me in the upper cage range in terms of chakra, though there was a chance that could somehow change and get better. With the addition of the Shikotsu Myaku, my physical energy and chakra had changed, so there could be some further positive changes. I put it out of my mind, crossed my arms, and drummed my fingers on my opposite arms. Orochimaru being slightly unhinged, seemed to be working in my favor, he was getting fast and loose with his research notes, but didn't seem to want to teach me anymore. He wouldn't let me watch or participate in any of his experiments or research, but if I wanted something I just had to ask and he would give it to me, before shooing me away. So here I was sitting in front of a table full of scrolls which contained information about spiritual energy, and its interaction with chakra. I was trying to get his research on the soul without explicitly asking for it. So far it hasn't worked out, but maybe in the future, I'll get my hands on it. I side muscle stuff, then chakra expansion stuff, and then sensor DNA stuff I had things to occupy myself with for the next few months. 
I'd also need to train my control up again. If I went slow, hopefully that wouldn't be much of a problem. I watched our test subject as he fought an imaginary enemy with speed and strength that he didn't possess a week ago. It wasn't as much of an improvement as I thought it would be. But it was an improvement I sighed and looked at Aomi. She had been the one driving this research. I figured she wanted to enhance her reflexes and was making sure it was safe Super Dai was a bust. But maybe Super Aomi was possible. Aomi, are you interested in undergoing the muscle enhancement? I said while eyeing her. She jumped slightly and turned to look at me with wide eyes. I'm going to be expanding my reserves and will lose some chakra control temporarily. So if you want to do it, decide within the next week or you'll lose the opportunity temporarily. Aomi was still wide-eyed and nodded slowly. I hummed and started circling her, eyeing her as I did so. A sword and fire ninjutsu were her main weapons, though she was also skilled in throwing weapons. So perhaps a boost to her speed and reflexes would do her good. I watched Aomi tense as I exited her field of view while I circled. I continued circling and came into her view. She relaxed ever so slightly but was still tense. I stopped my circling and stood in front of her. You should learn chakra flow. It would up your damage a lot. I stared into her eyes, and purple met brown. I tilted my head and stared at her, perhaps changing her hair and eye color. Could remove the curse of being cannon fodder. But what coloring would make Aomi less killable looking I narrowed my eyes and Aomi flinched. I sighed and started making my way towards my almost forgotten test subject. He was now useless, so back to the prison. He went he might be used later. I raised an eyebrow when I heard an explosion in the distance, but ignored it and went back to my reading. The ANG asterisk my peaceful reading was interrupted by a panicked Aburum who now stood in the doorway after slamming my poor door Shiro-sama with being attacked. His face was stoic, but he was literally buzzing with nervousness. I hummed and put a pen in the book to mark where I left off. Kumo. I fought back a yawn. The Aburum remained silent but nodded. Anyone notable? The Aburum again nodded but remained silent. I sighed and activated my Bayakig and increasing my range to its maximum. The camp was in turmoil. We were indeed being attacked fights were happening all through the area that my Bayakigan covered, and I'd say there were very few who weren't fighting we might even be outnumbered. To the northeast I saw Orochimaru launch some wind blades, and try to stab A the future Rakage with his sword, Killer B was watching from a distance away, not interfering. I sighed and started forming my dermal armor, while I slowed my perception, opting to forego the increase in range. I shunshined around the Aburum and out the door, ready to raise some hell. Battles were happening throughout the area, though they were concentrated around the north and northwest of the camp, without turning. I aimed my palm behind me, and impaled a ninja who thought he was being sneaky. Sai I stared at three approaching ninjas, who had foregone their opponents in favor of running to their death. I wonder if I Sai too much. I dogged a sword to the face and aimed my palm at the fastest ninja, and impaled him with a bone spear. I then aimed my palms at the two remaining ninjas, and impaled them with bone spears as well. I waved some Kanoha nin who wanted to help away and took a second to look over the area. I saw three more ninjas notice me and break off from their fights and head towards me. I raised an eyebrow at this squatted slightly and grabbed a handle that had burst from my knee and pulled. My flesh sealed up, and I was left holding a long thin bone sword. I sighed and coated it in lightning, while giving it a taunting wave at my approaching enemies. One of the ninjas wasn't amused and tossed a handful of lightning coated shuriken at me. I sidestepped them and held a hand out allowing one to hit my palm. E-L-A-C-K asterisk the shuriken cut my skin but bounced off my armor with a satisfying clack. I gave a pleased nod and shunshine to the ninja who had thrown them. I swung my sword, and my opponent raised a kunai to block it. My sword cut through the kunai, and then through the surprised ninja, who had a look of disbelief on his face even as his torso and head separated never to meet again. I tilted my head and avoided a kunai that had been thrown at my face by someone a little ways away. Ah, I forgot my bone mask, a smooth featureless mask formed over my face, and I nodded. Good to go. I shunshined and cut one of my other pursuers in half, and shunshined again and cut the third in half as well. I stopped ran a hand over my clothes while waiting for another attack. My clothes were whole and undamaged, and no one seemed to want to run at me and die. Maybe I won't have to buy more clothes after this battle I smiled under my mask and shunshined into a group of ninja. I held my sword out and spun killing two and wounding three others, while missing one entirely. I ignored the survivor and shunshined towards some more ninja who were too occupied with their fight to notice me. I cut him in half and shunshined towards another ninja I cut him in half as well, and continued with another shunshin. This was working surprisingly well. I was startled as A become coated in lightning chakra, and his chakra rose to monstrous levels causing me to focus on him. Someone took advantage of my surprise, and I was washed a little ways away by an enormous water dragon that slammed into my back. I pushed myself up and stared at the one who launched the dragon. Someone had run him through with a sword, and he was staring at the sword exiting his stomach. I nodded at my fellow Kanoha Nin, who peeked over the shoulder of the man he stared. He sent me a nod back. I used some chakra strings to grab my sword and stood up. I think it's time I make my way to Orochimaru. A thin bone spike burst from my heel, 
and killed a ninja who was approaching me from underground. Annoying I made my way towards Orochimaru while chopping Kumo Nin in half and shooting anyone who tried to launch ninjutsu at me with Senbon. I smacked a kunai out of the air and pointed my sword at the one who threw it. A thin branch of bone burst from the sword and impaled the ninja. I gave the sword a little shake and the bone growing from it broke and fell off. I pointed a finger at a ninja who was about to kill an Inuzuka and pelted him with a few Senbon. I hummed as I approached the no man's land that had been created around Orochimaru and A. I stood a ways away and watched the battle for a moment. Killer B was still politely watching A's battle and had not interfered. I decided I'd be polite as well. So I shunshined a distance away from Orochimaru and gave a bow in B's direction. He stared at me for a moment before looking back to the fight. I raised an eyebrow under my mask. I thought we would get down to it bow no. This is between A and O. So you and B are a no-go. He rhymed without looking away from the fight. My mask receded, and I deactivated my Byakugan, and watched B nod to himself and pull out a little green notebook, and start scribbling something down. I shook my head and focused back on Orochimaru's battle. Judging by the charred dead snakes scattered around the area, snakes were a no-go, and that's why Orochimaru was relentlessly slashing at A with a wing-covered sword. I saw a few shallow cuts on A, so it was seemingly working out, though Orochimaru didn't seem to be winning. He was doing alright. My train of thought was interrupted when a stray wind blade struck the ground near me. There was a slight lull in the fight, and I met Orochimaru's eyes. He looked at me and then at B before returning his eyes to me. I got the message. Negative I made a single hand sign. Orochimaru looked angry, but before he could respond A darted towards him with his fist cocked back. Orochimaru dodged and sent me an annoyed look before jumping back into the fight. I sighed and created a clone with a hand sigh. I couldn't leave as I had to stall B if he decided to interfere, but I could send a clone out to do some killing. Though the clone would like the Shikotsu Miyaku hopefully it would do alright. The clone waved at me and pointed to my sword. Gim. I snorted and handed it over. The clone grasped the sword and looked at it for a moment. The sword was slowly absorbed by the clone and I was left wearing a surprise expression under my mask. Um... I stared at the clone, wondering how the hell he had thought to do that. He just shrugged at me, and I saw bone start to emerge from its skin. I stared at the clone as it was slowly engulfed in bone. Eventually, the clone was completely covered in a spiky bone armor, and he gave me a cheeky wave before he left in a slow shunshun that kicked up a trail of dust. I watched him leave for a moment before I dragged my eyes back to the fight. If the clone had stayed a little longer, I would have made him stay here. Perhaps that's why he left so quickly. The sound of A roaring while he sped towards Orochimaru pulled me from my idle thoughts. I stared blankly while A caught Orochimaru in the chest with a lariat crushing Orochimaru's ribs in the process. Wasn't Macho Man Randy Savage the one who made the lariat popular? I'd seen a couple of pro wrestling moves thrown around so far. Perhaps A's fighting style was based on pro wrestling Macho Man ASNORT asterisk. I haven't seen any other Kumo Ninus wrestling moves. Perhaps the rakage fights like this as well. Both my eyebrows rose when Orochimaru stood and was seemingly unaffected by his collapsed ribsage. Orochimaru jumped away from A and looked to be rather annoyed by his crushed ribs. Orochimaru made a hand seal, and mud started to flow from the ground before becoming person-shaped and eventually taking on the appearance of Orochimaru. The clone ran at A and was unsurprisingly defeated with a chop to the neck. It turned into mud reformed and then launched wind blades at A. Orochimaru had used this time to heal his chest and was now back in fighting shape. I was slightly surprised he didn't just shed his skin, but I figured he had some sort of plan. Orochimaru ran through a string of hand seals and traped A in a twister of invisible wind blades. I was dodging most of the wind blades but was still getting hit by some occasionally. Orochimaru started running through another string of hand seals and inhaled, before spewing a huge wave of fire onto the twister. The twister caught fire, a burst through it a moment later, and landed beside me looking slightly singed and covered in small cuts. Orochimaru jumped back and landed beside me his clothing was torn, and his reserves were about half what they were, but he was otherwise looking unaffected. I had numerous small cuts covering his body, and his reserves were about half of what they were, though he still had more chakra than Orochimaru had at the moment. Overall it seemed Orochimaru came out ahead that A might be able to outlast him if they continued. Orochimaru and A stared at each other for a long moment before jumping back into the fight is still covered in lightning chakra and Orochimaru, with his sword covered in wind chakra. There you go. A go beat O and save the day yo. Fool you fool. Sai I saw B do a little dance when A jumped into battle. What a weird duo macho man A and killer B the rapper. Orochimaru had stopped using big moves a while ago to conserve chakra, and was now just slashing at A with his wind-coated sword. I was slowly but surely accumulating cuts and losing chakra. While using his lightning cloak, I had battered and nearly killed Orochimaru a few times. But Orochimaru had shed his skin and popped out of his mouth regenerating the damage both to himself and his clothes. Orochimaru's new but slimy clothes had thrown me off. But not as much as the dancing killer B was doing every time A scored a hit. I ran a hand through my hair, activated my bayaki again, and covered my face with the bone mask. I might need to interfere depending on what happens I sped behind Orochimaru and chopped him on the back of the neck. Lateral bolt of pain. I cracked a smile. Orochimaru's clone dispersed, and the real Orochimaru popped out of the ground behind A and tried to behead him, but was unsuccessful as A shrugged off the blow after and sped away. I touched the back of his neck and stared at Orochimaru who stared back. I spoke to Orochimaru, but I couldn't hear what was being said from where I was. 
but suddenly slammed his hand into the ground and threw the earth to grasp something. He pulled Orochimaru up through the ground by his hair and threw him into the air. Ara appeared above Orochimaru with a shunshin, and with a yelled guillotine drop. He kicked him into the ground. Orochimaru impacted the ground forming a crater in the earth, and kicking up a strong wind from the impact. A landed and was attacked by Orochimaru's clone, who disappeared in a burst of smoke with a single chop from a Orochimaru. Stood up shakily from the crater, eyes wide, in what I'd assume was disbelief as A grabbed him from behind, and lifted him over his head. Liger bomb. Orochimaru was promptly throttled into the ground, making the crater deeper and kicking up another mini windstorm. I was left staring in both shock and excitement as A dropped Orochimaru and jumped away from the crater. Orochimaru shed his skin again and jumped over to where I was standing for what would likely be the last time, as his chakra was low. So, what's the plan? I gave Orochimaru a nod and acted as if I didn't just see him get thrashed. Orochimaru stood still and stared out into the dust at where the rakage was standing. I've poisoned him so now we just need to wait until he retreats I hummed. I wondered if killing him was the better option. Not going to kill him. Orochimaru laughed humorlessly. Ha! Huh. And anger the rakage and Jinchuriki of the eight trails. I think not. The dust cleared and we were now visible to the duo standing across from us. I was talking to B, but I couldn't hear what was being said from where I was standing. It didn't look to be affected by the poison he was still cloaked in lightning, and he was standing proud beside B. They should be about to retreat, the poison should now be affecting him. Orochimaru spoke with a hissed whisper. B took something from his pouch and pointed it at the sky. A pop was heard, and the duo turned and started running back the way they came. I deactivated my Byakigan, withdrew my mask, and looked at Orochimaru. He looked bored like he hadn't just fought someone who had tail beast levels of chakra. Suddenly he smiled. Kekiki, I got some of his blood, so this fight wasn't a total waste. I blinked at him and smiled. Nice. I gave him a thumbs up. Orochimaru nodded. Nice indeed he sadly didn't give me a thumbs up. He stood there basking in his small victory for a moment longer before he turned and started towards the camp. I followed behind him while wondering what my clone had gotten up to interlude. I deflected a sword and used the momentum from the strike to spin and decapitate someone approaching from behind. Stay calm, stay calm. I ended my spin with a slash towards an approaching nin. Stay calm, stay calm. Sadly, I had overextended and someone nearly severed my leg from my body. I pelted him with shuriken and jumped away with my good leg. Stay calm, stay calm. I was one of the few standing between the hospital and a squad of enemy shinobi. I might not make it. I heard a walkery and spun just in time to stop a large sword from bisecting me. That's fine, I'm fine. A fellow Kanoha nin ran the man through with a sword, giving me time to engage with someone who was trying to return the favor and run him through. It's fine, I'm fine. Then as fast as the battle started it ended. A monstrosity covered in spikes rammed into the ninja I was fighting and disappeared as if it wasn't even there. I heard screaming and turned to see the monstrosity had collected five more bodies in its brief travels, one of which was alive and screaming. A spike exploded from the screamer's head ending his painful existence. I watched numbly as the spikes crumbled like dry dirt and the bodies fell off the monstrosity. Yo, with a wave and a muffled greeting slash goodbye, the monster regrew its spikes and disappeared into thin air. Me and the man whom I had been fighting with seconds ago stared at each other in disbelief. What just happened? What just happened? Had I been able to speak I would have mirrored his words. What just happened? Arachimaru and I made our way back towards the camp, killing any wounded enemy ninja we came across. Why did Kumo attack us this time? Arachimaru rolled a body over with his foot and stared at the unconscious Kumo nin before answering. It doesn't matter. Meaning he didn't know. I nodded and pointed my foot at the unconscious ninja and launched a bone spike through his skull. I found my bone clone covered in blood and looking scary as hell. Spiky armor and blood mix well together. How goes it, friend? My clone sent me a wave, but didn't move from where he stood. I got closer and looked at him. He had horn-shaped protrusions coming from his head and had a tail that was swaying behind him. Could you look any more demonic? My clone shrugged and the bone started to recede into its body. Probably not. My clone looked a tad bored. We stared at each other for a moment before my clone broke the silence. I can't dispel I raised an eyebrow. Eject some bone and let me grab it. I held my hand out and a bone spike thwacked against my palm a moment later. I started absorbing the bone wondering what would happen. The clone made a horrified face and turned into a visible yellow blob of chakra which was also absorbed by me. The memories hit me as soon as I finished and I had to blink my eyes a couple of times. Clones are so weird I should probably stop using them I took a deep breath and started towards the camp while reviewing the memories. The clone just shunshined into enemies like a spiky bulldozer. He made his way around the battlefield bulldozing as he went and eventually ran into Aumi, who was defending the field hospitals. He heroically bulldozed through his enemies with a few shunshins, and then made his way around the battlefield helping Kanoha Nin and bulldozing those who stood against him. It might have been heroic looking had the clone not been a devilish spiky blood covered monstrosity. I sighed and interlaced my fingers behind my head, mom hasn't come looking for me. So I was starting to get worried. Neither I nor my clone ran into her when we were running around the battlefield. I tried not to think about it, and instead focused on another topic. 
Kumo getting past all our scouts was a piss off. Bastards Kumo had destroyed one of the barracks at the edge of our camp. Though that's where it had stopped, I figured that it was a crime of opportunity, and not a specific target. Other than that things were mostly undamaged, and a majority of the camp dwellers survived. Mom was alive and well but holed up in the hospital, as someone had stabbed her in the back. She had gotten overwhelmed but survived as Dai opened the first four gates, and opened a can of Wupass on Mom's attackers. A bunch of Ichiha reinforcements arrived late for the fun, and were now wandering around the camp and fighting with the other clansmen. So, we did alright all round. After making sure Mom was okay, pulling an all-nighter in the hospitals, and then sleeping for 14 hours, I was ready to start on my muscles. First, I'd change their composition, and then I'd edit my DNA, and make an overwrite seal. Then I'd enlarge my reserves to their maximum. Then I'd apply DNA overwrite to my body, using my new chakra reserves. And then I'd have to wait 3 to 6 months for the changes to slowly take effect. While that was happening, I could train my control back to what it was, and explore DNA a little more. Though when I edit that DNA, I should be using the youngest possible DNA. I guess I get to use that enzyme, and de-age the DNA some fun stuff. I waved a bone sword around swiping at imaginary opponents trying to get some practice in with my new muscle composition. I went for a speed build and so far, it seemed to be working well. My stamina was stupid before, so I hadn't noticed much of a change. But I'd had a moderate increase in speed. Now, I just needed to finish up the override seal, and I'd be golden. So Aomi, yes or no to the muscle enhancement, I said while absorbing the bone sword back into my palm. Aomi looked unsure but nodded and handed me an envelope. I read it and stared at Aomi, she squirmed under my gaze. If I die, bring this to my family. I stared at her with a raised eyebrow. No one has died yet. I don't think I've killed anyone with this at all. This time Aomi stared at me with a raised eyebrow. I raised my eyebrow back, and Aomi let out a silent sigh. She ran and got some paper and a pencil and started scribbling something down. She handed me the paper and stared expectantly. What about subjects 1 through 5 I raised an eyebrow. What about them? Those underwent extremely invasive DNA manipulation and died because I exhausted their life force. I was being stingy with my chakra and just edited a few cells, and made them divide a bunch until they aged, and eventually died a few days later. Though it was still chakra expensive either way. Whatever let's get to it. I said with some cheer. I couldn't wait until I could fully expand my reserve sadly playing with Aumi's DNA. Would delay my chakra expansion by a few days. It wouldn't be too much of a problem. I'd just have to expand my reserves a little quicker to make up for lost time. Kumo is making it hard not to dislike them, Orochimaru said while he browsed this week's reports. Kumo had attacked one of the Ichiha's compounds outside of Kanoha, and tried to capture some of them. The keyword being tried. What happened to Iwa sending their best? It had been a while and nothing happened. Perhaps the Rakage destroyed a regiment of their best or something. Kumo and Iwa are fighting along the borders of the Land of Snow. Orochimaru flipped through the pages of his report as he spoke. I hummed, should we give killing the Rakage a shot? Orochimaru shook his head near instantly. Had Iwa not volunteered so kindly I'd give killing the Rakage a shot Kekiki Orochimaru chuckled softly. But as it is, we should let Iwa throw themselves at the Rakage. Orochimaru finished reading the reports and stacked them neatly before putting them in the top corner of his desk. Come, let us see what mysteries A's blood may hold. Orochimaru smiled and started laughing. Kekiki I sighed and trailed after him, hoping he'd let me have a little of that blood. The Rakage had Tell Beast level reserves, hopefully. I could add that gene to myself. Unless it was some sort of bloodline. But hopefully, that isn't the case. My reserves were expanded as much as I could, and the override seals were finished. Both my DNA and Aumis were de-aged, and I was ready to go. I just needed fuel the changes, and all would be well Aomi. Come empty your chakra into the seal. Aomi ducked her head and made her way to the center of the room, where the large scroll containing DNA overwrite laid. She started sending her chakra into the seal, and the seal responded in kind. It started sending chakra into her as well, enacting the changes as it was programmed to. Empty your chakra faster. Then what you are doing, the less chakra you have in you the faster the process will be. The less chakra the seal had to fight against the better Aomi nodded and started pouring her chakra into the seal with renewed vigor. Keep your hands there, I'm going to start fueling it with my chakra. I placed my hands on the edge of the seal and started adding my chakra, though I let Aomi do most of the heavy lifting for the moment. I'd be up to me to fuel it when she ran out of chakra Aomi's final dregs of chakra sputtered into the seal, and she looked at me with teary eyes. Don't worry, there's going to be minimal death today. Aomi's eyes teared up a little more before she fell unconscious, while the seal continued its work. Now, I just had to wait hopefully. I wouldn't have to tap into my seal for this one sadly. I did indeed have to tap into the seal hurts. Aomi woke up with a groan. I stared at her for a moment before speaking. If it hurts it's working. Rest for a while I'll take care of everything. I spoke as soothingly as possible while I ran the diagnostic jutsu on her. Nothing had changed, but as months went by, the change would become apparent. Sleep with a tap to her forehead. I sent her into dreamland. I stood and rolled my slightly stiff shoulders. I needed to wait for my chakra to regenerate, and then I'd be able to use override on myself. Some bloodlines were both physical and spiritual. One could have the DNA corresponding to a bloodline, and not be able to use it without a specific kind of spiritual energy, usually produced by the bloodline holders. The reverse was also possible, someone could have the right spiritual energy, and lack the corresponding DNA, so the bloodline couldn't express itself. 
The latter is likely why I was able to awaken the Shikotsu Miyaku I had the spiritual energy. But I lacked the DNA for the bloodline to be expressed. Though I wondered why my spiritual energy let me use both the Shikotsu Miyaku and the Bayakigan. If I was a reincarnation, it didn't make sense to me. I drummed my fingers on the book I had sitting in my lap and drifted into more idle thought. The Bayakugan likely had the DNA that could enable a transformation into the Tensigan, but the Hayuga lacked the correct chakra Mr. Munot Satsuki, had the right spiritual or physical energy, and that allowed for the activation of the eyes. But how would I get said spiritual energy? Physical energy was easy, spiritual energy was not. I could probably keep the Otsutsuki alive but limbless and use him as a battery. But that sounded less than ideal though I stopped drumming my fingers inside. There was also the fact that most bloodlines either leaned one way or the other in terms of how they express themselves. Some bloodlines affected only the physical body, and had little to do with spiritual energy. And some bloodlines had everything to do with spiritual energy. The Sharingan was mainly the latter with a little bit of DNA stuff on the other end. The Bayakugan leaned more towards physical as far as I could tell I sighed. It's best not to agonize over it. Moon shenanigans were looking to be way off. I stood in the center of the override seal, pondering my next DNA shenanigans. Since the DNA was delayed for the foreseeable future, I could change the DNA corresponding to chakra reserves. Or perhaps I could see what else Orochimaru had hidden away decisions decisions. My clone gave me the okay symbol, and motioned me to lay down. I obeyed and laid down after giving the seal one final look over. I gave the seal on my forehead a twist, and my body was flooded with chakra. After a moment my surroundings lit up, and the seal started sucking chakra from me at an astonishing pace. I looked at the clone for a moment looking for any trace of panic or worry. I found none and took a deep breath before the seal knocked me unconscious. I woke to find my clone alive and well. How much of the chakra in the seal did we use? The clone looked half asleep as he spoke. A good part of it I sighed and smacked him on the head as I passed, dispelling him. Now I needed to spend time on chakra control and to jutsu then I'd go over all my jutsu and make sure everything was in working order starting with lightning release and ending with medical ninjutsu. So, there was lots to do I could probably use this time to train with mom and die. They were my official team, even though we haven't done any missions together for almost a year. Something to rectify perhaps I don't want the team disbanded after all. I gave my weird spiky sword a swing, whilst mom stared at me. Were you trying to make it creepy? Mom sent me a bland look. I shook my head and started absorbing the sword. If I don't have a tight grasp on my chakra it becomes spiky by itself. My tone was as bland as the look mom was sending me. Mom hummed. Don't go out of your way to make it creepy. It's already creepy enough when you pull bones out of yourself. I smiled at the idea that I had. You mean like this? A handle exited from my back, and I ripped it out with a squelch. I waved my spine at her teasingly. Shiro, her disapproval only fueled my desire for shenanigans. Fine then, how about some gentle fist tag? I planted my spine sword into the ground and crossed my arms. After a moment mom nodded. Alright, you need to use your gravity seal though. I nodded. Already done, now you're it. I took off with a shunction leaving mom behind and disappearing off into the land of hot springs. I wouldn't want her tracking skills to get rusty. My minion had joined me for some youthful exercise with Dai, and now looked to be regretting it. She was drenched in sweat and running through some sort of carter with her sword. That's it. That's the power of youth. Never let that youth fade. Dai kept shouting youthful encouragements almost non-stop, and poor Aomi couldn't seem to stop herself as long as someone encouraged her. Yosh. Now it's time for a most youthful spa. Dai looked like he hadn't just spent hours exercising. Aomi on the other looked exactly like she had spent hours exercising. Perhaps Aomi should sit this out. I said in consideration of her fatigue. Dai looked genuinely disappointed as did Aomi. Aomi. Negative A hand sign from Aomi made Dai change his tune. Yes, that's the spirit. Aomi please do me the pleasure of a youthful spa. Sai I saw Aomi nod I started making my way away from the two. I think Dai might have a new training buddy my birthday came and went. Nothing of note had happened. I spent plenty of time going through my repertoire and honing my control. I saw little improvement in anything other than my speed and reserves. Going through my moves did help me remember different techniques that had seen little use from myself over the last few years. All in all, things were well. For now, interlude. I was quietly making my way towards the baths, eager to remove the rusty smell of blood from my hair. Wooosh asterisk I heard the telltale sound of a sword cutting through the air. I quickly raised a kunai, successfully blocking the surprise attack. I turned and met Shiro's eyes, an approving look was clearly visible in them. Well done as expected of my minion. Shiro tilted his head and stared at me. I huffed at the word minion and ignored the fact I was just attacked, as I didn't have my notebook with me. I couldn't refute his use of the word. I should have brought it with me but I hadn't expected to need it on the way to the baths. Well, I've got a small mission for you. The sword in Shiro's grasp slowly flowed into his hand. I sighed silently and nodded. It looks like my me time would be delayed. I couldn't say no to the boy who was essentially my boss. And Inuzuka is causing me grief. Shiro paused and tapped his chin. I can't go around beating women. So now it's your job. I blinked. Why was I supposed to beat up the woman? More importantly, did I want to make an enemy? 
SNAP asterisk SNAP asterisk SNAP asterisk Shiro snapped in my face, successfully gaining my attention. Don't worry about the who, what, where, or why. Shiro stared, his eyes half-lidded. Just go and savagely beat her, like her father would have wanted you to. Shiro quietly chuckled to himself. I however was horrified. Oh, don't forget the dog. Shiro mime kicking something, further horrifying me. Shiro ignored my horrified look and pushed a folder that appeared from out of thin air into my hands. So, beat the woman, beat the dog, and tell her to stop fighting with everyone. Shiro gave me a bright smile. Sound good. I shook my head. It did not sound good. I pushed the folder back into his hand trying to deny the task. Ah rah rah. Shiro waggled a finger. That's yours. Shiro pushed it back into my hands and stepped away. Well, have fun. He sent me a cheery wave and a smile before disappearing in a shunchen. I stood and stared at the spot he previously occupied. What was I supposed to do? I didn't want the task, but I didn't think I could refuse. It was probably some sort of test. I swallowed, feeling a slight lump in my throat. I wasn't sure how I would go about this. I took a deep breath in preparation and opened the folder. Everything was blank. I quickly flipped through some pages, and after a while, I skipped to the end, and on the final page were two words. Behind you. I stared in confusion. W-O-O-S-H asterisk I felt the hair on my neck rise. So I ducked and jumped away, successfully avoiding whoever it was that tried to strike me. I landed in a crouch and spun towards my attacker kunai in hand. My gaze landed on Shiro who had a goofy smile on his face. Well done minion. Shiro gave me a thumbs up with his free hand. I stayed crouched and kept my kunai out, thinking there would be another surprise attack. After a while Shiro's smile disappeared and a serious look replaced it. Good job, but remember minion. Shiro paused and pointed at me dramatically. Constant vigilance. Shiro again disappeared in a shunshin a moment later. As I doubted he left, I stayed crouched for a minute longer. He might attack again when I let my guard down. I sucked a deep breath in and stood. Would he attack again? I shook my head and started towards the barracks. I didn't want to be attacked while I was bathing. After a tense walk to the barracks, I arrived in one piece. I gave my surroundings one final look before I grasped the door handle. I felt someone tap my shoulder, but when I turned no one was there. Being in the barracks likely wouldn't stop a surprise attack from Shiro, but hopefully, the thought of being beaten by everyone in the woman's barracks was enough to stop him. Though I doubted it would, I wanted the illusion of safety the barracks would provide. The illusion of safety was a comfortable one after all. With that in mind, I opened the door and stepped into the barracks. So, no luck, huh? I stared as scalp Orochimaru had thrown over his shoulder and into a trash bin. Orochimaru stared at me like I was an idiot. I've not been successful yet, he said blandly. Though he sounded confident that he would be successful, Orochimaru had complained about managing the camp, and that it was eating up his time. I had offhandedly suggested the Orochimaru should look into the DNA governing the body's sleep schedule, so that he could have more time to study to his heart's content. Orochimaru had immediately dropped his work on A's DNA, and excitedly started performing brain surgeries on our prisoners. He wanted to study sleep and its effects on the brain before he got into DNA. Well have fun. Orochimaru kept muttering about the dorsal pons and ignored me. I blinked at his back and turned to make my escape. My chakra control was almost up to scratch again. It surprisingly only took a month. Perhaps achieving near perfect chakra control was easier a second time. I stared down at the limbless man potato. He wouldn't stop moving about even without his limbs. Regretfully I had to damage his brain to stop him from escaping. Walking into my lab and seeing him try to turn the doorknob with his arm nubs had been surprising. Sadly, brain damage didn't solve my problems. He was still trying to get away. I tried to give him some sensing capabilities. But so far, I've had no luck. It was possible that the genes might start expressing themselves in a few months. But I wasn't interested in spoon feeding a mentally impaired man potato while I waited for him to show some signs of sensing capabilities. Though I could get my minion to do it. I might as well do more if that was the case I pondered the idea for a while before dismissing it. Gene editing was ugly, especially so when my chakra control was subpar. I didn't want her to witness me committing more atrocities than necessary. The small stuff I did already unsettled her aside and started pondering. Perhaps there was a better way to test this I couldn't think of anything immediately. But that was okay, I had other things to do. I needed to redo my overwrite seals with my newly modified DNA otherwise. I'd lose any changes I've made, if I need to use them I side heavily. Perhaps I'll keep the old ones. It will give me somewhere to go back to if I ever make a grievous mistake, which was frankly pretty likely. Not everything meshed well after all. I pointed my finger at my test subject, and he was impaled with a thin bone spike, ending his life rather painlessly. Perhaps I'll give sensing some time it wasn't even something I needed that badly. Orochimaru had other modifications that he has done to himself. Perhaps I could snag some more from him I guess I'll see. Changing your hair and eye color is definitely for the best. I crossed my arms and pouted I was only half serious. I was just trying to get her to consider the idea. As long as she thought about it. That was enough for me. Colorful hair and eyes may make you a target for enemies. I took a moment to admire her writing. It had gotten neater. I laughed. That's the point when enemies are always after you. You have to get better. That's why people with colorful traits are always stronger and stand above the cannon fodder. Aomi didn't look convinced in the slightest. She started scribbling furiously on her notepad before turning it and shoving it in my face. Are you trying to make me a target? I shrugged. No. 
but that's how you get better. If you're constantly fighting off enemies, it's hard to not get better. Ayumi stared at me blankly before withdrawing her book and writing something down. You're crazy. Ayumi was sending me a judgmental stare while she held her book up. I sent her a judgmental stare in return. I'm also not wrong. We stared at each other for a bit longer, and I noticed that Ayumi didn't tower over me like she had when we first met. I'm a growing boy. I smothered my smile and spoke. Adversity breeds strength. Having people eager to stab you in your colorful eyes is adversity. Ayumi shook her head and started walking away. Black hair and ruby red eyes. They look fantastic. I shouted at her as she was leaving. Ayumi gave me the equivalent of the finger and slammed the door behind her. My test subject who was strapped to the table met eyes with me. Woman A. I wriggled my eyebrows at him. My test subject stared at me, seeing that he didn't agree. I tapped him on the forehead sending him off to dreamland. I was feeling surprisingly silly today, I wonder why. If someone was slapped with a book, would it be physical or verbal assault? My tone was bland and didn't display any of the amusement I felt. Mom stared at me disapprovingly, and drummed her fingers on the table where she was sitting at. Shiro, stop it. I sighed as my attempt to lighten the mood was shot down, and returned my focus onto the book on Fuenjutsu I had borrowed from Orochimaru. Fuenjutsu was mainly used in sealing, sealing energy, sealing living beings, summoning, and barrier techniques. For Fuenjutsu other than that, custom symbols were required. I was trying to find something on the creation of custom symbols, but I've had no luck. I had the intent infusion thing down, and my calligraphy and understanding of kanji was about as good as it could get without a dedicated teacher. But I was stuck on making custom symbols Aka using English and French in my seals. I hadn't used either language in years, and my grasp on them was slipping. I feared if I didn't get on top of things soon, the possibility of using them would be lost. It was a slight problem one that I could hopefully overcome. What are you working on that's got you so troubled? Mom walked over and peeked over my shoulder. I hummed trying to buy myself some time to finish the page before I spoke. Fuenjutsu. Mom stepped back and made her way back to the spot she was occupying. Ask Minato and Kishina next time we're in Konoha, they'd be happy to help. I just hummed and nodded as that was what I planned on doing next. If I remember sadly, I tended to forget about stuff that I wasn't immediately focused on. I'm training with Aomi and Dai in about an hour. Are you interested? I stifled a yawn. Mom wordlessly nodded and leaned back into her chair. Is Kenji coming? I turned back to my book and shook my head. He's distilling some alcohol right now. We had run out in the camp, and Kenji was tasked with doing so. Though the reason was completely beyond me. So, he won't be coming. No, he's probably drunk on medical grade alcohol no. Mom nodded. Sigh alrighty I looked at her over my shoulder. Sighing and saying alrighty were my things I blinked at her and again turned back to my book. Whatever gene editing reminded me of character creation. I was optimizing the traits I wanted making some stuff dormant and some stuff active. I chuckled. I was essentially assigning stat points via DNA manipulation. It was an amusing thought. Sadly, there was no one to share my amusement. Aomi looked unnerved by my chuckling. Perhaps one shouldn't chuckle when extracting bone marrow from someone I had a member of the Yatsuki clan strapped to my table, and was giving him a full workup, mainly taking samples from him and checking to see if they have any sort of bloodline which he didn't. The Yatsuki clan was only known for their swordsmanship, speed, and loyalty. Being loyal wasn't a bloodline, though I stifled a chuckle at the thought. Thankfully I wasn't examining these samples myself, they were just getting sent off, which thankfully gave me more time to cackle like a mad scientist and try to figure out new ways to edit my DNA. Personality traits could be changed with DNA to a certain extent which was interesting as well as scary. I could potentially create the perfect minion or create my ideal self. Messing with my personality was without a doubt a slippery slope though. And since it was featured heavily in his notes, it made me wonder what Orochimaru had done to himself. Perhaps that's why he had no love life and lacked empathy. He might have seen them as weakness and purged them from himself. I blinked and noticed Aomi was staring at me. Getting lost in thought while you were wrist deep in someone's chest cavity was probably in bad form. Sorry I got lost in thought. Aomi nodded at me and looked away. As long as I've got things to do, I can keep the emptiness at bay. So I had to keep finding ways to occupy myself according to Orochimaru's notes. Anxiety could be removed with a few simple bits of gene editing. I pondered removing my anxiety, but ultimately dismissed it. Would I even be the same person if I didn't spend hours trying to sleep while fighting off bursts of existential dread? Probably not so, the existential dread stays. But what I could do was give myself immunity to specific poisons and diseases. That was easy. According to the notes, just add a chain of immunity genus, and things were good to go. I cracked a smile at immunity genus. Immunity genes as Orochimaru named them, were just instructions for your white blood cells, so they could fight off poison and diseases. Orochimaru likely took genes from people who were immune to disease and poisons via overcoming them, and added them to himself. It was a neat idea. Not one I would have thought of myself. I flipped through a few other pages, briefly skimming them as I went. Certain traits could be taken and given to oneself reaction time strength speed stamina virility sweaty hands promiscuity love of battle sweet tooth the list went on and on though it noted at the end that some traits didn't mesh well and could cause instability in the genome and infertility again with infertility my eyes were drawn to a section that talked about the traits becoming dormant even if they were successfully gained it also noted that the gained traits were less likely to show up the older one was and that the more traits one took the less likely they were to survive 
I gave it one final glance, before snapping the book shut. Essentially one could become more superhuman than a ninja already was, at the cost of infertility and potential genetic instability, and one needed to be young. I wondered if this was why Rochi wanted to hop bodies. It also perhaps had something to do with bloodlines being part spiritual. I do remember Sasuke reversing his technique. Orochimaru had some sort of fleshy realm where the souls of those whose bodies he stole, stay perhaps that was part of it. He needed their souls for spiritual energy, so he could use their body's bloodline. Maybe maybe it wasn't impossible at least I sighed. If that was the case, couldn't I imprison that Munotsutsuki's soul inside myself? That sounded both promising and evil sadly. I had no idea how Orochi was keeping those souls, and he likely wouldn't share his secrets, especially when it involved his immortality. Perhaps I should continue this line of thought later I sighed and drummed my fingers on the cover of the notebook, while mentally jumping over to another topic that had been plaguing me. Naruto and Sasuke. The two quarter space god reincarnations, what would a quarter space god's soul and chakra do to their bodies? There were potential DNA shenanigans to be had there I could steal DNA from exceptional individuals now. Or I could wait a bit for Naruto and Sasuke, and by a bit, I mean anywhere from 2 to 15 years. Decisions decisions. Orochimaru assigned me a squad and told me to go ambush a supply caravan. So, I had a few hours to lay in my bed and ponder potential DNA improvements. According to the notes, too much DNA manipulation caused genetic instability and infertility, meaning I should try to limit my DNA shenanigans I was doing alright currently. I frankly didn't need further improvements at the moment. I just needed to survive and give my body time to mature, and possibly get some DNA from someone with tailed beast level reserves. Even if I was alright now, it was never bad to have tailed beast sized reserves, so I needed to mature and I wanted big reserves. Sadly, maturing meant that DNA shenanigans were less likely to stick though that may not be a problem. I could already regenerate telomeres so, maturing may not be too much of a problem. Though that might not be the case, it still might be a problem even with my cell's youth. I sighed and pulled the blanket up to my neck. So bigger reserves, poison and disease immunity, they were all things that I could focus on even if I didn't find a use for them. I've got something to occupy myself for the foreseeable future. And that's all I wanted something to occupy myself with interlude. I stared at Shiro as he continued to explain how to successfully mend arteries. Shiro had taken a hit meant for a patient and after dispatching the enemy causing a patient to survive, Shiro made this a learning opportunity. Alright, your turn. Shiro's words jolted me into reality. I placed my hands on either side of the wounded area on the patient's leg and started to fill the flesh with healing chakra as I was taught. The flesh knitted together with little input from myself and I focused my attention on the artery. I surrounded it in a layer of chakra and dammed up the blood stopping it from flowing out and into the leg. The hard part done. I started the mending of the artery itself and turned my eyes towards Shiro who was watching with an expression of vague approval. Thanks for taking the hit, it was very brave of you. My patient spoke startling me. Blood started to flow from the artery, and Shiro reached down and stopped the flow with a quick tap to the leg. Focus Shiro's purple eyes bore into mine. I nodded and started again, this time with a renewed focus. I couldn't fail. I'm not brave my patient shifted, and Shiro poked him with his toe. Stop moving, idiot things were silent for a moment. You're very brave. My patient spoke again. At this point, I was contemplating knocking him out. I'm not Shiro's voice was light and airy. I'm strong and Phyllis, bravery is something different. My patient opened his mouth to speak again. Sleep, but Shiro stopped him with a tap to the forehead. Shiro sighed loudly and poked my patient with his foot. What an annoying guy. I wanted him to be up and ready, but if he's going to be so annoying it's not worth it. Shiro poked him with his foot one last time before he started walking away. I'll go ahead and raid that caravan. I thought they would be transporting their food with seals, but was mistaken. Shiro sighed again. I wouldn't have killed these incompetents otherwise Shiro stuck his foot under a down ninja and flicked him into the forest with a grunt. I'll be back, loot them and see if they were carrying anything useful. I stared at his back as he departed in a shunshin. I let out a soundless sigh and withdrew my hands from my now healed patient. I guess we attacked these men because Shiro thought they were carrying the supplies. I sighed again while staring out at a field of corpses that was interspersed with Kanoha Nin, looking for anything of value. This was pointless war was pointless everything was pointless. I idly hummed as I walked the perimeter of the camp by a kick inactive. Things in frost were okay. We held a ground and made it difficult for Kumo to get supplies into Lightning Country. That made them pissed, and now we had to worry about a potential rakage attack. Things in grass were a shit show, not much had changed. There were constant large battles, and we were losing a good part of them. Noodles was doing alright, but anyone who stood out was immediately assassinated. Kiri loved assassinations the battles in River Country were pushed into Wing Country, where we blocked Suna from importing water from River Country. Sadly, Suna didn't like that and were now fucking us up. Who thought it was a good idea to fight Suna in Wing Country? I sighed as I thought about the state of things. According to my rough timeline, we had about a year more of war. Things weren't looking too good for Kanoha. We were besieged on almost every side, and we would soon run out of civilian ninja to throw into the meat grinder. So, soon the clans would be forced to commit more of their ninja, and once those ran out, they'd send in the academy students. It wasn't looking good at the moment, but Kanoha still had Kishina, Jiraiya, and Tsune to toss around not to mention the Hokage and Danzo all people who should probably be participating in the war. I sighed and kicked a branch covered in frost into the woods. Besieged and with a good part of a heavy hitters doing fuck all. 
things were looking slightly grim. For the average ninja at least. I turned my vision telescopic and gave the area a brief sweep before deactivating my Bayakugan. Jiraiya was in grass according to Orochimaru, so there was a good chance Minato would be free. Should we have a rakage problem I turned and started making my way into the camp. I looked at the sky and mentally thanked Isla for angering the rakage and keeping him and the two tails Jinchuriki busy. If he wasn't so busy he would probably be demolishing our camp right now. I laid in my bed and stared at the ceiling of my room, with thoughts of the tents again swelling around in my mind. Madara took years to awaken his Rinnegan, and he already had all stages of his Sharingan unlocked. I think it's because it took a long time for his two chakras to combine and become six paths chakra. But the Moon Otsutsuki got it within a few days so. The Moon Men had the chakra, but like the eye I had the eye, but like the chakra sadly. The Tensigen was dependent on the Otsutsuki's chakra. Then if I remember correctly after the eyes were returned, they were no longer the Tensigen. Meaning if I wanted the Tensigen I had to be able to produce the chakra that the Moon Otsutsuki produced. So, I somehow needed to produce their physical energy and spiritual energy. Physical energy was easy. There were many ways I could do that spiritual energy was my main problem. And it wasn't an easy problem. But then again, I wasn't sure. The physical energy from the moon Otsutsuki might be the only thing I require. It depends on what end of the spectrum the Otsutsuki's bloodline is on physical or spiritual side. This was annoying. I couldn't keep the Tensigen out of my head. It was my next big goal. Sadly, I likely wouldn't see any progress for a long time. I watched with slight annoyance as the skin on my hand regrew after another failed attempt at replicating Ace Chakra Cloak. The cloak was just Lightning Chakra. There was little actual electricity needed so why the fuck did it keep burning my skin off? With my bone armor or dermal armor. I could use the cloak pretty well, but I was trying to do so without the Shikotsu Myaku. I sighed and ran a hand through my hair. I ran the rakage used the cloak plus some sort of shunshin, and that was my current goal. Or perhaps I should call it my current dream, because a lightning cloak seemed to be something I could only achieve in my dreams. I released both a mental groan and a groan in real life. Why was nature transformation so annoying? Orochimaru and I both cracked a smile while reading the latest report. Kiri had sailed across the Kazoku Sea, and set up a camp on a small chain of islands near Lightning Country. They had been raiding villages and assassinating nobles since then. The two tells Jinchuriki was tasked with dealing with Kiri, while the rakage dealt with Iowa. Said Jinchuriki was only 14 at the moment, and was very likely to die. So Kumo's second Jinchuriki was bouncing between Frost and the area around Kiri's camp protecting her. So, we likely wouldn't see many more attacks. That's what Adorochimaru is smiling. He could devote more time to his experiments. I was smiling for a different reason with the rakage alone. Isla was pretty likely to get him. He was my main worry and with him out of the scene. I could run around and raise havoc to my little heart's content. The battles around Frost would likely slow a bit, and that was something to look forward to. Ayumi met me with a flurry of slashes, each was precise and without wasted movement. Every strike was made with the intent of uncovering a weakness, little by little. She'd find the weakness in an opponent's style, and then exploit it. I let her lead the fight, and I carefully watched, taking note of what she did so in the future I could do so myself. Should I ever desire to have a fight that lasts longer than a few strikes at least. I hummed and blocked a horizontal slash from Aomi. She was certainly more skilled than me in Kenjutsu. Sadly, I was faster than her and could slow my perception. I stepped it up a notch and used the tip of my sword to smack Aomi's sword down and away from her, and went for a beheading slash. Aomi used a kunai to block my strike, and tried to disembowel me with her sword. I shunshine behind her and tapped her on the back of the head with my sword. If you don't find a way to overcome the shunshin, I'm going to keep winning Aomi out did me skill-wise. But when I made my bones hollow, enhanced my arms with the shunshin, and slowed my perception skill didn't matter. When I wasn't cheating with ninjutsu, Aomi's enhanced muscles and newly enhanced reflexes made her a worthwhile fight. I retracted my sword, and Aomi shrugged and collapsed onto the ground. She stared at the sky and yawned. I a w n asterisk I walked a distance away, sat against a tree, and stifled my own yawn. I ran my chakra through my bones, felt myself become notably heavier, and smothered a second yawn. Changes to my bones density seem to be the most chakra expensive. I imagine it's because calcium needs to somehow be created. I certainly didn't get it from my food, nor did my body seem to store it anywhere why a w n asterisk I yawned this time failing to smother it. Late night missions were the worst what's the problem? I narrowed my eyes and stared at the Inuzuka duo who had sought me out. Half of the problems in the camp were caused by the Inuzuka, so I had little patience when dealing with the lot. Um, he shifted from side to side. One of the squads disappeared. He trailed off at the end. I sighed loudly and the two shank into themselves. Why aren't you telling Orochimaru? I watched them fidget for a moment and waved at them to hurry it up. Um, his friend gave him an encouraging shoulder pat. Orochimaru-sama is not here. I sighed and shooed them out of the room. Come Ayumi Ayumi gave me a firm nod in reply. I activated my Bayakugan and followed the idiot duo out the door with Ayumi trailing behind me. After looking through the camp for a few minutes I saw that Orochimaru really was nowhere to be seen. I sighed loudly as the idiot duo nervously bumbled about and told me about the team that disappeared. Apparently, a whole squad went missing then or at least that's what the idiot duo thought. It was more likely that Orochimaru needed their assistance and disappeared with them alright. Thanks for the report, you're dismissed I showed them away with my hand and started towards mom's usual hangout. I've not yet met an Inuzuka I've liked and, likely, I never will, since I'm out of my lair.
Let's go see how mom's doing. I eyed Aomi as I spoke. I got a nod and a thumbs up in reply. I sent my own thumbs up and continued on my way. I might as well get all of my socializing out of the way. After completing my bi-monthly socializing, and then sleeping for 14 hours afterward, I was in Orochimaru's office doing the last four days paperwork that Orochimaru had elected to put off, and reading some orders from the Hokage. The Hokage wanted us to do as we were doing and keep occupying a small slice of frost. Which was expected the Hokage was passive and didn't attack unless provoked. Sadly, this means it translated into his orders, and we weren't really allowed to attack unless we were attacked first. It was a major hindrance, but if one wanted the Hokage's favor, then they shouldn't attack unless provoked. Orochimaru luckily didn't care for the Hokage's favor too much, and bulldozed his way into frost and set up a camp before Kumo had time to respond. And now we were entrenched in an ideal spot, and could stop Kumo from approaching the land of fire. The fact that our presence stopped a lot of trade traveling into Kumo was also a plus. If we had to fight within our border there would be massive collateral damage, but luckily fighting within our borders was minimal. Instead, we were fighting in someone else's borders. The first and second war likely taught the five great nations. That warring in your own territory was a bad decision, especially when a stray fireball could devastate your crops and forests. Suna was probably the only nation that didn't have to worry about that though. It was all sand there I sighed and dipped the tip of my brush into the ink pot. I had to send a message to the Hokage confirming I got his useless message. Then I needed to go through the leave of absence forms and requests for time off. With me behind the desk, it was likely everyone who applied would be able to leave. There wasn't anyone that needed to stay. Cannon fodder were cannon fodder. Having a hundred less wouldn't matter in the long run. I wiped the brush on the rim of the pot, getting rid of the excess ink in the process. Hopefully, this would only take an hour or so. I eyed the pile of papers on my desk and felt less optimistic. Kenova sure knows how slow everything the fuck down with paperwork Orochimaru returned two days later and barged into the command center with a wide smile on his face. I stood up from the desk and moved aside so he could claim my seat. He did so and smiled to himself while picking through the documents. I watched him pick through the documents for a few moments while wondering if I should ask him about his whereabouts. It was likely that he would tell me and I didn't want to risk annoying him, so I stayed quiet and leaned against a wall behind him. Orochimaru browsed the papers on his desk for a few more moments before he spoke. Everything is in order. Orochimaru's smile further stretched across his face. I fought a sigh. Why was he being creepy? Of course. I kept my tone even and my face blank. It wouldn't do for me to show my distaste. I've taken the liberty of destroying two of Kumo's camps. Orochimaru sounded proud of that even though the camps were likely filled with fodder. Well done sensei, was all I said instead. Orochimaru likely took a chance and attacked the camps by himself because A and B were occupied elsewhere. It was something that would piss off the rakage. The risk of a rakage rampage just rose dramatically. What's the plan now sensei? Kumo is likely to retaliate. Retaliate was putting it lightly there was a good chance that they would gather their S ranks and wreck us. I've requested reinforcements. Next we're going to destroy their camps on the border, and bring the fight into lightning country. Orochimaru paused and started laughing. Kekiki, I withheld a grimace. I had forgotten how creepy that was. Alrighty, I'll take my leave. I sent Orochimaru bow and made my way out of the command center. Hopefully, we got another s rank ninja, more cannon fodder wouldn't help us. All reinforcements arrived in the form of Minato and a thousand ninja of various rank. With a thousand ninja making their way from grass to frost, there was no way Kumo didn't know what was up. The door swung open with a creak interrupting my thoughts. Orochimaru stalked through my lab and handed me a sealed scroll and stalked away, likely eager to continue his experiments involving sleep. I gave the scroll a quick read and heaved a heavy sigh. The Hokage was ordering me to go to Kiri. As fun as that sounded, I wasn't interested, but orders were orders, and sadly, I couldn't refuse. Replacing me with Minato fuck this was annoying. Goodbyes were said. Bags were packed. My minion Aomi was given instructions on how to manage my lab. And Orochimaru cursed the Hokage for taking his number one minion. Everything I needed to do was done. Now it was just a day of travel. I'd have a nice change of scenery and some warmer weather to look forward to. And potentially finding the Akatsuki shark dude was a plus. He was called the Telus Tell Beast after all. I could use some of his DNA. I cracked my knuckles and rolled my shoulders. It was time to go from what I understood the situation in Noodles was alright. The force there was mainly comprised of clansmen. Under the lead of Fugaku Uchiha, things in Noodles were going well. They won some and lost some. Nobody stood out aside from Fugaku. Anyone who did was almost immediately assassinated. There were less large-scale battles and more small skirmishes and assassinations. So, according to the scroll I had gotten I was supposed to team up with Fugaku and push Kiri out of Noodles and back to where they came. I sighed and adjusted my course so I could avoid a Kanoha scout team. I didn't feel like being stopped and questioned, nor did I feel like fighting in the open fields of Noodle Country. I haven't been enjoying the war for a while. Now I held in my sigh and continued on my way to Noodles. I should arrive in a day or so, after sneaking past the camp scouts. I made my way directly to Fugaku who welcomed me with a raised eyebrow. Hi Iga-san it's been a long time. He nodded at me. I nodded back and gave a lazy wave. Yo, I stole a chair from a group of chairs that were stacked against a wall and claimed a seat in a corner. I leaned back lazily and yawned loudly. I-A-W-N asterisk how goes it? I rubbed at my eyes a bit feeling a tad bit sleepy. Fugaku didn't look impressed at my lack of manners, and crossed his arms and looked at me with slight content. 
Mist has been avoiding direct battles, so I called for reinforcements. So we could bring the battle to them. Fugaku spoke in a bland tone. I hung most of the seven swordsmen were sighted in Lightning Country. So Fugaku likely thought it was an ideal time to try and push Kiri out of Noodles. They currently had their Jinchuriki lurking somewhere. And that was what we had to worry about. When do you plan on attacking? I stifled another yawn. I watched Fugaku stifle his own yawn with slight amusement. Tomorrow evening, he spoke with a clipped tone. I hummed for a long moment. Alright, I'll see you then I gave him a sloppy wave and sunshine towards the edge of the camp, before he could say anything. There were other clan heads and clan heirs here lurking around the camp. I didn't want to endure idle chatter from them, sigh I sighed heavily. Kiri had quite the setup. Instead of a few large camps, they had many smaller ones dotting almost the entirety of Noodle Country. Some were underground, some were set up in villages that had been taken over, and some were in what little forested area Noodles had. Kumo and Kanoha opted for two or three large bases, and ran things from there. Kiri seemed to have taken a different approach and dotted the entire landscape with bases. I imagine it would be easy to wipe out these small bases. I don't know why Fugaku was having such a problem clearing them, especially with plenty of Hyuga and Achiha. Her. It didn't quite make sense I changed my vision to telescopic and gave my surroundings a thorough scan. The bases held about 4 squads of ninja each and so far I'd seen about 20 bases. I was about halfway into noodles and was hesitant to travel too deep. My chakra usage was undiscovered but I likely wouldn't continue to have such luck for long. They probably had a competent sensor in one of these camps and I didn't need to get swarmed especially with no possible backup I held back a yawn. As much as I would like to know where all the camps were, a little surprise was good, sometimes that, and I didn't want to delay my beauty sleep any longer. So now I needed to steal someone's house for the day sigh, and depending on what time I woke up, I might be able to set up some explosive tags in a few of the camps. If I destroyed their important infrastructure ahead of time it would make the coming battle easier plan of action decided I let my Bayakigan return to its normal vision and started making my way towards Kanova controlled territory. I had a bed to commandeer. I woke up in the middle of the night and quickly got dressed and left the house I had occupied with thoughts of explosions dancing in my head. I had a surplus of explosive notes and would love to blow up some camps. But if I had to use the Shikotsu Miyakikiri would know I was here. If they didn't already know the element of surprise usually worked well. I wouldn't want to lose it. So, I wouldn't I made my way to a huge tree that was surrounded by fields and stopped just under it. I dropped a few stacks of custom explosive notes, perched myself on the tree, and made a hand sign. A few shadow clones appeared and sped off into the distance after grabbing the stacks. The clones' hair changed to black as they left my sight hench for the win. Hopefully, I'd regen the missing half of my chakra before we had to fight if not. I could just pop some soldier pills I sighed and leaned back against the trunk of the tree. I guess I'll see. A burst of memories hit me, and I had to cover my face with both hands to contain myself. Sadly, covering my face didn't work, and I burst into insane laughter. Cannon was fucked. One of my experiments was running around with a big ass sword. The Kubakiraboche fucked the wielder before Zabuza would have been an Akatsuki member Furuk. He was a nobody so it shouldn't matter too much. But having someone with a permanently open first gate wielding the Kubakiraboche was big. My laughter slowly died out, and I was left feeling a little tired. I didn't think anything would come from that experiment. I guess it's possible to overcome the challenges a permanently open gate brings fuck. This was a big change, if one of them was doing this well. Then what about the other's mystery woman and the other two Jen and I sighed heavily. I was feeling slightly emotional, and couldn't wait to see my experiment in battle. Would he be a one-pump chump like I had thought? Or did he somehow overcome the stamina drain from the gate? I was looking forward to it over the next three hours. I was hit with 20 different bursts of memories. Kiri had 35 small camps and a large camp on the shore, containing around 400 or so ninja. If I had to guess I'd say there were around 2000 Kiri nin occupying noodles which was about what Fugaku had I sighed and looked at the rising sun, noodles was extremely close to Kiri as well. So it wouldn't be too much trouble for them to get reinforcements. And I had only spotted one other swordsman. So, it's likely that the rest of them were messing with Kumo or were running missions elsewhere. It made me feel a bit better about our chance of success, if only slightly. We only had to deal with two big swords. Yo! After a quick nap, I sought out Fugaku so I could get whatever briefing I needed to get. You missed the briefing. Fugaku gave me a look that screamed disapproval. It seems I wouldn't be getting a briefing I was scouting their camps. They have two of the swordsmen here. I spoke quickly hoping to avoid a reprimand. Fugaku gave me a narrow-eyed stare. Look at the map here and see if anything is missing. He gestured towards the map. I eyed it with a raised eyebrow. Who made this garbage? I ran my thumb over a tea stain while looking at the nearly blank map. I sighed loudly and grabbed Fugaku's expensive looking brush and ink set with my chakra strings. I saw him start to speak, and I shushed him. Zhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
I started adding symbols beside each camp to differentiate which ones were underground and which were above ground. I made the map Fugaki stared at me dully. My stare was equally as dull. As I said, not completely incompetent. I trailed off again as I marked the camps where I saw the two swordsmen I wrote the names of the swords beside the camp. For those that didn't understand what the drawing of a sword was for the Hiromekure and the Kubakirabocho Fugaki trailed off and looked pensive. I hummed and nodded while still filling out Miss Camps. After a few quiet minutes, I finished with the camps and started writing the kanji for explosion in the camps. The clones had plastered with explosive tags. And done after one last kanji, I dropped the brush and cracked my knuckles. I took a moment to admire my work and bask in Fugaku's disbelieving expression. I think we'll need a second debriefing. Fugaku said while staring at the map. I held back my groan. I'd likely be doing the presenting fuck should I have just left it as it was. Luckily, I didn't have to do much during the debriefing. I only had to clarify some of my symbols. And I got to sit back and watch as everyone argued over the plan. After about an hour of amusing bickering Fugaku put his foot down and the plan was decided. Fugaku and I would team up, eliminate Kubakirabocho's wielder and then Fugaku. And I would split and target individual camps while our soldiers would be split into groups and target other individual camps. Fugaku was supposed to deal with the second swordsman by himself meaning that they thought I was weak and couldn't handle the swordsman by himself. I wasn't too bothered really even if I flooded the room with my chakra. I sighed now I got to sit around and wait for preparations to be made. What fun I was having Fugaku. And I stood side by side watching over the preparations. Well Fugaku was watching over the preparations. I was just standing around and feeling out of place we watched a genin trying to sharpen his kunai and fumble about. He cut his palm and was dragged off by his sensei, likely to receive some medical attention. We both met eyes silently. This army was hopeless. I sighed and looked into the distance not focusing on anything in particular. Hopefully, this was not a total shit show. But that clumsy genin was foreshadowing if I've ever seen it fuck I activated my Bayakigan and followed Fugaku, as he passed the different groups that had been deployed. Fugaku's speed kept increasing the further we got from the camp. Eventually, we reached a comfortable pace and continued towards our target. After a while we arrived, the camp was in sight, and my experiment was having a jolly time training. Fugaku stopped and I took a moment to watch my experiment swing his sword. After a moment of looking I stopped focusing on him as I didn't see anything notable. I made an effort to turn my head to Fugaku, so he could tell he had my attention. He didn't speak, so I turned my head back towards the camp, and started forming my mask and dermal armor. I'll take care of Kubakirabocho's wielder Fugaku spoke quietly, and started making his way toward the camp. I stared at his back feeling slightly annoyed. Did he want the credit, or did he think I was weak? Annoying my opinion of Fugaku continued lowering the closer he got to the camp. My mask finished forming and sighed while running my hand over its smooth surface. Fugaku had gotten pretty close to the camp, so I decided it was time to rumble. I made a hand seal, and the camp exploded in a fiery blaze. I heard some distant explosions, but paid them no mind. Fugaki gave me a look over his shoulder before he sprinted into the camp with his Sharingan active. I shrugged to myself, slowed my perception, and shunshined to the camp. I stood at the edge of the camp watching as the Kirin then effectively put out any fires created by my explosive tanks. It wasn't something I wanted. Long thin bone swords burst from my knees. The handles hit my palms with a slap, and I grasped them. With a tug, they came free from my flesh, and I was holding two twin swords. I sighed as the ninja around me ignored me, instead opting to put out the fires. Whatever it was my gain I enhanced my entire body with the shunshin and sped towards the closet ninja, decapitating him with a flick of my wrist. Without dropping my shunshin I sped toward two more ninjas and decapitated them as well. I shunshined towards a group of genin and killed them with a single swing cutting them all in half. I continued the slaughter and killed five more Kirin in before I was even spotted. He's there, get him. I eyed the one who spoke, he was currently making hand signs while approaching me. His water bullet splashed against my chest, and I watched idly as the Kirin in covered the area in a mist before surrounding me. How did that feel monster? I eyed the silly tune in for a moment before deciding on a plan of action. I coated my swords in lightning and jumped into the mist, cutting down the chatty ninja with a swing. Two more approached me from behind, attempting to stab me in the back. Two bone spears erupted from my back and pierced the approaching ninja's throats. I I twisted my body, the bone crumbled, and I took the time to admire the circle of ninja that was forming around me. I'd killed half of the camp's ninja with the explosion and my subsequent killing spree. So, I only had about 20 more to go, and most of them were kind enough to gather around and save me the chase I swung my sword behind me, and cut a courageous ninja in half. The Miss Kiri off an employee was working against them. They couldn't see what I was doing, and thus were unprepared. I launched myself forward and cut an additional three ninja down. A quick sidestep, and I smacked a kunai with an explosive tag on it into the largest group. EOOM asterisk I buried my sword into the ground and killed someone attempting to grab me by the ankles. Someone had used the opportunity to jump onto my back and ended up speared for their troubles. I shook the body off of me. Let the lightning on my swords disperse, and shun shine towards the one maintaining the mist. He dodged my first strike, but the second one deprived him of his head. I stuck both of my swords into the earth, and started launching bone spears from my palms, killing the final few ninjas left. One had tried to sneak away, but was caught by Fugaku, who had already finished with his opponent. Sai my sai was muffled from my mask. 
I deactivated my Byakugan, my mask receded, and I made my way over to my ex-experiment. His fight with Fugaku was lackluster. After a few swings of his sword, he was near instantly put under a Jinjutsu, and had his throat slit after he swung and overextended. It was a sad sight I couldn't imagine the luck involved in his acquisition of the Kubakirabucho, if he was this unskilled. I arrived at his body and flicked the Kubakirabucho off of him with my fort. I placed my hands on him and ran the diagnostic Jutsu, ignoring Fugaku who had approached as well. The gate had been seemingly healed interesting. He might have been able to open and close the gate. That's the only way I could see him getting the Kubakirabucho especially at such a young age. I stood up and walked over to the big fucking sword. Well, I'll be taking this. Fugaku nodded and remained silent. I took that as an okay and picked up the sword. It wasn't as heavy as I thought it would be. Or maybe I was just stronger than I thought alright, I'll see you when I finish up with my bases. Fugaku nodded while staring at the trails of smoke in the distance. My explosion seemed to have been effective I sighed and waved at Fugaku as I shunshine away. Four more camps and four more slaughters. The last camp was the quickest as it was underground. A quick one for all enhanced stomp and my enemies were buried in a tomb of their own design. I sighed as I arrived at my next target. There was double the amount of people than there should be. It was likely that had caught onto a plan and were now retreating towards the bases further in noodles. It wouldn't save them from me but it would likely slow the army's advance. I took a deep breath and rubbed at my masked forehead. The original plan was to attack them relentlessly over the next month and try to push them further into noodles so, if it took a few days to do the same who would complain. The current plan was to drown them in bodies while they were split up and ripe for the taking, and it was working well for the most part. I eyed a man with erratic chakra as he approached the man with the largest reserves in camp. It was like a switch suddenly flipped, his chakra turned erratic as well. I raised an eyebrow when the one with large reserves launched a flare into the sky. It seems the other one was a competent sensor I shrugged and moved the Kubakirabucho to my other shoulder. I guess I should get to it. I shunshined straight towards the camp, no longer bothering to hide my chakra. I created a huge lightning Rasengan in my free hand, and launched it towards the biggest consecration of people. It drilled through one person and killed four in its subsequent expansion, seeing that it was working well. I launched two more before speeding towards the one I figured was in charge. I maneuvered the blade so his head was in the hole and pulled, decapitating someone with the blade's holes for the first time. Two nearby ninjas yelled as charged at me, they were cut in half with a single long swipe. I kicked their four halves into a pile and planted the blade in the middle. I watched as the blade absorbed the blood and ignored the ninja who was slashing at me with his sword. What a cool looking ability a spike burst from my back and impaled my attacker. I aimed my palm over my shoulder and shot a bone spear through a tent, and into the ninja. I deemed a sensor. I grabbed the Kubakirabocho and marveled at the speed in which it repaired itself. What a cool blade I swung and chopped an attacker in half while some shuriken bounced off my dermal armor. A water whip curled around my waist and pulled me towards its user. When I got close enough, I ran some electricity down the whip with my free hand and chopped its user in half when his body seized. I turned my face towards the sky while paying minor attention to my surroundings. Today was a good day. As if to spite me a dragon made of water opened its mouth in a silent roar and sped towards me. Today is still a good day I thought as the water dragon collided with my back. I sighed and planted the Kubakirabocho into the pool of blood that had formed under my feet. As cool as swinging this thing around was, it was tiring as all hell. I leaned on the handle of the blade taking this quiet moment to rest my aching arms. After a moment of thought, I realized I haven't been this tired in years. The last time was when I was four. I could barely remember the days when I couldn't do more than a few push-ups. It felt like it was so long ago. But it's only been eight or so years. I saw some movement, and my focus drifted towards the source. A man was bandaging the stumps where his legs used to be. I sighed, pulled the Kubakirabocho from the earth, and started making my way towards the man who was hiding behind a building. Had he belonged to any other village, I would have spared him. But in Kiri he would be killed, he was just a burden to them. If he was going to die, I'd let him die by my hand, it was better than dying by the hands of the ones you once called comrades. I silently arrived behind him, and kicked his sword, which he had leaned against the wall away from him. That caught his attention, and he looked up and stared into my eyes. Please spare me. He pleaded with clasped palms while staring into my eyes. I blew a breath from my nose and raised my sword. If it's any consolation, you were lovely entertainment. I hummed as I spoke. I brought my sword down with a lazy swing, ending his life. What a world this was I saw a wave of ninja approaching the now destroyed camp from the edge of my range. I think I'll circle around and flank them. I tucked my hair behind my ears and shunshined away. A week later I was once again watching with minor amusement as Fugaku and company argued over plans during the briefing. I sighed as Fugaku argued with the Kirama heir about their next big plan. After a successful first day, we had mostly pushed Kiri to the edge of Noodle Country. After they realized what was happening and had withdrawn their troops, it was already too late as we had destroyed 35 of the 40 or so camps. The remaining few were packed with survivors and reinforcements, and were now not worth the potential risk in uprooting. There were only the original large camp, and a few other makeshift large camps left. Before they were completely out of Noodle Country now Fugaku wanted to make the final push and oust them from Noodles, while the Kurama Air wanted to take a wait and see approach regardless of today's outcome. I was leaving in a week, which was likely why Fugaku was pushing for a final push. I snorted, and an Inuzuka Jonin raised an eyebrow at me. After a quick shrug, he went back to what he was doing. 
while I sat and pondered. I had taken out more than a sixth of the camps myself, so Fugaku would likely want me to stay. He might have already requested my transfer to Noodles meaning. I had to take off before the Hokage got around to ordering me to stay. The ANG asterisk I watched with mild amusement as Fugaku slammed his hand down and glared at the Kuramo air. With his Sharingan active I sighed and drifted back into thought even as Fugaku fled his chakra. Though I could make a lab here I didn't want to end my tutelage under Orochimaru. There was still much he could teach me well. That and Fugaku stole my new sword. I was pretty pissed about losing it and wasn't looking forward to doing Fugaku any favors, after what felt like three hours of arguing it was decided, that we'd make a final push tomorrow to try and oust Kiri from Noodle Country completely. The main worry was that Kiri would avoid our frontal assault, bypass us, and run into the Land of Fire. I didn't think it was likely and thus paid it no mind. Kiri was far more likely to send the rest of the swordsmen down to deal with us. That was the most pressing concern. At least in my opinion I mulled over the idea of bringing pizza to the Naruto-verse, while idly watching our army's preparations. It's been so long since I've had pizza I wonder if I could get the camps cooked to make it. I sighed and dismissed the silly thought instead opted to think about the coming battle. Kiri's spies and scouts were likely to see us preparing, and Kiri would prepare in kind. Meaning that a large clash was extremely likely. Fugaku and I would have to deal with whatever strong ninja came, while our armies fought around us. It didn't sound all that fun, as it was going to be a shit show. I didn't consider Fugaku strong enough to do anything, should Kiri toss their Jinchuriki at us, and I doubt he could pull a Madara, and control the tail beast, should it appear, not every Uchiha could control a tail beast. I shook my head and started towards my temporary housing. I needed to practice my Fuenjutsu a bit. The four symbol seal or the five elements seal should be enough to handle a Jinchuriki hopefully. Two armies met in a large field and stared at each other menacingly. There was visible tension, muscles were coiled, weapons were held at the ready, and the air was thick with chakra that even nonsenses such as myself could feel. I took a deep breath and started forming my dermal armor. I looked over Kiri's front line for a moment trying to spot their Jinchuriki or any swordsmen that were there. Seeing nothing. I activated my Byakugan while covering my face with my usual bone mask. Fugaku turned and started speaking to the army behind us. But I tuned him out, and instead opted to study the Kiri Nin with my Byakugan. There was a distinct lack of anyone with large reserves. I narrowed my eyes, slowed my perception, and started to scan again though this time slower. Again, there wasn't anyone noteworthy there were a few with high Jonin level reserves. But they didn't seem to have big seal covered and chakra saturated swords. It was unusual I poked Fugaku in the side, distracting him from his speech. There aren't any swordsmen or Jinchuriki I mumbled. He nodded and went back to his speech. I shrugged and turned my focus back to Kiri's army. They seemed content to wait as did Fugaku. I let the thought of jumping in and kick-starting the battle bounce around in my head for a bit. They were clumped together. It would be impossible not to hit 20 or so with a single attack. The more I thought about the more tempting the idea was. That and standing around like this felt silly with that thought in mind. I sent a tendril of chakra up to my forehead and unlocked my seal. A few heads turned towards me from the enemy side as well as Kanoha's I made a hand seal and 20 clones appeared around me, though without their signature poof of smoke. The two armies held their positions, they seemed content to let me do what I wanted to do. A mistake. I took a step back and watched as the clones made two huge lightning Rasengan on each hand and flung them into the still stationary Kirinin. The Rasengans pierced the enemy line, killing many in their subsequent expansion. The clones hadn't stopped and charged up two more and threw them into the Kirinin once again, before running headfirst into them, building up more lightning Rasengan as they went. The Kirinin hadn't reacted until the clones started their charge. But now they came like a flood towards a line. I chuckled as ninja after ninja zoomed past me following after my clones. Kickstarting a battle was an oddly good feeling I was hit with multiple waves of memories just after the thought, immediately dispelling the good feeling I was indulging in. As chakra filled as they were, they were still fragile shadow clones I stayed still and let the slight headache recede. I studied the battlefield for a moment trying to see where I was needed the most. I spotted a part of our lines that was buckling and sunshine towards it. It's time for some fun I noted there was a distinct lack of bloodline users while decapacitating yet another Kirin in. My sword was coated in lightning and twice as long as it usually was. This was because I found it more efficient to kill six or seven with each swing instead of the usual one or two. As I zipped around the battlefield cutting many in half, I kept an eye out for bloodline users. I spun in a circle using my sword to clear an area around me and buy me some time to think. Sigh, I stopped my spin and sighed loudly while scratching my head. With not a single bloodline user in sight, I was feeling a tad bit cheated. I didn't even notice it a week ago. But now that I was surrounded in dodging waves of jutsu like there was no tomorrow, the lack of bloodline users was obvious. I idly focused on my surroundings as the ninja surrounding me started jumping away. I turned my attention to four Kirinin, who had spat a stream of water out, and used it to create a wave that was coming towards me. While picking up blood and bodies from the battlefield, I anchored my feet to the ground and ignored the red wave of water that the ninja launched at me, while ignoring their comrades. Sigh the wave hit me and I sighed again though this time the sigh was heavier, 
I coated my lower body in electricity, and electrocuted anyone standing in the big old puddle the ninja had created. I kept the electricity up and drifted into Idlefort. Water ninjutsu seemed useless your only option was water or more water or sometimes lots of water. The electricity surrounding me dissipated as I had given up on it. After seeing I'd killed just about everyone in the water, I caught a kunai and threw it at the genin who was deluded enough to think that such a thing would do something. The kunai embedded itself in his stomach, and I watched for a moment while his female teammate dragged him away by the back of his shirt. I had a moment of peace as no one wanted to approach the circle of death that I had created around me. As fun as this was it was getting a little repetitive water ninjutsu wasn't very interesting as far as ninjutsu went. There was a distinct lack of threatening moves. That in water was easy to electrify, unless the user purified the water, which was considered a high level skill. I was pretty much unchallenged as I made my way through the battlefield, ignoring their jutsu, as though it was a gentle wind. After I figured out, I could anchor myself to the ground water ninjutsu became so boring. Sai I heaved another heavy sigh and sunshine towards a more populated part of the battlefield. I had work to do after all. Kiri was retreating and no orders were given, so I stayed where I was. I flicked my bone sword ridding it of blood. I missed my other big ass sword. But using my bone sword was more stamina efficient. I sighed heavily as I saw a few Kiri nin limping towards their comrades, only to be completely ignored and left behind. Kirigako what a shitty village. I ignored the injured Kiri nin and started towards Fugaku. While deactivating my Byakugan and absorbing my bone mask, we going to follow them. I pointed vaguely in their direction with my sword. Fugaku shook his head and started heading in the direction of the camp. The lingering Kanoha Nin followed his example and picked up any wounded comrades and started towards the camp. After a moment I shrugged and started towards the camp as well. Though we didn't kill them all and push them from noodles, the battle wasn't a total loss. We did good damage to their cannon fodder and received damage to our cannon fodder in return. The average Kiri Nin was well above the average Kanoha Nin. It was only due to their lack of S rank ninja and a surplus of strength ninja that we did so well. I sent a tendril of chakra up to my seal and closed it. I started sending excess chakra into the seal. As I made my way towards the camp, my smile slowly disappeared as more and more chakra left my body. I stared at the sky while walking, feeling slightly empty again. Being in Kiri with nothing to do was bad for me. I was tired of waiting for the next attack while twiddling my thumbs. I should make my escape as soon as possible, I'll probably start going a little crazy otherwise. After a few mundane days of helping in the field hospital, I was once again watching Fugaku argue with the Kurama air. It was amusing until I realized that Fugaku didn't have to argue, and could have just ordered everyone around. I wasn't sure if he was just arguing because he liked arguing, or if it was because he was easily led on. Either way, what once was amusing was now annoying. Sigh. I sighed loudly earning me a few looks. The air was the main dissenter in the debriefings and meetings. He always wanted to take a more passive approach than what was being done and always seemed to have a better plan. It was annoying and thankfully it wouldn't be my problem in four days. With me here Fugaku wanted to push Kuri out of noodles and then bring the fight to water country while I was away. The air wanted to keep them at the tip of noodles, as it was hard for them to get supplies shipped from water country over to noodles. Both plans were alright, in my opinion so. I didn't offer any input. Regardless of what was decided I was out of here in four days. And that was all that mattered I hummed while reading the report Fugaku handed me. Kiri lost their Jinchuriki to the rakage nice. It couldn't have been better timing. With their Jinchuriki out of the way, there was little Kiri could do to Kanoha now. The report said that the Jinchuriki was mortally wounded, meaning that they would have to transfer the three tails to someone or something. The thing with Rin might happen soon. Or Yugura might become the Jinchuriki, and the Rin thing might not happen at all. It depends on whether or not Madara was still set on manipulating Abito, or if he had set his sights on someone else. The best part of this was that there was no possibility of a Jinchuriki fucking us up in noodles, but it freed up some of Kumo's strong fighters. You win some, and you lose some. I guess I handed the report to Fugaku, who took it with a grunt and set off towards his tent. Another plus to the situation was that I didn't have to stay here. Being competent in Fuenjutsu was a large part of the reason I was here. Being assigned here for longer was much less likely to happen with the Jinchuriki dying. All in all, today was a good day. I stared at the sky as I had realized something. After a moment of thought, I realized that the Rin thing was something that happened towards the end of the war. Meaning Kiri might not have a Jinchuriki for a long time, today was an even better day then. Not having to deal with a Jinchuriki for a long while was good news I rose long before the sun was up, and left the camp as soon as possible. I avoided the guards and sentries, and ignored a few Hayuga guards who came after me. After a while of running my few pursuers stopped their chase. I had a wide smile covering my face, not at all caring for whatever reprimand I might receive for making the guards chase me. Noodles was hellishly boring, and I hoped to never go back. I couldn't wait to get back to my lab. I'd just have to have Minato move back to grass, so the chances of me getting sent anywhere lower a bit. My smile stayed on my face for most of the trip back. I opened the door to my lab and enjoyed the blast of warm air that hit my face. I shut the door behind me and took a deep breath through my nose, enjoying the familiar smell of my lab. Sterile with a faint metallic tinge of blood. Lovely I felt at home. It was a nice feeling I basked in the feeling for a moment longer before shaking my head and starting towards the door. Mom and Dai likely wouldn't appreciate a surprise midnight visit. 
but it would certainly entertain me for a while interlude. So, how Minato and Orochimaru's attempt to oust Kumo from Frosko. Shiro didn't turn his attention from the seal he was concocting. I took a moment to jot down a rough summary of what happened, and slid the sheet over to Shiro. Shiro quickly glanced at the sheet and turned his attention back to his seal. So not good then, not good was an understatement. Two squads of Anbu were lost along with a quarter of the camp's jonin. It was good that I hadn't been included in the battle. I surely would have perished Shiro pushed the seal he had been working on away withdrew a letter from his desk, and ripped it open without an ounce of care. The letter was addressed to Shiro and arrived early this morning, only had now had Shiro bothered to open it. The Hokage seems rather unhappy. Shiro tapped the letter occupying the space on his desk. I raised an eyebrow, and Shiro waved me over. The letter was heavily coded, and I couldn't even begin to decipher it. I tapped the letter and raised an eyebrow. Ah, I forgot Shiro turned his eyes to the letter. He hummed and stared at the letter for a moment. Basically, the Hokage was unimpressed with how I handled myself in noodles. Shiro tapped a section of the writing in the middle of the page. Skipping debriefings, insulting clan heads, beating in Yuzuka clansmen, using Jinjutsu to make people think they have clothes on when they were naked, Shiro smoked at the last one, poking a Hayuga in the eyes, knocking people out when they talk too much, and ordering an Achiha to be publicly spanked. Ha ha ha. Shiro giggled like a child. There's more, but let's not get into it. I soundlessly chuckled at that. I wish we could get into it. It sounded silly. It was a side of Shiro he often suppressed. And I really wanted to hear about his shenanigans as he called them. The Hokage basically wants me to be better behaved Shiro's eyes met mine. But I think it's important to do what makes you happy. A small but sinister smile started forming on Shiro's face, wiping the smile from my own. You have a limited amount of time in life, and that time shouldn't be wasted on bending to the knee, in conforming to the wishes of others. Shiro's smile continued to slowly grow. If something makes you happy, then do it. Shiro's smile was wide and filled with joy. I felt the hair on the back of my neck rise, and every fiber of my being told me to run. Whether that includes battle and mayhem in my case or torturous experiments in Orochimaru's, Shiro's smile stretched his face in an ugly way. My skin was covered in goosebumps. Do whatever makes you happy even if it's frowned upon. Shiro smiled wide and further, and his chakra filled the room, causing my breath to hitch. A second later Shiro's chakra disappeared as fast as it appeared. Where was I going with that Shiro drummed his fingers on the desk. Oh, yay. Sen AP asterisk Shiro snapped his fingers. Aomi you need to do things that make you happy. Shiro nodded to himself. I took a deep breath trying to adjust to the sudden shift in mood. I nodded mutely, and Shiro looked away seemingly satisfied. I took a seat in my usual spot in the corner of the lab, and took some time to calm myself. I forgot that Shiro was as powerful as he is. Even though he was only 12, he had already eclipsed most of the ninja in the village in terms of strength. Shiro was rather odd and unassuming. I had gotten comfortable and forgot that he was both my boss and extremely powerful. I'd keep that in mind from now forward. Shiro it's good to see you. Minato's cheery greeting disrupted the one-sided conversation I was having with Aomi. I ignored Minato for a moment and instead studied his genin. Abito looked stupid and weak and Rin looked the same as she had the last time we spoke. So, nothing had changed. Good to see you sensei. I nodded at him. Abito, Rin, good to see you as well. Kakashi scowled at me, and I smiled smugly at him. His annoyance was delicious. When are you leaving? I directed my question towards Minato while still smiling smugly at Kakashi. We're leaving two weeks from now. Minato crossed his arms while he spoke. There's a good chance that Kumo will try something, so I've been ordered to stay for a while. My smug smile faded, and I hummed. Hum. That sucks Minato hanging around meant that I couldn't do gruesome experiments for a while. It was a shame. But I didn't want Minato to cause me any trouble. Oh, yay. I gestured to Aomi who had been silently watching our exchange. This is my favorite minion Aomi. She helps me in the lab. I wasn't sure what else I could add to her introduction. And she doesn't speak. I nodded to myself for a job well done and gestured to Team Minato. This is Abito, Rin, and Minato. I pointed to each as I spoke and made a show of ignoring Kakashi. Minato was my Jonin sensei, Rin, and Abito are my cute little kohai. I conveniently ignored that they were older than me. Aomi sent the group a wave while staring at Minato in awe, and as per usual didn't speak. Aomi and the group exchanged silent waves and nods. Well it's been a blast, but I've got work to do. That was a total lie. I sent them a wide wave and started towards the lab. I had things to hide away just in case Minato weren't snooping. Anything even vaguely incriminating was sealed away and kept in my kunai pouch. I left the notes on poison and disease immunity out, as they were more innocent and likely wouldn't cause much fuss. Minato might have already been snooping, so my efforts might have been meaningless, but it was better safe than sorry. So away all the fun stuff went Minato is anti-fun I snickered at the thought. Whatever I'll have to find something to do until Minato leaves. Perhaps I should enhance some of our cannon fodder. Or maybe I could find some poison users and get some of their blood. I'd see poison wasn't an immediate concern. So perhaps Konoha will gain some super soldiers. Or whatever the Naruto-verse equivalent was. But if it was known I could create super ninja. I'd likely be killed off in some sort of conspiracy or plot. 
I yawned loudly. So perhaps super soldiers were a no-go. I wouldn't want someone getting a hold of their body and figuring out how to do the enhancements anyways after a vague threat Hirochimaru handed some of A's blood over to me. It was now my job to pass through his DNA and see what genetically made him what he was. Orochimaru had already passed through his chakra composition and personality traits, so I was left with his bodily attributes and whatever active junk DNA I could figure out. After that, I could probably take some of his traits for myself, they would probably take extremely well. I was still a young body-wise, if not in mind which would hopefully help. I shrugged and rolled the small vial containing A's blood around in my fingers. I'd use this to overwrite someone else's blood, and then I'd have a good supply to experiment with as A had type A blood. I could just use override on someone with type A or type A blood, perhaps Aomi would be interested. She had type A blood if I was correct, it was something to consider in any case, Aomi wants some of A's blood in ya. I shook the vial at her in what I hoped was an enticing manner. I needed someone I could keep around so I could try and make the two chakras mix, Aomi was ideal. Aomi dashed my hopes with a very firm shake of her head. Come on, you'll gain three new affinities and much denser chakra. I shook the vial again. Come on, just a pinch of blood. Aomi just shook her head and crossed her arms while giving me a disapproving stare. Fine, go find someone from the camp with type A or type A blood. I paused for a moment and thought as young as possible with a lightning affinity, and make sure they know they're getting a blood transfusion and possible power up. I showed her away with my hand and started unpacking my fuinjutsu supplies. Hopefully, I could figure out how to mesh chakras together if not, I'd need to try something else DNA manipulation would be easier. But I wanted the chakras to mix. If I could figure that out, I might be able to make my own six parts chakra as unlikely as it was to succeed. It was still worth a shot. Kusumoto, Asami. Brown hair and brown eyes, petite build. Her outfit was the standard Kanoha green genin jacket with a blue shirt and blue pants underneath the jacket. I stared at her over the folder containing her paperwork. Asami was born to a civilian mother and a shinobi father. Said father was dead leaving her mother to look after her. Her father got stuck at genin rank and eventually was promoted to chunin for his skill in tojutsu and trap making. He died sometime two years ago go in an ambush, Isami's goal was to exceed her father and make her mother proud. Sadly, she likely wouldn't be better than her father. She was looking to be a long-time genin so I shut the folder and placed it neatly on the desk. I need someone to have some blood swapped with their own. There would likely be a slight increase in the size of your reserves and chakra density. I twirled a pen around while staring at the girl in front of me. She was a year younger than me and was ideal for a quick experiment. I'd need her to live for a while, so I'd have to get someone to take her under their wing as well. So, she didn't die prematurely. All right, head into the room to your left, a clone will be right with you. I showed her away and went back to thinking. First, I'd give her a little blood and see how her body responds while I wait for the transfused blood to leave her system. Then if she was fine, I'd maybe make her produce her own rakage blood. After a few little overrides if things went as planned, she might become Super Aomi V2. Or Super Asami in this case, I watched as Asami pointed at a door with a questioning look and shook my head. It's one door to the left of that one Asami nodded and went on her way. Thankfully she didn't speak much. Though once she got comfortable that might change. Sigh I sighed aloud and put my feet on my desk. Although I said I wouldn't make super soldiers. I was pretty much doing just that Aomi came out of the room looking rather bored. So I assumed nothing bad had happened. I raised an eyebrow and Aomi nodded at me proving my guess. Things were alright thanks. I sent her a nod in gratitude and went back to my notes. I had a good bit of previously dormant mystery DNA. That was likely awakened because of his huge reserves. I had no clue in the slightest what it did. And I had no clue how to even awaken the DNA in someone normal. It was slightly annoying it could be useless. Or it could be a treasure. It could do just about anything. And I had no idea where to start. Sigh I sighed loudly as my thoughts were interrupted by the memories of my clone. Things have indeed gone well. Now I just needed to send some clones a few times a day to monitor her, and things would be golden. I held back another sigh, as I returned my focus to my notes. I still had things to do, so, I shouldn't get distracted poison immunity was going well. People were jumping to give me their blood, and I now had quite the collection of poison user blood. The collection also included some people who survived an encounter with foreign poison users, which was a nice touch, I guess Aomi was persuasive. I chuckled at the thought, now I needed to sort through all the blood and DNA, then I'd need to concoct a big ol' strand of immunity DNA and then I'll figure out what to do with it later. My healing and medical knowledge made most poisons ineffective, so it was useless for me. But maybe Aomi and Mom would like some general Kanoa poison immunity. I guess I'd see hello Rin. What brings you to my humble lap? Rin sent me a nervous smile, and sheepishly rubbed the back of her head. Can't I just have come to see my senpai? I rolled my eyes and motioned for her to get on with it. Um, can you teach me while we're here? Rin's voice trailed off a few times as she spoke, making me believe someone put her up to this. She didn't seem comfortable asking. What do you want to learn? Instead of denying her like I instinctively wanted to, I figured I'd see where this went. The possibility of forming a friendship or even a lifelong ally was tempting, even if lifelong ally meant a year-long ally. I heard you are amazingly good with the mystical palm. I was good at it, but it wasn't something I could teach anything else. I could teach her what I knew about the mystical palm in a day, 
But I couldn't do much more than that, there was a lot of chakra molding, and finding the right mix of physical energy and spiritual energy involved. It was something she would have to do on her own time. Um, Rin was taking her time in answering, and that would have been fine. Had she not been interrupting my free time, it's fine. I made a hand seal and the clone appeared. Lacking the signature burst of smoke the clone just sort of faded into existence. It was neat. Follow me, we'll find something to do. The clone walked away. Rin followed after it a moment later, but not before staring at me for a moment. Saya looked down at my notes. There was a distinct lack of progress on A's blood. It was slightly disheartening. Without lots of invasive DNA manipulation, I wouldn't be able to make any quick progress sadly. Invasive DNA manipulation caused lots of death, and I didn't want to do so, when Minato was so close by. So, no progress for me. But at least I got the gene for the future Rakage's reserves. That and A's gene for chakra density were the biggest finds I'd also figured out some of the genes responsible for his body's toughness. But I was hesitant to use those on myself as strong as A was. I would never want to look like him so... I think I'll just take the reserves. I couldn't use the chakra density as it was part of my Hyuga bloodline, and getting rid of it would mean getting rid of the gentle fist, and I didn't want to look like a freak, so A's bodily features were a no-go so bigger reserves were about all I would gain from this ordeal. I closed the book and clapped my hands, while mentally pushing my thoughts to a corner of my mind. CLAP asterisk I clapped my hands together in glee. It's almost time to give Asami her bi-daily checkup. I was excited to see what came of the blood transfusion. It could be nothing or it could be amazing. Regardless I was happy to get back to my roots. Experimenting on helpless Jenin. I stood up and pushed my chair away with a smile on my face. Here I come Asami. Let's see what lovely new things I can discover today. Interlude. I was quietly approached by Shiro Hayuga's assistant, and offered something I couldn't possibly refuse. A chance to become stronger, make my father proud, and lessen my mother's financial problems. All that I needed to do was sign something and have a few blood transfusions, and my chakra would change and grow stronger. It sounded too good to be true, and it likely was, but I couldn't pass up the chance. So, while I stood and watched as Shiro's clone finish up some final preparations, I thought I'd ask some questions. Excuse me. The clone waved at me with a get on with it motion, while still riding with one hand. I fidgeted as the look on the clone's face wasn't friendly in the least. What about my chakra will change? I made my voice as light and gentle as possible, as I didn't want to annoy the clone anymore. Then my presence already seemed to. The clone was silent for a moment. Your chakra will get denser, and you'll likely get a few new minor affinities. The clone trailed off as he finished the final stroke of the seal he was making. The clone made a face as he looked at the seal. We're trying to mix the chakra of someone at cage level with your chakra, your body, and chakra will likely be strengthened as a result. The clone started circling the seal, and I took a step back to get out of its way. My body. I wasn't sure how I felt about that the clone stopped circling and nodded. With an increase in chakra and chakra density, your body will naturally strengthen to accommodate the chakra. The clone looked over my shoulder and rolled its eyes. Aomi, you're late. I turned and saw Shiro's assistant standing silently behind me. She was dressed like a medic nin, and that made the slight unease I had been feeling grow. Are you sure you don't want black hair and red eyes, Aomi? I turned back to the clone and saw him wiggle his eyebrows. Shiro's assistant shook her head and ignored the clone, while walking towards the back of the room. Whatever the clone turned its eyes to me. Any more questions? I stood and stared at the assistant as she withdrew a syringe from a case, and filled it with a solution I bit my lip. Will I look different and is there any chance of death? No. The clone's answer was immediate. The quickness that the clone spoke with made me fairly sure he wasn't lying. But how would I truly know if a ninja of Shiro Hayuga's caliber was lying? Anything else? The clone stared at me with annoyance clearly shown on its face. I stayed quiet trying to come up with a question, but nothing came to mind. No, I'm okay for now. At least the clone nodded and said something. But I was distracted by Shiro's assistant, who was approaching me with a now empty syringe. Alright, Ayumi take some blood. The moment he spoke I felt the needle enter my skin. I felt mildly sick when I saw the syringe slowly fill with blood, so I looked away. After a moment she was done, she healed my skin and walked away, while the clone gestured for me to step away from the giant seal he had been working on. The seal will convert some of your blood into someone else's, and within two weeks the blood will leave your system. The clone hummed while tapping its foot. Depending on how that goes we might have you back in the lab afterward. The clone studied me for a moment. Take your kunai pouch off and Aomi power the seal. I did as I was told and tossed my pouch outside the seal. And watched as the assistant placed both of her hands on the outer edge of the seal. Any few injutsu on your body. The clone spoke as if it was an afterthought. I quickly shook my head. Alright, you might want to sit down. The clone smiled. I didn't do so in time and fell unconscious immediately. Only having enough time to throw my hands under my head. And stop my head from hitting the ground. I woke up with a dry mouth and a slight headache. They were both quickly eclipsed the almost warm syrupy feeling in my veins spreading to other parts of my body. It felt like I had Kuromitsu in my veins. How are you feeling? Shiro Hayaga's voice knocked me from my thoughts. I took a deep breath and sat up, while trying to ignore what I was feeling from my blood. Not good but not bad. After hesitating for a while I eventually settled on that. I turned and saw what could have been Shiro himself or a clone looking at me with blank white eyes and veins, grotesquely bulging from his skull. I've seen my Hayaga classmates use their Byakugan, but their veins were never so pronounced. What does your chakra feel like? Shiro stared at my stomach while he spoke. 
His piercing stare made me want to hunch and cover myself with my hands, but I refrained as I didn't want to offend. I ignored his stare and focused on my chakra. It took me a moment to ignore the new feeling coming from my veins and focus on my chakra. It feels I tried to find the words, the same but different. I tried to find better words after seeing the slight frown on Shiro's lips, but couldn't. His veins receded, and his eyes slowly turned back into their normal bright purple. Here, take these, once per day after meals. Shiro reached into a drawer to his left, and grabbed a transparent glass bottle containing some sort of pills. These are nutrition supplements. I take them myself so they're fine. He tossed me the bottle, and I fumbled for a moment before they fell into my lap. Thank you. Hayuga-sama. I inclined my head trying to put as much sincerity as I could into my voice. If Shiro himself took them, they were likely hard to get and expensive. No worries, now drink lots of water and rest up. Shiro stared at me while rubbing his chin. I'll be around a few times a day to check on you. I stood up and bowed to him. Thank you for the opportunity, Hayuga-sama. Shiro nodded and motioned for me to follow him. I took a deep breath and noticed I was feeling slightly tired. I pushed the tiredness away and followed after Shiro, while doing a slight jog to catch up. Isami launched an impressive lightning arrow at me which I promptly swatted away. After giving her an approving nod, A's blood had left her system, but there seemed to be a lingering effect. Her body's resistance to lightning and her lightning affinity was now extremely impressive. I absently redirected her lighting palm and leaped away. Isami gave chase, and I rolled my eyes while taking her legs out from under her with a well-timed kick. All right, that's enough for now. A clone meandered over and started healing Asami, while I stood still and got lost in thought. Although genetics determined your affinity, it didn't completely determine the strength of your affinity. It was part spiritual and part genetic. As you used your element you awakened dormant DNA that subsequently toughened your body, so it could better withstand your element. There was also a spiritual component that I didn't understand too well. According to Orochimaru's notes, repeated use of a technique was imprinted on your spiritual energy, and that made said technique stronger and more efficient during future use. Training made you better. I rolled my eyes and ignored the stray thought. Isami had seemingly skipped some steps somewhere and now could dish out some pretty powerful lightning jutsu and use them better. Then I could it was upsetting seeing my progress eclipsed by someone who had only learned that just a day ago. And it made me wonder about what other people's blood would do. Perhaps I needed some of A's blood as well. I let the idea bounce around for a moment before eventually discarding it. The physical energy and new chakra from A's cells had changed Asami's body slightly. It was an expected change, but not a well-documented one. So, it'd be best to wait even if I couldn't immediately get some results. At least I had something to do for a while. And that was frankly more than I expected from this experiment. Alright, get up, you've rested enough. I ignored Asami's groan and started towards the middle of the impromptu sparing circle. There was more improvement to be had for Asami. And I didn't want to waste any time. What next Shiro-senpai? Rin my ever dutiful Kohai bounced excitedly on her toes. Minato had left, but without his genin. So now some of my time was eaten up by my new friends. Thankfully most of our time was spent training, so it didn't feel like a total waste of time. I think Ibito could use some encouragement. I trailed off as I saw him dramatically dragging himself towards us. Kakashi had left with Minato, so it was just me and the genin, I'm dying. Abito was shouting to express just how badly he was dying. I ignored him and turned to Rin. It seems the gravity seal was too much I trailed off as I heard Abito groan in agreement. Rin stopped her bouncing and shrugged. He'll get over it. She turned to Abito with her hands on her hips. Isn't that right? Abito bobbed his head from his spot on the ground. Sigh. Abito was a sad sight. I was slightly wary of teaching the future big bad, but I couldn't exclude him. And exercising with a gravity seal wasn't teaching so. I was possibly in the clear that and the fact that the seal was on his right arm made me feel better about the training I was doing with him hopefully. He would lose that arm. I pushed the thought away and started towards the center of the field. Let's do some sparing. I put as much cheer in my voice as I could. I'd need the cheer even if it was fake the level and potency of the chakra that a shinobi has affected their physical aspects. The more chakra that a person has at any given time, the faster and stronger they are. That was the passive increase that chakra provided. With jutsu like the shunshin or tuznade's chakra enhancement, you could be further strengthened. What I was after were the passive increases so, I wanted to use A's genes to increase my reserves. I sadly couldn't jump straight to tail beast level. I had already cheated when I jumped to high cage level, and another abrupt increase in chakra would likely exceed what my body could handle. So, if I did an override it wouldn't be immediately useful. My chakra also needed an increase in density being a Hyuga meant I already had dense chakra, but I had denser chakra than myself. I wanted that trait, but I'd have to give up the gentle fist in exchange I didn't use it anymore but I wasn't comfortable giving it up. It was a large part of my early life in the Naruto-verse, and I had formed some fondness for the Tajutsu style. Chakra density would also increase in time, so I could keep my current Hayuga genes, and forget about the immediate increase in density. So, yes to bigger reserves and no to denser chakra side. I also needed to think about poison immunity and disease immunity. Even though they were called that I wouldn't get a full immunity, it was just to protect against common diseases, and commonly used poisons. It wasn't useful for me. But my mother and guy could use it so, 
I'd continue working on it. Then there was the chakra stuff I was also working on having someone else's chakra inside you seemed to awaken dormant DNA and provided slight boosts to your spiritual energy, physical energy, and affinity. Also it seemed there was also the problem of finding someone strong whose blood is compatible with me. I could change my blood type, but it was extremely complicated and not worth my time for the most part. I wouldn't do so unless I caught myself an Otsutsuki, but who knew what kind of blood they had. It could be literal liquid gold I had no idea. I wasn't an expert in Otsutsuki biology. Simon sent me a weird look, and I rolled my eyes at her. My lab wasn't a hangout spot. If my size were bothering her, she could leave I put her out of mind, and started writing down what I needed to do. I'd do the overwrite soon and focus on Asami for a while having type ab blood, meant she was ideal for blood transfusions. I'd also need to see what multiple transfusions did, and see what a permanent or semi-permanent change to her blood would do. Though that would involve a genetic change to her bone marrow or a bone marrow transplant a bone marrow transplant would be easier. But I wasn't likely to get any of A's marrow. I nodded at my list, and closed my book. Sitting and thinking about it wouldn't do me any good. My time was better spent interacting with Team Minato in my latest experiment slash minion. I'm about to tell you something that you must never forget. I stared deep into Abito's eyes. Abito looked excited. I almost felt bad for what I was going to do. It's the secret to my strength. I thought Abito couldn't possibly look more excited, but I was wrong. Abito unconsciously leaned closer to me, and he looked to be close to bouncing in excitement. It's trash talk. I nodded sagely. Abito whole body sagged and he glowered at me. Trash talk. Abito numbly repeated. I again nodded sagely. Even if you lose the battle you cannot lose the trash talking war. I pumped my fist and stared at Abito with conviction. Even if you are beaten, you must remember to insult your opponent's mother and question their sexuality. I lowered my fist and crossed my arms while trying my best to look serious. It's not over until you've crushed their spirits. I nodded and started walking like I had done a good job. Oh, I paused dramatically. Chakra control is also important. I nodded to myself and continued towards my destination. I could feel Abito's disappointed eyes boring into my back, but I ignored them. I wasn't interested in teaching Tabito. Giving Asami more of A's blood didn't give her any more boosts after the original. She could tap into a new chakra created from A's physical energy and her spiritual energy. But that was all that happened. I figured continued blood transfusions would provide more benefits. But that didn't seem to be the case. I decided that the next step would be to give Asami some of my blood and see what happened. I wasn't sure if my blood would do anything for her, and I figured it wouldn't do much as A's blood had already done most of what mine could probably do. The blood transfusion was just unlocking dormant DNA, with the introduction of strong chakra so perhaps blood wasn't even needed. Maybe filling someone with chakra would strengthen them. I mulled over the idea for a while and concluded that's probably what happened to Madara when he was hooked to the statue. I nodded to myself. Now I had more stuff to look into at least I wouldn't be bored for a while. Things seemed to have slowed down lately. Mom said as she stared at Asami, Rin, and Abito, who were training under the loving care of Dai and Aomi. Aomi turned out to be a total freak and spent a lot of time training with Dai. I conveniently ignored that I spent a lot of time training with Dai in the past. Aora and Kiri are focusing on Kumo, so Kumo can't spend much time on us right now. Though that would change in the future, we were blocking key supply routes, and Kumo would eventually commit to an attack. It's just a matter of time until we're pushed out of frost by the rakage. He just needed to be free enough to make his way here. Mom remained silent. I turned my attention back to the genin and opted not to continue the conversation. Silence was fine. Orochimaru had made good progress in his experiments involving sleep. Sadly, his progress came at the cost of my free time. So, I got to man the desk and do the paperwork. Ayumi was dismissed from her job as my minion for the day so I didn't even have anyone to bother to pass time. I could call Asami, but she wasn't as much fun as Aomi. A wave of memories hit me causing me to lose my train of thought. The overwrite seal was done. The clone had included some changes to my immune system, or more specifically my white blood cells. It wasn't something I had wanted, but if the clone had gone through the trouble to do it, I wouldn't undo it. So, I guess I'm getting a little boost to my immune system. And the clone should have added some poison resistance genes while he was at it. I rolled my eyes as I dug further through the memories. The clone had worked itself into a panic, imagining all the possible chakra enhanced STDs that existed and gathered blood from those who frequented brothels, eventually concocting a gene sequence providing instructions on fighting different illnesses. At least the clone was productive Sai. I stared at the mass of paper in front of me and tried to summon the will required to chew through it. E H U N K asterisk sadly. I couldn't summon the necessary will and let my head fall on the desk. With the power of delegation and clones, I finished the paperwork in record time. So now I had a little bit of free time. Sadly, not enough time for an override, but it was enough time to start on the poison immunity genes. Everything was labeled neatly, and I had a list of what each poison user used and had used against them at one point. One poison user had most of what I required, but I'd still have to peruse other DNA to be as thorough as possible. So, it would be pretty easy to do. I would need to do some testing to ensure that it would work. But other than that it was pretty straightforward. Get the DNA, assemble the DNA, and make an override seal. So I could make more whenever I required it. Easy PC Dai handed me a picture of Guy and his team that he received. 
Guy's features had grown more masculine as did his teammates, other than that I didn't notice anything different about Team Chosa. Guy was still wearing his jumpsuit, and I gave him a mental thumbs up. Never let your youth fade. I smiled and handed the picture back to Dai. Thanks. I hadn't seen Guy in a long time, and the occasional letter we exchanged didn't feel like enough. Where's Guy and his team now? Dai made a show of pointing towards the southwest. Guy and his team are fanning the flames of youth in river country, while defending a fair maiden from a greedy noble. I nodded. Team Choza was doing some sort of escort mission then. Thanks Dai. I nodded and started to retreat towards my lab. I was at my daily limit for Dai time and had to escape. No problem most you for Shiro. I rolled my eyes and sent Dai a backwards wave while continuing towards my lab. I stood and stared at the override seal covering the floor of my lab whilst hesitating. It looked good, there were no mistakes. I was just hesitant to commit a good part of the chakra in my steel. The danger of a rakage attack was higher than it usually was, and I wanted to have something to fall back on. I took a deep breath and started calming my breathing. As much as I wanted to save my chakra, waiting wouldn't do me any good. Minato had some seals around the camp, and could arrive at a moment's notice. I was as safe as I was ever going to be sadly. That didn't make me feel better. I unclipped my kunai pouch from my leg and tossed it to the side. Seals inside seals were usually a bad idea. I unlocked the seal on my forehead. And a single hand sign later a clone appeared. It started walking around the seal giving the seal its own check over. I closed the seal and started shunting the leftover chakra into the seal by my feet. The clone gave me a nod, and I stepped into the seal soon after. A lightning bolt the size of my torso, streaked towards my face, and I had barely enough time to make my mask. Isami bathed me in lightning, and my vision was lost for about 30 seconds. 30 seconds didn't usually feel like a long time, but when my skin was melting and I couldn't see anything, it felt like an eternity. Alright that's enough, you've got me pretty good. I let my mask recede. Isami looked pretty cocky. How'd that feel? She started doing a victory dance. I stared at her blankly. The only part of my skin that survived was my face, and I felt rather sour about it. I ignored the itch caused by my skin's regrowth, and thought about her bullshit lightning jutsu. Every jutsu she launched with A's chakra was three times as powerful and twice as big. It wasn't good for my poor skin. I looked down at my pale hand. My skin hadn't had enough pigment and was now white. My healing was faster than my body's ability to make pigments. I, I ran a hand through my hair. Any hair I regrew would be white as well. That was painful. Well done. My voice was bland. Isami looked slightly guilty. Sorry I got too excited. I wasn't sure what to make of the fake smile she sent me. Don't worry. I shrugged and started towards the lab while motioning her to follow. I wanted to feel its strength. I've never had this problem before. Having to regrow my skin more than five times a day was less than ideal. I guess. You've been able to use the chakra for a while now. Tell me what you think about it. My observations had been lacking, so I wanted her to fill in some blanks. Um, she tapped her chin. It's really dense, so it's hard to use the right amount I nodded. Is it harder to control than your own chakra? Isami shook her head. I don't think so. It was at first, but now it's not. T-A-P asterisk T-A-P asterisk T-A-P asterisk. I tapped my pencil against the paper while staring at Isami. Any discomfort after the first week? Isami quickly shook her head. No, unexpected. Perhaps she couldn't sense chakra well. Has your diet changed over the past month? Isami hesitated for a moment before nodding. How much has your food intake increased or decreased? Isami hesitated again. Um, I've been eating twice as much as usual. I nodded slowly while wondering if it was because of the chakra or puberty. Have you had an increase in weight? Isami scrunched her face up and didn't answer. Any changes in your mood that you've noticed? I wisely skipped the question. Isami shook her head after a slight bit of hesitation. She didn't want to talk about it. Any increase in energy? Isami nodded but looked uncomfortable. I nodded to myself. It was about what I expected. Alright, unless you have something you want to talk about, we're done here. I stared at her expectantly hoping she had something to share. Thanks. She bobbed her head and darted out of the room. I raised an eyebrow but put it out of my head. I instead focused on the apparent ease that she manipulated the chakra with. I was worried that the chakra would be uncontrollable, but that didn't seem to be the case. Lucky me I guess I jumped the gun and replaced my own blood with Ace. I was overcome with a fever a few hours later. My mom immediately proceeded to smother me increasing my annoyance over the whole ordeal. Thanks, but I can feed myself. I pushed the spoon away with my finger. My mom pouted for a moment before smoothing her features over and adopting a serious look. You've never been sick like this, what happened? I rolled my eyes, and mom rolled her eyes to mock me. I almost rolled my eyes again but stopped myself. I gave myself a blood transfusion, and my body doesn't seem to like it. I did everything right it was upsetting. This usually only happened when there were bacteria or white blood cells in the donor's blood. Which there definitely wasn't. Calling upon years of practice. I ignored mom's disapproving look. No worries, my white blood cells just don't seem too like foreign blood. It wouldn't haven't been a big deal had I not been overconfident, and replaced most of my red blood cells with A's. I'll be better in two hours give or take ten minutes. Mom nodded and flipped the cloth on my forehead over. This better not happen again, we could be attacked at any time. I nodded, but my mind was elsewhere. I was trying to get A's blood to produce as much physical energy as they could before I flushed them from my system. I wanted a little of that chakra to play with even if it would stop me from ridding myself of the fever for a while. It won't. Mom nodded. I hope so. Mom leaned back in her chair stared at the ceiling, while I gave A's blood my 
full focus. I blew a quiet breath from my nose. Annoying. Interlude. Shiro, why do you keep switching fighting styles? Shiro turned towards me and I continued. You always seem to retire your moves after a few uses. Hum his eyes turned judgmental and he hummed. I scratched my nose with my thumb feeling a little uncomfortable. I was just curious. But I would rather have let it be had I known I'd be stared at like I was an idiot. After a moment of staring at me, Shiro spoke. I don't want to be predictable. Shiro had a touch of a smile on his face. I've never had trouble killing people that were predictable. The smile faded. I don't want to be predictable like that. His voice faded as well. Those who are predictable die, and thus, I'm unpredictable both in life and in battle. His voice was only a whisper. I just nodded, unsure of what to say. Well, let's not dwell on that. Shiro's voice and expression returned to normal. How's my favorite genin? I blinked feeling a little thrown off at the sudden shift in mood. Rin or Asami? Three genin were bothering Shiro but I figured it was one of the two girls as he seemingly hated Abito. Rin. Shiro smiled, but it was fake. I ignored it and gathered my thoughts on the girl. She's doing well but has trouble when in a group, if she has Asami or Abito around. She can't seem to get any training done. She usually spends more time fussing over Abito though. Asami wasn't much of a problem. No big deal, she's got a gravity seal on. That'll make up for her dallying. I nodded but didn't agree. She could be more, but she continued wasting time. Well, hopefully Minato will take them soon. Shiro said and I shrugged. It wasn't likely, Grass was getting more hellish last I heard. While I were S rank ninja, they more than made up for it with numbers and fanatical loyalty. I'm about to feed the prisoners, want to join me? Shiro gestured to the direction of the prison. As much as I love being spit on and called a whore, I'd rather it be done by a pretty lady, and not a disgusting unwashed kumo nin. I held back a chuckle at the thought. No thanks, you can have fun by yourself. That that came out a little drier. Then I intended Shiro smirked. Shane, you could have been the last woman those men saw. I rolled my eyes. In their dreams. Alright, I'll go check on Dai and make sure he not in the hospital again. And then I'd sleep. I awn asterisk Shiro nodded and started towards the door with a yawn. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow then. I nodded. Good night. I smiled. Shiro sent me a warm smile. Night mom. I nodded and watched the door close. Sigh as much as he changed, he was still my son. Even if that change was jarring. I rubbed my face as I remembered the days when Shiro trained with Takuma. This is probably something all mothers go through years pass. And before you know it your child is a different person than what you remember. It felt like I blinked and Shiro had become a whole new person. Sigh it was best I put it out of my mind. It wouldn't do me well to dwell on it. After two more unsuccessful attempts to get my body to accept A's blood, I had given up on it. It took a week and a half for the chakra to start changing your body, and I couldn't keep A's chakra in my body for that long without additional blood transfusions. So, I needed to find another way to cultivate A's chakra. Easy PC. Another day and another mission from Orochimaru. I was supposed to kill a merchant who was selling Takumo. He was the seventh son of some noble in Fire Country, and was using his name to send fellow merchants through Frost Takumo. I expected it to be a complete waste of time and was not let down in the slightest. After taking an explosive tank to the leg I acted in self-defense and blew up an entire building. Sadly, that earned the ire of Orochimaru, as the assassination was supposed to be quiet. I wasn't affected by Orochimaru's constant blabbering about failing the mission. I wasn't making my way through a trap building to kill someone. With the satisfaction of a job well done, I made my way to the lab in preparation for some post-mission fun. Aomi bring me the tumor please. I had created a fleshy mass using A's cells, and now it sat suspended in a nutrition solution. It took constant attention from Aomi, myself, or my clones to keep the fleshy mass alive, but it was worth it. The mass was the size of my torso, and the sight of Aomi rolling a giant fleshy tumor looking thing on wheels over to me never failed to amuse. My baby. I took it and dragged it over to the side of the room under the unamused gaze of Aomi. I popped the lid off and reached into the gooey solution and touched it with the tips of my fingers. I manipulated the cells of the mass and slowly my hand was engulfed. Now that I had my tumor glove on, I turned my attention inwards and started to guide my spiritual energy down my arm and into the tumor. I continued feeding the tumor spiritual energy while I fed my chakra into the strength of a hundred seal. After a couple of boring minutes, my reserves were nearly empty and only had some dregs of tumor chakra from the previous time. I had done this. I turned my attention back to the fleshy mass and started absorbing the chakra from it. After a few minutes, the process was done and I started manipulating the tumor to free my hand. I gave my hand a shake, ridding it of the nutrition solution. Alrighty, go give my baby back to the clone. I ignored her disgusted look and walked over to the sink to free my arm from the remaining nutrition solution. As fun as it was too weird AME out, I'll be happy when I don't have to spend my time keeping a mass of cells alive. I just needed a few more days worth of chakra and I should be good, although I hadn't gained as much as Asami had I still gained much from A's physical energy. My body's resistance to lightning release had grown greatly, and I was now close to completing my version of the lightning cloak. With my dermal armor, the lightning cloak might be able to exceed A's own. I wouldn't get my hopes up though. My newly gained lightning resistance wouldn't be able to exceed years of practice that the current rakage and future rakage put into the lightning cloak. 
but hopefully over time I'd bridge that gap. So, my next step was to train the cloak and train it repeatedly. I absently mindedly dry my hands. Train the cloak and try to get rid of Minato's Genin. I've had them for two weeks now plan of action decided I made my way out of the lab. The training was going to take up a good portion of my time, but that was in the future. I had to let my body soak up the chakra, and I had to use the chakra a little to keep it flowing through my body. So, for the next two to four weeks, I'd be training heavily with the chakra I'd made using the fleshy mass. Being seen with a separate chakra type by the local Hyuga might become a bother, but it wasn't anything a little murder wouldn't solve. I brushed the thought off and decided that blackmail and threats were the better options. Sigh if all else fails, a little murder was okay. Now would be the ideal time to take a month-long break. I was somewhat vulnerable as most of my chakra was put inside the seal. The chakra that I needed to use the Shikotsu Myaku, the bloodline with the longest name. I could unseal the chakra anytime assuming I had some warning, but it was better safe than sorry I held back a sigh and wondered why I hadn't thought of this earlier no I had to go see if I could take some time off. Orochimaru wasn't going to be happy, and we hadn't been interacting as of late. Perhaps he wasn't interested in me anymore, or perhaps he had other things to focus on. Or he could be getting paranoid I smiled wearily and decided that I'd better ask for leave soon. Orochimaru should have eaten a while ago, and he might be in a good mood. Hopefully, no, Orochimaru didn't even pause to consider it, which was fine, but I would have liked the illusion of thought at the very least. Alright? I didn't bother to protest, I was probably needed, so it was fine. I hadn't expected a yes anyway. What you're working on? I pointedly stared at the thing on the table. Orochimaru side eyed me, likely having a mental debate about how much to share. Chakra is the bridge between body and soul. Orochimaru paused and tapped the tiger human hybrid on the forehead. I'm trying to influence the soul through the body and chakra. Sadly, the soul is no longer as malleable after the age of 20. Orochimaru turned the hybrid's head towards me, and I looked into its glassy eyes. Though the more chakra one has the faster the soul is influenced. Orochimaru tapped on its forehead and spoke again. I had given up on manipulating the soul. But now that I can expand the specimen's chakra network I've started experimenting again. I raised an eyebrow when Orochimaru started running his fingers through the hybrid's hair. By changing its DNA, physical features, giving it the memories of a tiger, and the chakra system of a tiger, it becomes a tiger chakra-wise. Orochimaru turned its head back and closed its eyes with his fingers. Those changes are reflected in the soul. I hummed I wasn't sure how I felt about that. I grabbed the hybrid's clawed hand and used the diagnostic jutsu on it. There wasn't much chance to its body's structure, the muscles and bones were stronger, and the chakra system was different but other than that the hybrid was still internally human-shaped. So, Chakra can influence the soul. I released its hand and took a step back. Hamarochimaru hummed an affirmation. Chakra is the bridge between body and soul. He repeated, What's the purpose of influencing the soul like this? Orochimaru stayed silent, and after a moment it became clear that it was on purpose. Sai, so perhaps there was no purpose to this experiment. Orochimaru might be doing this just for the sake of doing it. Orochimaru sent me a mildly annoyed look at my Sai. I rolled my eyes. Thanks for sharing your knowledge, Sensei. I bowed. Orochimaru nodded, though he didn't look as happy happy as he usually did at my use of sensei. Leave me. He eyed the hybrid. I have work to do. I nodded and sent him another bow. Before beating a hasty retreat, I had some thinking to do. And I had to ask for some books on the subject, perhaps when he's in a better mood. I spent a while trying to figure out how Orochimaru could see the soul but gave up on it, after realizing Fuenjutsu was likely the answer. I shifted my focus back to Chakra wondering if the Chakra I was running through my body was changing my soul. That could have been the case for Asami as she was much younger than I was, but I doubted that my old soul would change much. Then again who knew? I knew nothing substantial about the soul. It was mostly guesswork on my part. Sai so perhaps that's why I could use the Byakugan and Shikotsu Myaku my Chakra has been affecting my soul for a long time. I flipped my pillow over, and enjoyed the sensation of cool fabric on my face. I now had a lot of questions. But Orochimaru wasn't too forthcoming with his research into the soul I might need to stick around him for a while. There was still much to learn. I gave Asami a transfusion using my blood. There weren't any changes other than an increase in appetite. Something similar happened when she first got A's blood, she just needed some nutrients as her body was changing slightly. It was good as it meant the physical energy from my cells was doing something. I stopped scanning Asami with the diagnostic jutsu, and hummed quietly to myself. Perhaps a flesh transplant would be more beneficial. If blood was doing this well, cells that were directly connected to the chakra network, would likely have better effects, I let the idea bounce around, and found myself liking it. It was something to try at least probably on a prisoner. Ayumi tapped me on the shoulder bringing me back to reality. Isami had taken off, likely wanting to train with Dai, while the offer was valid. The notes please. I held a hand out and received the notes not a moment later. I glanced at the notes and nodded. Good work. There was nothing to add. Ayomi nodded and started towards the tumor, as it was about time for a good old chakra making session with Tumor Chan. I snickered. My new favorite thing to do was making Ayomi cringe in disgust. And Tumor Chan was indeed cringe worthy. But perhaps a human name would be even more cringy jerky in the Naruto verse was not seasoned very well. I stared at the piece of thinly sliced jerky sadly. It made me sad to eat such garbage when I knew it could be so much better with different seasoning. Sigh, I tossed it into my mouth and slowly chewed it. The taste of salt and smoke was okay, but it could be better. Better tasting jerky was probably low on the list of things that need improvement, so I wouldn't see it for a while. 
As nostalgic as I was feeling about Tasty Jerky, I didn't care enough to try my hand at making it. I was a murderer, not a cook. I stared at Aomi and wondered if I should make her go off in search of better jerky. Aomi met my stare and raised an eyebrow. Like what you see? I winked at her and she looked away. Whatever, hello senpai. Rin sent me a cheery smile that reminded me of Minato. I nodded at her in greeting and studied a beetle gasping and sweating form in the distance. Senpai, why is your hair black? Rin pointed at my head. I didn't need the clarification. I knew what hair was and where it was located. I'm going on a mission soon and people run or surrender when they see me. I paused for a moment wondering if I should soften what I was about to say. It makes me uncomfortable to chase down and murder people. It feels more justified when they fight back. Rin looked perturbed even though I held back a great deal of what I wanted to say. Not telling her about how happy a good fight makes me was the right move. The black hair is nice. It makes us look more like mother and son. Mom changed the topic and averted what would have been a long stretch of awkward silence. I nodded at her in both thanks and acknowledgement. Want me to keep it? It was easy to do and would throw people off for a while. Mom shrugged. As much as I like it, it isn't you. Mom nodded to herself. Black hair doesn't look cool when it's covered in blood like white hair does. I nodded in agreement. I like white anyways. I jutted my thumb at my clothing. Mom nodded and started towards Abito, who was still running around the frost-covered clearing. Any news from Sensei? Ring quickly shook her head. That's annoying. The fighting in grass might be picking up? That or they needed someone in sand country or noodles. I had things I wanted to do and having Minato's gen in here was putting a dampener on my experimentation. Whatever. I stared at the sky to see how much time we had. Chakra control or sparing? Rin tapped her chin and glanced at Abito for a moment. Chakra control please. Rin sent me a brilliant smile. I nodded absently while staring at Mom and Abito who had started sparing. Abito didn't seem to want to spar, so it was just Mom chasing him around the field with the threat of bodily harm. I turned away from the spectacle they were creating and started towards a large tree on the edge of the clearing. Hopefully, Mom would motivate Abito some. He could use it. Interlude. Orochimaru Sama had ordered Shiro to disguise himself, infiltrate Kaishi and assassinate a merchant. It couldn't be known that we assassinated the merchant. So Dai, Sumiko, and I were tasked with keeping a lookout. While Shiro stealthily made his way through the building into the merchant. The mission was going well. EOOM asterisk until the building exploded. The explosion was massive and easily the biggest explosion I had ever seen. It shattered nearby windows and debris the size of me, rained throughout the immediate area. I turned to Sumiko as she was the leader. Proceed I signed. Sumiko shook her head with a look of annoyance. I was about to question her when I was distracted by the scent of burnt flesh. I turned and saw Shiro kneeling behind me. He was horribly burnt, and I would have been worried about had I not seen bone peeking through patches of rapidly healing burnt skin. I see you had fun Sumiko's dry voice startled me. Shiro stared at his mother quietly for a moment before replying. Yes, lots of fun Shiro's voice was equally dry. Retreat die sign while looking uncharacteristically serious. Shiro nodded and took a running leap off the building and onto the adjacent one. Sumiko, Dai, and I followed after him at a more sedate pace. So how did the building explode? Dai still looks serious. IAWN asterisk Sumiko rubbed one of her eyes and yawned. Shiro did it. Her bluntness surprised me, and I couldn't stop the snicker that escaped me. Sumiko looked at me and smirked. They had a sensor and knew Shiro was coming, so they decided to trap the building. Sumiko's smirk widened. Shiro probably didn't want to go through all the traps and blew them up. There wasn't supposed to be any ninja. Dai spoke up, especially in Fire Country's capital. I nodded in acknowledgement and looked at Sumiko. There wasn't Sumiko smirked. They arrived just as we started. I nodded in understanding. Had it not been Shiro who was sent, the merchant might have survived. But the ninja arriving when they did, meant that we had a leak somewhere. The timing was too good. Though it seemed that they didn't know who would be sent eat now. We're leaving when Shiro finishes his shower. Sumiko knocked me from my thoughts. I nodded and Dai nodded as well. He was looking less serious now. I sent him a nod and started on my ration bar while he nodded back. We were halfway to Frost Country when Shiro spoke breaking the silence that had befallen us since we left Kaishi. Orochimaru's going to throw a fit. Shiro's voice was bland, he didn't seem to care all that much. Sumiko nodded with a small smile on her face. Yes. But it was you who blew the building up, not us. Shiro shrugged and I nodded. Orochimaru Sama's attention would be focused on Shiro. I could always blame Ayumi. Shiro's eyes met mine, and the playful glint in them made any panic I felt disappear. How unyouthful. Dai somersaulted in front of us and landed in a pose. Young Shiro, you must be kind to the beautiful flowers of Kanoha. Shiro gave Dai a thumbs up. How youthful. I will never mistreat a beautiful flower Dai-san. I let out a silent groan and covered my face with my hands. This was embarrassing. Shiro and Dai continued their antics while Sumiko and I sped up. After a moment the youthful chatter was barely audible, and I was feeling less embarrassed. THUD asterisk with a wave of my sword I felled a large tree. It was like cutting through butter with a warm knife. Using lightning constructs as an extension of my bone sword was an excellent decision on my part. I ignored Amy's disapproving look with practiced ease, and let the construct disperse. The wood will be used, stop looking at me like that. Aomi didn't my casual tree chopping, which was why I was doing it. Well that and I couldn't use lightning constructs in spars anymore. They were simply too deadly. How about you keep your hair color, and we make your eyes a glowing red? Aomi didn't even acknowledge the question, she just ignored me. That's fine. 
I didn't know how to make eyes glow anyways. What about Yuzumaki red hair and bright yellow eyes? I was again ignored. I scratched my chin. What if we do some sort of design on your iris? I'd be like a tattoo on your eye. I stopped focusing on Aomi as I found the idea more interesting. The pigment was extremely easy to manipulate in the iris. I could probably make whatever I fancied. And the Sharingan's markings immediately came to mind. I liked the idea of randomly giving people Tomo and making it look like they had a Sharingan. They would likely be hunted by every village on second thought. Perhaps that's a bit cruel. I guess it depends on how much I dislike the one I did it to alright, let's go. I turned to see if Aumi was paying attention. We've got to give my baby a proper funeral dot. Well, burn first and then bury. Wooosh asterisk Aomi exhaled, and the fleshy mass was covered in a bright orange flame. That seemed to stick to the mass. I thought about dramatically bawling and causing a scene, but Aomi had grown none to my dramatics and it was no longer as fun to weird her out. Thus, we stood and quietly watched as the experiment was consumed by the flame, and slowly reduced to ash. Sadly, I realized too late that I could have kept the tumor, and that I should have gotten my mother to use it. Fuck Shiro. Mom stared at me with barely concealed annoyance. I met her stare with an innocent face. Yes. I started inspecting my nails to further develop my facade of innocence. She silently pointed towards the statuesque thing in the corner of the lab. It was of course an armored skeleton wielding my usual thin bone sword. That's Kuro. Mom stared at Kuro. I stared at Kuro with her. I hope Kuro is the skeleton's name. Sadly, it was not. The giant phallic protrusion coming from its pelvis was Kuro. Please get rid of it. I nodded without argument. Kuro was only here temporarily. I was going to use the skeleton as a puppet and see how that went. That's a bone puppet. I got bored and decided to add Kuro. Mom's face was blank. She just pointed at Kuro. Why is it as big as my leg? Because it wasn't as funny when it was a normal size. It's modeled after my own of course. I said not bothering to conceal my amusement. Mom didn't share my amusement. It seems like you're overcompensating. It was now Mom's turn to be amused. I rolled my eyes not bothering to argue. I was going to make a clone walk the puppet and Kuro around the camp. Both to test the puppet's functionality and for a laugh. It's a bone clone that ran out of chakra and then was repurposed as a puppet. I wanted to call it a bone shadow clone. But bone shadow clone was too wordy. You made your special Tajutsu style yet. I opted to change the topic. Mom nodded and gave me a look I couldn't decipher. I completed it a while ago. She paused and thought. Haven't had much opportunity to use it though. I opened my mouth to ask her about it. But I was beaten to the punch. I've applied for leave. It's what I came for, before getting distracted by Kuro. She pointed at Kuro as she spoke. Kuro was distracting I agreed absently. Mom was leaving, which couldn't have come at a better time. This was the calm before the storm. Mom leaving now was ideal. Take die with you. I don't have the time to watch over him. As much as I liked him, I couldn't spend much time with him. I had my own duties and projects that ate up most of my time. Take a Beto and Rin as well. I'll approve all the forms. Mom sent me a displeased look. I ignored the look and rolled my eyes at her. I'm not bending the rules or anything. The requests are approved or denied at my discretion. It was up to whoever was doing the paperwork whether or not they got to go or had to stay. It was pretty lax compared to some of Kanoha's other garbage. Alright, get out of here. I've got stuff to do. I shooed her, stood up, and proceeded into the ceiling room as Aomi had named it. Aomi had been patiently waiting this whole time, and it wouldn't do to make her wait any longer. Mutation inducement was something I hadn't used much. It was random unless you knew a lot about what you wanted to do and how to do it. I didn't have a particular goal. I was just using it on a few different genes in my blood. Mainly the Hyuga Chakra Density genes though. Aomi put him back. We're done with him? He'd be monitored for changes. I would then overwrite the blood of some prisoners and observe the effects. Sadly, random mutations were indeed random. And random in this case seemed to mean useless. Because that's what most of the mutations seemed to be. Aomi nodded silently, picked up the test subject, and threw him over her shoulder. Most of the time there was little to no notable change. And even when there was some change it was so minor that it didn't matter in the scheme of things. I've used mutation inducement on various genes to little effect. It so far seemed useless. But I'd stick with it for a while. Maybe I could get lucky. And if I didn't get lucky, I'd find a Hyuga with better chakra density then myself and steal his genes. That was the current plan. At least until I found something else to do. I stood and waved Team Irregular and Team Minato off. Aomi was offered a break as well, but she refused, so at least I had some company. Said company was waving with me and sending the back of my head a sour look. She sadly didn't find Kuro as entertaining as I did. Perhaps using the puppet to attack her while she was sleeping was a bad choice on my part. Well, now that my favorite very squishy people are gone, we can attack Kumo's camp. A wide smile covered my face at the thought. There had been a lack of mayhem, panic, madness, and havoc lately. I missed it. We'll need to do some stuff before that though. Aomi looked relieved. I rolled my eyes and started towards the interior of the camp. I had two months to myself. I'd try to make the most of it. I'd use less chakra than that. You're trying to make their wounds a pain to heal. You're not trying to melt through them. Aomi had taken my advice 
and learned how to coat her blade in flames. Sadly, she melted her blade as it was not chakra conductive, thus I made her a new one. It's the same as your last sword, just a little lighter. If you want any changes made, let me know. Aomi nodded and used the sheath from her previous sword to store the bone sword. I tapped my chin and studied her. She was soon leaving the cannon fodder zone, and was about to enter the heart to kill cannon fodder zone. If I trusted her more, I would give her bigger reserves which would move her well into the too hard to kill cannon fodder zone. Sadly, I couldn't trust her. Her loyalty to myself was less than her loyalty to Kanoha. The letters between herself and the Hokage showed as much. Sai Aomi raised an eyebrow, and I waved her off, non-verbally telling her to just ignore me. I was out here bloodying my hands for Kanoha, and the Hokage still wanted to have eyes on me, enough so that he'd take the time to personally pen a letter to Aomi well. As long as he didn't bother me that was fine. I had relative freedom and my notes were in seals on my person. No notes could be stolen, and no one obstructed me. And that was the way I wanted it. If I was going to be watched, then Kanoha wouldn't benefit from what I was doing. Not that they would have even if I had not been annoyed. Leave the sword and sheath in the lab when you're there. I'll apply some seals on it, and make it as close to indestructible as I can. I wish I had caught on earlier. I wouldn't have invested so much time into her. Now she was friends with all the people I surrounded myself with, and she was too valuable to dispose of. This whole ordeal was a shame. You okay? Aomi held her notebook in front of my face. You've been standing idle for a long time. She tapped long a few times with her pen. I nodded. Just got lost in thought is all. I took a moment to gather myself. I was feeling slightly emotional. I was grooming Aomi to become my second in command. And finding the letters between Aomi and the Hokage put a dampener on that. Alright you are free for the day. Go have fun. Aomi nodded and left. I however remained so I could stew for some more. I was getting extremely emotional about the ordeal. Sai it was probably puberty Aomi hadn't even done anything sneaky or overt. She was just reporting to the Hokage. She didn't think it needed to be hidden. But I still felt betrayed. And I doubted that she even considered telling the Hokage about what I was doing as a betrayal. I wasn't even sure I considered it a betrayal. After all, I hadn't ordered her to keep what I was doing quiet. Sai I attempted to hold the Sai back, but was unsuccessful. This also brought Dai into question. Was he also reporting to the Hokage? Mom was the Hokage's go-to gal, but maybe he caught on to the fact that she held a great deal back. There was still more to think about my friends and acquaintances had been a blind spot, and the Hokage used it. Though I don't know what I did that made him so focused on me. Perhaps it was my rapid accumulation of strength. Or perhaps it was my arachimaru like behavior. Maybe it was my age. I didn't know and could only guess. Everything was sealed, the fuinjutsu covering the lab was removed, and I ordered the building to be modified. Now there would be a personal lab below the usual lab. Said personal lab would be heavily restricted and used only by myself. The whole process would only take a day or two. Sadly, moving everything back and redoing the fuinjutsu protections would take an additional two days. So, I was going to be training and bothering Orochimaru. While some clones worked on the lab, Orochimaru was entertaining a guest and denied my generous offer to assist him. So I cleared out some space in my quarters and made a makeshift lab. Thus, the DNA for poison immunity was done. However, disease immunity was a work in progress. Mainly because it was complicated. TDs and such were easy to do as they were just infectious. And the immune system could combat that if it knew how. Hereditary diseases were not as easily fixed. They would have to be tailored to individuals and was not something I could fix easily. There were also diseases involved with natural aging which weren't easily fixed. And then there were deficiency diseases, where your body lacked something and started breaking down. So, disease and poison immunity were no longer a fitting name. They were now dubbed disease and poison resistance. Because when I thought about it, it wasn't actual immunity, just resistance. I pushed the slight shame I felt back. Everyone gets overzealous with their naming once in a while. My new underground lab was done, and after having the place cleaned by some genin, I was ready to move my stuff back. With a single hand sign, I was surrounded by clones and ready to rumble. Charge. I pointed towards the lab and the clones madly rushed towards it. The clones descended upon the lab with ferocity. In moments the clones had started on the seals using ink that they had stolen from somewhere. It was beautiful. I opted to watch the control curse instead of participating. I've got purple paint, time to put it to good use. The clone held it up like it was a trophy. What are you talking about you silly bitch? The wall should be white. Get that purple shit out of here. Another clone smacked the can of paint out of its hands. I smiled. My clones were having a blast, and so was I. It's not every day you get to watch you argue with yourself about paint choices after all. The lab was done. Aomi was busy rearranging the lab, as the clones had decided to leave everything lying around. And I was going through my notes again. I kept getting distracted with other more interesting experiments, and often opted to put what I was doing off. When I did so I usually forgot about it completely. Like indexing the Hyuga's DNA and creating the ideal sensor DNA. Or forcefully opening someone's gates, or flesh transplants, or making artificial biakigan. There was lots of stuff I had forgotten in favor of things that would provide more immediate benefits. I looked out the window and stopped my pondering. Oh me, go order some public bathrooms to be built and ban public urination. A man was pissing on a wall across the street, and ruining the view I got from the lab's only window. Aomi let out a heavy but silent sigh, and made her way out of the lab without complaint. I nodded to myself while wishing I could open the window and hit the man with a senban. I didn't mind the public drunkenness. 
but watching someone piss while I was trying to stay focused was annoying. After sending Aomi out to collect some Hyuga blood, I retired from the lab for the day and made my way to my usual training ground. When I arrived, I noted that the ground had been patched up. I nodded to myself and grabbed a scroll I had tucked away in my kunai pouch. Lightning release. Lighting aura. The user circulated lightning chakra in their body to increase their physical parameters. The lightning chakra stimulates the user's nervous system, enhancing their speed and their reaction time. The scroll was fresh from the archives, and it was what I believed to be the precursor to the Rakage's lightning chakra mode. The cloak was pretty much a really strong version of lighting aura with elements of the shunshin thrown in. I'd been trying to make my own version of the lighting cloak, but I'd had little luck. Even with the improvements from the chakra tumor, I had thought that the tumor would be an instant fix, but that wasn't the case. I still seemed to be doing something wrong. Sadly, I didn't know what. I'd spend a little time on lightning aura, and then I'd give it a go again. If it didn't work, I'd ask Orochimaru for some tips, and then I'd throw in the towel. There wasn't much else I could do. The Hayuga went cool with giving me their blood. I even got a letter penned to me from Hiyashi Hayuga, telling me to keep my greedy little hands to myself. I was slightly annoyed. But it was mainly because Hiyashi had become the Hayuga clan head. I hadn't been invited to whatever celebration they had. What a piss off. I was probably the strongest Hayuga and they didn't even have the decency to pretend that they liked me. There was also the fact that not being invited was likely a statement of some kind. Sadly, I was better versed in murder than I was in politics. And I had no clue what kind of statement they had made. Mom and I were both antisocial, so I never had to attend any events. So I never bothered to learn any social niceties beyond the basics, nor the subtle art of political talk. Sigh, and there was a chance that they had no motives, and I was overthinking things. But that was unlikely. It was far more likely that I was being snubbed on purpose, and that it was a statement. I decided to put the ordeal out of my mind. The Hayuga were usually cunts, and I had tried to be nice about getting their blood. I just have to be a little rougher. I drum my fingers on the desk while I'm here. I should write a note for Orochimaru. It would be a good idea to try and oust Kumo from Frost. I placed a blank paper in front of myself. Though Orochimaru might be averse to the idea, seeing as he and Minato had no luck last time. I guess I'll see trying to mutate the Hayuga chakra density gene had produced little results, which wasn't a surprise. It was some good practice though. I keep at it and see if it went anywhere, but I wouldn't get my hopes up. Perhaps I would get more interesting results if I used mutation inducement on a whole person, and not just a small section of DNA. It was an avenue worth exploring at least I'd get around to asking Orochimaru. If he used the technique, hopefully, he had something to teach me. I figured out that mutations to the Hyuga chakra density gene only seemed to provide a slight increase to chakra density at most. So, I spent a lot of time collecting different mutations for the gene. Any gene that showed an increase in chakra density was collected and used in the making of an override seal. From there I started mutating the genes, and again each time I filtered out those that showed no increase. After filtering the genes that hadn't experienced an increase in chakra density, I simply repeated the process of making an overwrite seal, and continuing to mutate them. Most of the time it bore no results, but now and then there would be a minuscule increase in chakra density. So, I would slowly advance the gene by way of artificial Darwinism. I was eager to use my new method on other genes to see what I could do. But sadly, doing one gene already ate up a lot of my time, and it was currently unfeasible to do more than one gene at a time. I had neither the required amount of test subjects nor the space to keep them. Keeping prisoners alive and sedated was expensive, so it was not a priority. Thus, most would end up dead under Orochimaru, both to save money and because Orochimaru didn't seem inclined to keep them fed and watered. Sigh, I ran a hand through my hair. There was also the fact that I needed people with type A or type A blood for the experiment, which limited those that I could choose from. As mid-April drifted in, it brought with it the realization that the year was almost halfway done, meaning that the next six or so months would be the end of the war, which was a bummer as I found myself liking the war more than I disliked it. No war meant there would be a lack of test subjects sigh, the lack of test subjects was more troublesome than the lack of fighting. And how would I occupy myself when I couldn't go and slaughter a platoon of Kumo Nin? Whenever I felt the urge different DNA would also become harder to collect not that I had collected much to begin with. I made a mental note to collect as much interesting DNA as I could. I had no idea where to start. I made a second mental note below the pervious mental note. I had to figure out whose DNA I needed to get. I nodded to myself, satisfied with my mental notes that I'd likely forget. At least it made me feel better I took a deep breath and coated myself in a layer of lightning chakra that I had been building up in my chest. The blue cloak of lightning chakra stimulated my nervous system and further increased my speed and reaction time. So, the lightning chakra cloak was finally functional. Now that my hair was no longer being burnt off my body, it was a spiky mess. I now looked like I was going Super Saiyan, and what an apt name that could have been. If I was six years younger, 
I would have named it Super Saiyan Mode. Sadly, my inner weeb slowly died due to fading memories, and a lack of a Nyman manga. So, it was now called Lighting Cloak, as Lighting Chakra Cloak was one word too long for me. Sai Aemi had been a large help during the process. Well, she wasn't an actual help. She provided moral support and convinced me not to give up on it. It wasn't much, but it earned her some points in my book. Not enough for me to like her but it was enough to stop me from plotting her accidental death. So, I completed the lightning cloak and Aomi avoided meeting the death god. It had been a productive week. Hum. I hummed and started increasing the amount of chakra coating me. I poured a good bit of my reserves into the cloak, and felt my skin start to burn. The smell of burnt flesh and the arrival of Aomi who had appeared in a shunchan distracted me. I ignored the smell and Aomi, then continued feeding chakra into the cloak. I felt a little too much of my skin flake off and found my current limit. I brought some of the chakra into myself and reabsorbed it. Aomi hit me with a jutsu. Aomi stared at me in surprise. As I didn't have all day, I motioned her to get on with it. And get on with it she did. She made a string of hand signs and released a stream of fire from her mouth. Wosh asterisk I let the fire wash over me and felt both my worries and skin melt away. Well just my worries. My skin was unscathed. Now, I had another good close range technique. Alright, you can stop cooking me now. My world was no longer covered in fire. And I was feeling pretty good. Now, I wouldn't be so reliant on the Shikotsu Myaku. Unless I wanted to keep this as a hidden move, Sai, it could be decided later. I turned my attention to Aomi. What did you need? Aomi started writing in her notebook. I let the cloak fade and started trimming my nails with a chakra scalpel. When it became clear Aomi wouldn't be done anytime soon. EAP asterisk EAP asterisk EAP asterisk. I turned my attention away from my nails and back to Aomi who looked pretty annoyed. What? EAP asterisk EAP asterisk EAP asterisk Aomi tapped on her book and held it out. So I could see it. Orochimaru sama wants to see you. He has an old friend with him and is in a better mood than usual. I nodded. What's this friend's name? Orochimaru being in a good mood was rare. Aomi scribbled something down quickly. His name's Haruko. He has white hair and pink eyes. I nodded. It wasn't someone I was familiar with. Nor was he a ninja of any renown as far as I knew. Alrighty let's go see them. I motioned for Aomi to follow and started towards Orochimaru's lap. Haruko and Orochimaru were two creepy peas in a pole. Both were old, took excellent care of their hair, and gave off creepy vibes. They were perfect for each other. I stood off to the side with Aomi as they had elected to ignore me, even though they knew I was there. I drifted off into thought while they chatted between themselves. After a good amount of thought, I decided that I wanted to learn Sage Mode, but I also didn't want any distinctive animal characteristics so... I'd have to go the way of Hashirama. If I couldn't figure it out, I'd have to use Fuenjutsu, and if that didn't work out, then I would have to learn it from one of the summon clans. That was post-war stuff though I also needed to pursue DNA and possibly soul-related stuff, while I had an abundance of test subjects so, there was lots to do before I even got into Sage Mode. But Sage Mode was still something to look into in the meantime, and this is Hayao Gashiro, I've been teaching him for the past year and a half. I dragged myself from the mental swamp that was my mind, and bowed in Orochimaru's direction while remaining silent. I was annoyed, and my strained smile must have shown it, because Orochimaru smiled in amusement. This is Haruko, he's the creator of the amalgamation and genetic mimicry techniques. Orochimaru smiled when I gave Haruko a nod of acknowledgement. Amalgamation and genetic mimicry weren't something I had any interest in, upon looking into them it was clear that they were made for bloodline theft. So Haruko was probably someone I should stay away from. I'm familiar with your work. You must have an impressive grasp of Fuenjutsu to make such masterpieces. I gave my best attempt at a friendly smile, but was met with silence. Haruko just stared at me with what I could only call boredom, and my smile became strained. Indeed, Haruko's voice was as dull as his expression. My smile fell. Any new projects? Haruko nodded but remained silent. I forced the smile back onto my face, ignoring Orochimaru who seemed to be entertained by our exchange. Well, it's good talking to you Haruko, but I think it's time I take my leave. I saw Orochimaru's smile widen. See ya sensei. I sent Orochimaru a nod and beat a hasty retreat. Orochimaru was being creepy and Haruko seemed even less socially inclined than I was. I didn't have it in me to carry a conversation. With that thought I sped up, eager to escape. Isami developed denser bones, and had an increase in muscle mass. Denser bones and more muscles to move those bones. I rolled my eyes. So, nothing major or unexpected. I just confirmed that chakra changed the physical body, which was something I already knew alright? Get Aomi to draw some blood, and you are free to go, possibly forever. I was going to inject or overwrite some others as well, mostly to confirm my findings so... Asami wasn't needed unless I wanted to mold her into a minion. Oh, yay Asami turned and raised an eyebrow. Don't forget to apply for leave, so you can go see your family. What's left of it anyway? Thank you, Shirosama. Aomi gave me a shallow bow and left. Now, I got to sit by myself and stew in thought for a while. What fun Orochimaru's foray into the mysteries of sleep was complete. Sadly, I likely wasn't going to benefit from it. Orochimaru wasn't in a sharing mood lately Aomi. Drop these on Orochimaru's desk. And get two more prisoners afterward. Aomi took the folder I presented to her, nodded, and wandered off to do my bidding. Like the good little minion she was. Orochimaru was now awake for about 20 hours a day. 
and was using the extra time in a way he most certainly enjoyed, meaning experimentation and lots of death, which wasn't bad. Now we were running low on prisoners, and Orochimaru was more likely to attack Kumo. He would need more test subjects soon. Sai I still needed to do a few tests using Ace genes, before we ran out of prisoners hopefully. I could get that off my plate before we ran out of them during a mission. I stumbled upon the corpse of one of our scouts, and got a pleasant surprise. The brown head corpse was wearing the signature Achiha clothing. I placed my hands on the side of his head and fed my chakra into his eyes. His eyes changed to a menacing red. Nice a Sharingan. Now, what do I do with it? I honestly didn't care for it. But I doubted I would have another opportunity to get a hold of an Achiha corpse. Aomi go kill that idiot hiding in the trees. I pointed at the blonde head dark skinned man who was badly hidden behind a tree. Aomi nodded and darted towards the tree I pointed at with her sword drawn. I nodded to myself and dug through my kunai patch, looking for an empty refrigeration seal. Sadly, I didn't have one I sighed and grabbed a normal storage scroll. Now I'd have to cut this mission short. I sealed the body up and turned my eyes towards Aomi, who slowly but surely overpowering her opponent with superior speed and superb use of her flaming sword. Her opponent's sword was starting to look worn. The heat from Aomi's blade seemed to have a great effect. I nodded to myself. Coding things in chakra was always a good idea. I quietly chuckled at the thought. T-I-N-G asterisk Aomi swung and smacked her opponent's sword out of his hand and decapitated him with her following swing. Well done. I looked towards the new corpse. Less chakra on the sword though. I don't have a fire affinity. Aomi nodded and I nodded back. We probably should have kept this guy alive, he might have had information or could have been used as a test subject. But there's no use crying over spilled blood. Don't decapitate the next one, we have Yamanaka that can be put to use. I pointed towards another tree, and Aomi sped off to capture the sneaky ninja. Poor girl probably thought she wasn't detected, keep the limbs on that one. I shouted in Aomi's direction and made my way over to the body she left behind. Maybe something could be done with it using the power of money. I got seven test subjects from amongst the camp goers. Now I could inject them with some blood I'd give three of them my blood, and another three of them A's blood, and the remaining one would get both. From there I'd see what else I could do. I might make their own body produce A's blood, or I might just give them a flesh craft of some kind. I still wanted to figure out how one mixed chakra after all on Sensei. Orochimaru was moody, but I was bored and had questions. Orochimaru stared at the ceiling in annoyance. Yes Shiro. His tone was dry. I could tell I was pushing my luck, but I've been stuck and needed some tips. I've been trying to make a custom ceiling script, my Fuenjutsu teacher said it was all about intent. I paused as that got a rather big reaction from Orochimaru. But I've had no luck with creating custom symbols, Orochimaru nodded like it was obvious. He opened his mouth to speak but stopped halfway. He appeared to think for a moment before he started speaking. Using intent is not necessarily wrong. But it's not how I would describe it. Orochimaru took a really deep breath. He looked very annoyed. So I started planning my exit even as he continued to speak. You're assigning meaning or purpose to a symbol. He took another deep breath and appeared to calm slightly. I wouldn't call it intent, but it's close. The more specific the meaning or purpose of the symbol, the better the results. Orochimaru side eyed me. You then string the symbols together and make instructions for the seal using them. But sealing is different for everyone bearing the Yuzumaki. How I understand and use Fuenjutsu will be different from how you understand Fuenjutsu. My teammate described it as the written language of hand seals, and my sensei describes it as using a string of matrices to manipulate the world around you. Orochimaru paused for a moment before continuing. I describe it as making a contract with reality. He paused. You make a contract and hide as many letters or symbols as you can within the shapes and script of the contract, so you can trick reality into doing your bidding. I nodded in understanding. Orochimaru's ceiling looked to be mostly comprised of shapes. I now knew that there was more hidden in the shapes and script than what appeared on the surface. Thank you. I sent Orochimaru a deep bow. Orochimaru nodded. Here's a book on touch sealing. Don't use it unless you are vividly familiar with the seal you're using. A snake slithered out of Orochimaru's sleeve and regurgitated the book onto the desk. Thank you, Sensei. I took the slightly slimy book from the desk and bowed again before taking my leave. I had thinking to do. Looking at the Achiha's DNA had done nothing but confuse me. It was beyond annoying. It was mostly normal human DNA with bits of foreign DNA. It seemed less complicated than the Hyuga DNA at first glance. But a lot was going on with the DNA responsible for the optical nerve, brain, eyes, personality, and chakra density. I didn't know where to start as I only had one Achiha and couldn't get any variety amongst the genes. The DNA corresponding to the brain and nerves was the easiest to make guesses about. It was likely why the Achiha were able to consistently produce geniuses and skilled combatants. But that was just a guess. Sai tossing the body to Orochimaru was tempting. He had been a great help with the Kagaya body. It was something to think about. I'd need more Achiha to figure out what exactly each bit of DNA did. And wasting my time on the Achiha wouldn't do me much good. I haven't gotten into the Hayuga DNA yet, nor have I solved my problem with using Chakra at a distance. I stared at the ceiling and pondered about throwing clones at my problems. My biggest worry about the constant use of clones was running out of projects. I didn't want to run out of things to do and become depressed. And clones were unpredictable as well. Sigh I made a hand seal and a clone phased into existence. The clone sent me a dirty look and summoned four more clones. 
I raised an eyebrow at it. Existence is horror, and I need others to suffer with me. The clone behind him snorted ruining the tension that was building. I scratched my head while looking at the clones who in turn looked at me. We need to get stuff done. Hyuga DNA and Ichiha DNA indexing are the least important. The first clone made a show of slumping and quietly sobbing. I ignored it. Personal Fuenjutsu script. I pointed to the second clone who nodded. Gene mutation. I pointed to the third clone who gave me a thumbs up. Finish up the blood transfusions and figure out how to permanently change someone's blood if you have time. I pointed to the fourth clone who remained stone-faced. Visit Kenji and Asami if she hasn't left yet. I pointed at the fifth clone who nodded. Death. I pointed to the first clone who was bouncing with excitement and pierced him with a thin bone spike. A job well done I nodded to myself. I'll be training I gave the clones another close look, hoping to weed out the unstable ones. Seeing none I made my way towards the stairs leading to the lab. Training was boring, and I didn't even have my favorite squishy humans to make the time pass a little faster sucks. How about another attempt to push Kumo out of Frost? I threw the question out after a few moments of silence. Orochimaru didn't even glance my way. No. I slumped slightly at his refusal. Orochimaru wasn't interested in another attack on Kumo's camps. Which sucked, I wanted to fight and cut loose, while I didn't have to worry about anyone I liked dying. Alright? Kumo wasn't attacking us currently as they were more focused on Isla, which was probably a good thing. Perhaps the status quo was ideal for experimentation. We're running out of prisoners, any plans to get more? I was disappointed there wouldn't be any battles, and was hoping for a quick mission to quell my boredom. Orochimaru shook his head and immediately dispelled my hopes for a mission. Kumo's entire attention is on Iowa. Orochimaru sent me an exasperated look. The Hokage wants us to keep Kumo from getting supplies across Frost, and to let Iowa and Kumo exhaust each other. I couldn't tell if his exasperation was because of me or the Hokage, so I stayed silent. I've been ordered not to provoke Kumo, so that means there will be a temporary shortage of test subjects. Orochimaru's face scrunched up as he spoke, so perhaps I wasn't the cause of his exasperation. Can you order me off to grass for a month then? Grass was close enough that I could send some bone clones over without many problems with bone clones. Managing my labs things would be smooth sailing. You are currently needed here. Orochimaru shook his head and denied me the adventure I sought. Sai Orochimaru rolled his eyes at me. Can you tell me about Senjutsu then? If I was going to run out of prisoners I might as well find something to occupy my time. Orochimaru turned away from me which dashed my hopes. Perhaps your former sensei Namikas would be better suited to teach you. I haven't achieved Sage Mode myself. I'll let that roll around in my head for a bit. Minato knew Sage Mode. I don't think I'll have much luck. I held in a sigh and decided it was time to go. Orochimaru wasn't interested in conversation at the moment. Do you need anything before I go? Orochimaru shook his head before I had even finished. I gave Orochimaru a bow and started making my way out. Back to training. I guess chakra by itself isn't elemental. But every ninja has an element that their chakra molds into more easily. I paused and scratched my chin. That's my understanding of an affinity. While ninja with enough control could use any jutsu they desire there's always some element that's easier for them. I turned and saw Aomi was following along. I'm playing around with chakra right now. I nodded towards the test subject strapped to the table. I'm trying to mix two chakras of the same affinity. It was mainly to see what happened. But if I miraculously made something interesting, I'd eat my back again. Two different chakras aren't able to be mixed as far as I could tell. I looked at the clock. You would have to be from the same family or clan to even have the possibility of doing so. So, this is probably pointless I gestured to my test subject. I turned to Aimee and saw she didn't look even remotely interested. Did that explain anything or did I just ramble at you? I raised an eyebrow at her. Aimee made a so-so gesture. Sigh, I didn't have a good excuse for it, so I had to make something up. I was trying to combine chakra so I could eventually access the Tensigan when I got to the moon. I was thinking that the Hayuga inherited the eyes of Amora, while the moon Otsutsuki inherited the body of Amora. Similar to Indra and Asura. Or at least that was my current theory. My theories about the Tensigan changed pretty often so, I probably needed the physical energy from the Otsutsuki. Or so the theory went. I had no Otsutsuki to test stuff on. Which meant this was currently pointless, keep this one fed and watered, I'll be back to check its chakra in a day or two. I blew a heavy breath out of my nose. This one was unusually annoying. Keep him sedated if he's too annoying, after two escape attempts. I wasn't too concerned about his survival. Orochimaru's method of indexing genes in humans was rather effective. He removed or added the gene he wanted to index, and watched the subject for any changes. But if he was impatient mutation seemed to be another option. He also liked to take a gene, and splice it into a different species, to see what would happen. I'd probably have to do something similar to make fast progress on the Hyuga genes. I'd need a Hyuga or I'd need to splice Hyuga genes into people to see what they did, which would be extremely wasteful. I couldn't let anyone get suspicious when too many clan members died. According to Orochimaru's notes, splicing bloodlines of any kind was extremely difficult. The body had to already have part of the heritage, be sufficiently adaptable, or young enough to accept a new bloodline. And even if the subject was adaptable and young, it wasn't likely to succeed. And when it did the bloodline was weakened and couldn't be used with the same effectiveness that a natural bloodline user could command it. Sigh. I know Orochimaru eventually figured out how to do it. But currently, he wasn't close. In a few years, he would be though. Those who were given blood didn't gain a lightning affinity. But they did gain the ability to make lightning chakra with their normal chakra. I'd call it a jumpstart to making lightning chakra. 
The chakra helped them speed past what should have been years of training for the untalented. The amount of blood received determines the time it will take the body to strengthen. Though the benefits depended on the strength of the recipient, the stronger one was the fewer benefits they gained. Subjects who had all their blood replaced gained benefits within the week. I paused and turned to Ayumi. Those who had less than half of their blood replaced took an additional week to see benefits. Seeing that she was following I continued. Those that were given A's blood saw a notable increase in strength, stamina, and durability. Those who were given my blood saw most of the same gains as those with A's blood as well as an increase in bone and muscle density. Other general increases came with having extremely potent chakra, but it would take too long to explain. I wanted to get into it a bit more, but Aomi knew enough to do what I wanted to be done. So, your new job is to find people with type A or type AB blood who want to be strengthened, which shouldn't be a problem Aomi nodded. I'll make a vat of A's blood, you'll be injecting people with A's blood, and collecting their own both before and after they've had the injection. Aomi held up her notebook. How many? Any preferences? I shrugged as I didn't care. Doesn't matter, just let them know they're going to undergo a strengthening procedure, replace all the blood, and keep them unconscious for a week. I tapped my chin. I'll take over a section of the hospital for that. Aomi nodded. Just keep it quiet. I don't want anyone to know how we're doing what we're doing. Aomi nodded again. Hum I hum trying to remember if there was anything else. You'll be responsible for note taking and monitoring the patients. I felt like this was a mistake. I didn't want to make super soldiers. I'll send a group of clones to seal up the hospital. But I needed this opportunity. So I could have another go at mixing chakra alrighty. I made a hand seal, and four clones appeared behind me. I waved them off and turned back to Aomi. Make sure most of those you find are genin. I don't want them to be unskilled. I want skilled people that are limited by their genes or upbringing, meaning civilians. Civilians who could disappear should they bring me trouble. The end goal is to bring the genin up to chin and level. I waved Aomi away and leaned back in my chair. A's chakra will strengthen the body. The strengthened body will produce more physical energy. More physical energy means increased chakra reserves, and a small increase in density. That was the theory at least. My foray into mutating the Hyuga's chakra density gene seemed to have stalled. Some clones had absorbed the blood and figured out that a good portion of the genes gained density but lost whatever enabled the chakra to block Tenketsu. The clones figuring out that they could use the blood was good, them also figuring out that some genes were defective was also good. Had I jumped to the gun again and overwritten myself, I would have lost the ability to block Tenketsu, which was the whole reason for this experiment. Few I wiped the non-existent sweat from my forehead. It would have been devastating if I spent a lot of time on mutating the gene and lost the ability to use the gentle fist. So, this was a lucky break. I'd ensure I was more careful in the future mutations according to Orochimaru are mostly neutral, doing nothing and having no notable impact. Some did have positive or negative impacts, but those were rare. However, there was a correlation between strength and positive mutations. Strong parents often produce strong children, and a strong shinobi's genes mutated slightly under the influence of their chakra. Meaning the more chakra you had, the more likely it was that you or your children would experience positive mutations. So, the strength of your chakra helped push you towards the right evolutionary path so to speak. Orochimaru cautioned me that he hadn't looked deeply into mutation and wasn't focused on the topic. Meaning I should take what he said with a grain of salt. My findings confirmed Orochimaru's. Had an emergency ration strengthened after I expanded his chakra network. Isami had been strengthened as well. But most of the strengthening had been the awakening of dormant DNA. So, it was part of dormant DNA and part mutations. Hum I shrugged maybe, or maybe not. I'll check Asami's blood samples and see if she experienced any mutations after she got A's blood. I probably should have done that sooner. I got too excited about the increase in strength, the blood provided Sai. I got too excited. Kiri had lost three of their swordsmen and was pretty much out of the war. Although there was no official response, they didn't have the manpower to battle outside of Kiri and thus hold themselves up in the land of water. Kiri turtled. Seno wa t asterisk Kiri had no jinchuriki and half their usual number of swordsmen, and it was all thanks to the wonderful rakage. Who should kick the bucket soon? I didn't know. Hopefully, that was the case. But it didn't seem like it would happen anytime soon. Interlude. The goal of this little experiment is to evolve the genes above the current human limit. Shiro explained while he paced around the room. Mutations occur over hundreds of years. I'm simply speeding the process up and manipulating it slightly. He motioned for me to place my hands on the indexing seal, and I did so. What you're looking at is your dominate gene for hair color, brown, he trailed off when he saw my annoyed look. With a little mutation, this gene can become slightly darker or slightly lighter. He smiled. Eventually after careful selective mutations, you can move your hair towards your desired color little by little with each mutation. I rolled my eyes at his blatant attempt to annoy me. I'm doing the same thing currently with a gene for chakra density. He smirked. I'm slowly mutating the gene over and over, and increasing the density of chakra little by little. After a lot of selective mutating, I'll eventually have chakra density rivaling a tailed beast. He frowned for a moment before replacing it with a smile. But it won't be until years later that I reap any substantial benefits. Questions? He asked with a smile. I nodded and tried to formulate the question in my head. Would your time be better spent improving the genes governing your bodily strength? Shiro was a tojutsu specialist. It didn't make sense to spend so much time on improving his chakra, when he rarely used more an eighth of his reserves. Shiro smiled at me like I was a child. Having more chakra strengthens the body naturally. 
I'm letting my body strengthen in response to my chakra rather than mash a whole bunch of genes together and hope it works. He waved early. The more chakra I have the stronger my body gets. I nodded in understanding. He'd rather let his body adjust to his chakra than try and build a strong body. I think that's enough for now. We'll chat more if you are still interested. I nodded as I was extremely interested. I didn't have the required chakra control to do any of the stuff Shiro did. But I would eventually, and learning ahead of time was never a bad thing. Thank you. I was happy to have been given this opportunity. I was given the chance to be more than what I was. No problem. See you tomorrow. Shiro made his way out. Send me a lazy wave as he left. I stared at the ceiling feeling giddy as I thought about the future. I could be as strong as the Hokage if I continued on this path. It felt weird. Years ago I wouldn't have imagined I could ever have a shot at becoming a pillar of strength for the village. But now that and more was possible. I just had to continue down the path I was taking. Darwinism as Shiro called it was a brilliant idea. Advancement through artificial evolution. I couldn't wait until I could do it myself. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.